I say success leaves clues. I'm changing it slightly for this seminar, to get back to your question, is seeing is believing. And a true share for share deal, remember, when you acquire a company's shares, you acquire its past, present, and future liabilities. Just imagine what those people were thinking. Some of you are on your way to, I mean, uh, I, they better watch out because we got some boys here that are going to pass you. Just imagine after 12 and 13 fucking years, and that's why I say all those big deals need a super high-powered rhino skin salesman that can take a lot of abuse. Help me with the seminar because they don't want anybody to know they're rich. Sally says, everybody wants the money, almost everybody. But hardly anybody wants the notoriety. It's to fill the gaps in you, not in the program. Because you've all got a reason why you haven't exhibited more intestinal fortitude, I think is another way of saying it. And you all got a reason. That's fine. And you'll all have a reason when you're, you know, when they, when, uh, that nobody will care about. Yet the people, I say success leaves clues. I'm changing it slightly for this seminar, to get back to your question, is seeing is believing. We're going to hear from people, and in the last 90 days, hit it over the fucking, for six, to use um, cricket terminology, hit it out of the park, to use baseball terminology. The last 90 days. Big time. Yet, and you've got your own reasons. Why did you all got it? Uh, now, in the 90s, I used to go around and ask you your own reason to embarrass you and to humiliate you. That's when we had people shit their pants, cry, piss their pants. Uh, since I don't do that anymore, we haven't had a, a, a good shit in the pants in, fuck, at least 10 years. But we had them. And then again, we, most of the money that has been accumulated from my flock, as it were, uh, was in the 90s and early 2000s. Because you put it right up on the table, I'm a miserable cunt. Not just that Mr. Pena says I'm a cunt, I really am a cunt. And I don't deserve, like Elon, which I'm not saying he's deserving, he put all his money on the, on the line when his two projects, he had a third project, but I forget what the name of it, what was the third project? No, no, SpaceX had a 5%, and uh, the car had 5%, but there was another one. Boring company. Pardon? Boring. Boring, oh, and it failed. But again, for those of you that are uh, pundits of uh, um, history, if it wasn't for Obama, we would know Elon Musk's name. Now, you all know that, right? You Google the fuck out of everything I say. Obama gave him 500 uh, million for SpaceX and gave him, I think, a billion, no, for Tesla and a billion for SpaceX. Otherwise, those deals would have failed just like the third one. But nobody cares, do they? He's the flavor of the day, and he is. And if he really did say, apparently he did say, that woke and uh, PC were going to be the end of humanity, he's back in my light column now. Okay, yes, sir. Can I ask? Um, you can ask whatever you want. Oh, by, oh, uh, when we are recorded on YouTube, is it uh, announced? I know uh, when we when we discuss, uh, there are certain things that you uh, rather not see on YouTube when I ask questions. And well, no, no, no. Okay, well, you came to the wrong seminar then. No. No, 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 no. There is no private time here for good reason. Because... You need to express yourself either in the group or in your subgroup. Now, whether you express yourself in the subgroup when the camera's on is up to you, okay? Whether you want to express yourself, uh, your uh, deepest feelings on the camera like right now, it's up to you. If you don't want it to be on camera, don't say it when it's on camera. It's very simple. But that's part of the reason. There are no secrets. There are only mysteries. There's not a man, woman, well, there's no woman. There's not a man in this room that has anything well, maybe one, that has anything to hide from the general public. Because this program isn't used. This, you know, I was thinking about this. Somebody asked me 
one of my friends uh, uh, from the military a long time ago, he said, why do you tell people that it's like the, the mafia model without a gun? He asked me this, okay. And I said, well, the reason why is because they put a gun in their mouth to make them a deal they can't refuse, right? We do the exact same without a gun because we put the, the, the essence of their future in front of them with no exit, no succession that they can't refuse. We didn't double our business model in success stories, 95% full transparency, not 100%. 95% up during Corona because Corona was bad for us. As soon as I heard it, two years ago, almost two years ago, I said, this is our time. I've, squ I've screamed it from the, the, the tallest buildings I could get on. Yet all of you didn't believe me. The guys that you're going to hear this week are zealots. They did believe me. You know, I, I, I asked the question quite by accident three seminars ago, and I don't want you to raise your hand. Most people that come to the seminar believe in something. I'm not saying you have to believe in something. Buddha, Allah, God, I mean, you call it a higher power, whatever you call it, right? Have you ever seen that? Have you ever met him, her, it? No. Why do you believe? Based on faith. That's it. Either it's faith that because your parents taught you, or your grandparents taught you, or you went to a religious type school, but you, you believe in faith. The one thing that everybody that you're going to listen to this week, and virtually everybody that has done a webinar, they see it in different ways. I follow Dan's word like the word of God. I follow Dan's word like the scripture. I follow Dan. And you apparently don't have faith enough to believe that the system works. It's like when Josh Kim was my poster boy. Oh, God, I, I, I should have kept all the comments. He's Michelangelo, reincarnated. He's this. He's Plato. He's Moses. He's Joan of Arc, but a, a male. Because you couldn't believe that a 17 or 18-year-old kid could make that much fucking money that quickly. You wouldn't believe it. And some, I can just, I can see your faces now. We still have people, not many anymore, that say that you're actors that I rented from uh, Central Casting to be here. dan has got so much money, he can, uh, you know, he's Chinese, a Mexican, a this, a, a black, uh, Central Casting. I could get better looking people from Central Casting, I assure you, than this fucking group or any group. Because for them to believe what they hear on YouTube... But the negative comments are way, way down than when, you know, when I first went on um, uh, Brian Rowe's um, London Real in 2014. Then, I mean, it was 40, 50, 60 percent didn't believe anything I said. Now it's two or three or four percent. Of course, we've produced so many, it, it's hard. But um, Josh is, a, is a, a classic example. How did he do it at such a young age? And we've had younger than him. You've got, you know, the 15-year-old did a $53 million deal. No, nobody believes. They think that I produced a little shit from Georgia. Because if a 15-year-old can do that, what about you? Or what about you, the meatheads there on YouTube? Did I, did I tell you, explain the gap? Why the different, the, the, what, what, what we're accomplishing here? Okay, anything else along those lines? Or any lines for that matter? Last night you saw the first part of Building America, if I'm not mistaken. Um, just uh, other than they were tougher than you, what, any takeaways? Okay, no takeaways, good. Another thing that I figured out, not recently, that the difference between the 90s and the early 2000s, since about 2008, when we allegedly had a financial crisis, remember? Allegedly. We didn't, QLA didn't, but I mean, I started spoon-feeding you. 
I don't know if that was a, a, a natural outcome of me feeling sorry for you. I hope the fuck it wasn't, but, but I started spoon feeding you and we're, we're, not spoon, we're not spoon feeding anymore. If you got no questions, no comments, fine, fuck you. Seminar will be over in three days. You know, I don't really care. When I started my social media presence because of Brian Q. L. A. Rose, which I forever thank him for, um, the, I told him on that show I was a cross between Freud, Patton, and Jack Welsh. Nothing's changed. But in, 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 uh, in hindsight, or in uh, farsight, I'm more Patton than Jack Welsh, and I'm more Patton than Freud because I get it done no matter what. And I told you when you left the seminar, don't take no for an answer. None of you, you write it down now, it's too late now, assholes. Because many of you took no for an answer. In fact, everybody in this room took no for an answer. And part of that no for an answer, it's a numbers game. And I've got a uh, success story. The guy that I told you can't speak English, he made a thousand calls to do his first deal, a thousand, which is at the low end. Uh, we've had a couple that are lower ends. Remember, I, I gave you three examples: eighteen hundred calls, fifteen hundred calls, twelve hundred calls, twelve hundred calls. They had all, they were all on the Hall of Fame, and but to do the first deal, one was twelve hundred, one was fifteen hundred, one was eighteen hundred. The eighteen hundred was Bruce Whipple. Most of you know or have heard of anyway. Um, and the, uh, but we've had people do it less than 1,200. Uh, we've had do, done uh, 1,000. We've had done 700. We've had done 500. 500 calls. And a, co and a call, remember I said you're 2,000 cold calls away from being a millionaire. Nobody wrote that down because you didn't, you didn't believe it then. You don't believe it now. And um, your first deal, if you do it correctly and you own two thirds of the fucking deal, you have a short million. In pounds, you don't, not a million. In dollars, you do. In Canadian dollars, you're over a million. One deal. That's all it takes. And obviously, with all the postings that we've done, with my current poster boy, uh, which is uh, Thomas McGuire from uh, Canada, and uh, not my poster boy, but a guy that's done terrific, um, the. Um, Andreas Milner, who's done about 19 or 20 deals. I, I, I forgot to catch the number. He just sent me an email, uh, a, uh, a board update. Another thing that most of the kids that haven't done deals have lost their boards, have done, had the deals stolen from them, is I told you another thing that was really important. The most important thing was the chairman, right? But you have to update the board, otherwise they feel left out and they leave, or they steal your deal. We have a few candidates in this room that didn't update them, and they stole your deal. So there's no gap in the information in the seminar. There's gaps in your personality. One of which is testicles is the biggest gap. Unfortunately, most of you still have this baggage. And when Sally and I lived in India, we saw this all the time, all the time. And in the Philippines, we saw this not as much as in India, that little guy, I don't know how much shit that is, but that's a lot of shit. Um, and most of you have still that baggage with you. You may have been able to chip the, a few of the big parcels off the top, but because you'd rather be liked than effective. You'd still rather be liked than effective. Why, why, I'm not, we're not gonna, this seminar is not about why you'd rather be liked. It's just a fact. You'd rather be liked than effective. And as I've said countless times, I, I, <laughs> Sympathy and empathy I don't suffer from. I don't have those diseases. Somehow, when they were passing out sympathy and empathy, they missed me. Because I certainly don't suffer from it. Some would say, suggest that I suffer from the opposite. I don't, know, I don't believe that's true. It sounds good for an excuse why you didn't do it, but I don't suffer from that. I have very little baggage. Um, and you all know baggage is self-induced. Nobody makes you anxious, nobody makes you nervous, nobody makes you perspire, but you. Except for that disease that some, some people have, allegedly, where you perspire a lot uh, uncontrollably. 
that's what uh, uh, Andrew, Prince Andrew says he has, uh, which I think is a load of shit, but anyway. When you left here, you knew this. And I said, you will fall in somewhere between, because you weren't teenagers, the teen and the biggest deal in recorded history. Which is not, that deal is, if you believe the pundits, that deal is going to about $2.6 trillion now. So I could be the multi trillion dollar man, but we'll just stay with the trillion. Yes, sir. Up. Go ahead. Was that with Neom? Correct. And now Neom, I know it has nothing to do with me. Neom now has commercials on the telly, which I find amusing. <clears throat> So that old piece of dirt, sand, that they've been trying to get rid of for 60, 70, 80 years between uh, Saudi, um, Jordan, and Egypt, people have put up money, and it was Klaus Kleinfeld's idea, praise the Lord, my long-term mentee. Um, now, Klaus never had a problem thinking big numbers. I'm happy to see you here, like I said last night. Uh, we are uh, among the, the, the coronaviruses again. And, and I'm going to say it again, uh, it's going to get a lot worse. Your children will wear masks. And now they've gone from, you can only have to inoculate old gits like me, down to five, six-year-olds. And I know there's a whole stream of people, and I asked it at dinner, uh, last night, I'm not going to ask it now, uh, about the, the ones that don't want to get vaccinated. There's all kind of theory. Okay, I, I'm not interested in that. Okay. But there's certain places in the, in the world that if you're not inoculated by January, February, March, whatever, uh, some of the big Fortune 500 companies, if you're not inoculated, you don't have a job anymore. And you're shit out of luck. And um, I'm not saying it's... Uh, I said, remember, in March on the YouTube... It's going to come down to commerce or lives. And anybody that doesn't think that is a fucking moron. And what does it come down to? Commerce or lives. And, and now it's, you're beyond a moron now if you don't believe it now. So you're either going to get on the right side of history or you're not. Right now, many of you in this room are not on the right side of history, not, notwithstanding you consider yourself some sort of QLA bot. You're not. Because the right side of history is taking advantage of it in a legal, moral, and ethical way. And ethics and morals swing in the wind depending where you are in the world. And I said that where there's a rule of law, it's absolutely uh, easy peasy. Where there's not such a great rule of law, it's harder. But it's still t t um, possible. Still possible. Now, this is just uh, an update. I'll start at Dr. Phil first. I was struck off. The Dr. Phil show, what, three weeks ago, Kat? Struck off. I was going to be one of the primary guys on the show, and I'd been interviewed, and, and the contract was sitting in a, in, on my laptop, or Kat's laptop, which I didn't sign. And then an hour later after I got the contract, uh, they said that the, they've had a change in direction, and they don't want me. And, uh, the, um, and I'm positive it's due to my interview. Um, Dr. Phil is allegedly a bully, allegedly, allegedly. Um, and they asked me some question vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis his um, bulliness, and I said, well, I probably uh, fly there, rip his head off and shit down his neck, and I eat fuckers like him for breakfast. Or that, words of that effect. That's about what I said. And shortly thereafter, I'm struck off. Well, I've been struck off better places than that. In fact, I was struck off Oxford. That's why I have Oxford there even though I spoke there, as almost all of you know. Um, and the, um, I tried to go to school there. The summer of 2020, right? 2020, I was going to take a summer course. And I uh, followed up, right? And uh, the, we were in correspondence with a, the, the associate dean of something, and a little bald-headed kid. The, um, and I, Sally and I were going to rent a house. We didn't want to stay in the dormitory. We were going to rent a house, and I was going to be down there for the summer. That summer, but fortunately for me and unfortunately for them, 
Corona came and they canceled the course, but they canceled me before they canceled the course. And they said that uh, I'm making it shorter than the three paragraphs they wrote, but uh, you have too much experience, Mr. Pena. You could teach this class, and we would think it, it would be detrimental to the, uh, the students. You don't tell me. Um, so um, I wanted to make, make sure that those were on the record. Dr. Phil and being struck off by uh, Oxford, even though I spoke there. Now, um, now, in theory, my talks are going forward if Crohn allows them, because I'm supposed to speak at Princeton in uh, early February, but um, if they're closing down the campuses, it's not likely that I'm going to uh, be able to speak. And we had devised a program where my flock, as they're now called, and when I come back, I'm going to come back and head up a religion, by the way. They're easy. No taxes. I, that was suggested to me 30 years ago, but I decided not to. Anyway, uh, so my flock could attend because even at Princeton, if it was open, or I hope it's going to be open, it's going to be spacing and not too many people are going to be able to be, unlike what uh, Goen set up for me at University of Pennsylvania, it's going to be sp spaced like this. So we're not going to be able to get too many people in the room. So I'm renting a, I was renting a hotel five minutes away, 10 minutes away, uh, for 450 so I was going to speak there on a Monday and speak at the hotel on a Thursday. Okay, two days later. And so I could get you know, a few hundred people in. My expense, my, you know, not charge anybody anything. So th that's what my program was going to be in 2022, that because I, I, I anticipated the schools were going to not allow full deal like I had at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, but um, space, so I was going to rent a hotel room nearby. And... Um, the hotel that's right almost on campus, the room was too small. So we had to move out to a Marriott, right? A Marriott. Well, that may or may not happen now. Um, I asked you this during the break while we were waiting for our Asian buddy to get here. Uh, why we still fall for gurus, influencers, salesmen, and politicians who lie? Because they make it sound believable. And we're susceptible to lies. Just like the lies our parents said. You can be anything you want, Johnny. You can be anything you want, Abdul. I don't think that... Did your parents ever tell you that? Fuck. A lion Muslim couple. You can't be anything you fucking want. And that's one of the, the things that I'm going to prove uh, running for politics here. The, uh, from the barrio to Westminster... Success leaves clues, and seeing is believing. I've, I've thought long and hard how I can make the material more believable. And short of having them in person here, and we've had them in person here, tell you, we just had um, uh, John and Amber, we just had uh, Marcus Bauer, we just had the Murph, we just had... Uh, who else came in person? Huh? Thomas. Uh, Andreas. And you still don't believe. I'm not going to ask you why, because I don't want to give a shit why. I toyed with the idea of having those guys close deals for you. And so far, all the people I asked said yes, giving up 95% of the deal. That's pretty fucking pathetic. Every person I asked said yes. 95% of the deal. So we're at the limit of what we can do seeing as believing. There is no... Other phase. The other phase is that we either restrict the people to come to the seminar, restrict by most of you wouldn't be here today. I mean, for the first seminar, you wouldn't be here. Based on your background, your CV, what you've accomplished in life, blah, 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 blah. Instead of where I says, what did you, you do? Nothing. What did your parents do? Nothing. What did your grandma? Nothing, nothing, nothing. You had to put something down that you did something. 
your parents did something and your grandparents did something. So you know all of you would be not here from the first seminar. So then I could say, well, maybe it just for the kids had to do something. And not the parents and grandparents. So I've looked at all the permutations. And the permutation we have is the, is the best, but it's not the most effective. And I'm looking, since I've already achieved all my goals vis-a-vis -vis coaching, I want to be more effective. I don't, because I, I certainly don't care about being liked. You all know that. So I want to be more effective. So how can I be more effective? And so that's what 2022 is going to be about. I'm giving half the seminars, and um, it's about Dan being more effective. And giving half the seminar gives me plenty of time to look at uh, with my exploratory committee uh, about running for elected office. So this time next year, I'll decide whether I'm going to run here in Angus for the Scottish Parliament, uh, actually so Southern Angus it'll be, or Angus for the uh, Westminster Parliament. And just like you would not imagine, you can run for both. And you can have seats in both. I don't understand it intellectually, but you can. And you can have a job. And they complain about the, the fucking politicians down south having jobs that are making five, six, seven hundred thousand pounds, which is peanuts. But anyway, uh, uh, in addition to their hundred and forty five thousand pounds as a, a, a member of parliament. And they bitch about it, yet they allow them to have jobs. I don't understand that. And for the people that are in the Scottish parliament. Um, I don't want to say Scottish parliament is a joke because I know there's a lot of sincere people that are in Scottish Parliament. But for the most part, they're empty suits. They're empty suits. And everybody, I, I, I don't know this for a fact, but I, I would imagine almost everybody in Scottish Parliament has one, at least one job, if not two or three. So success leaves clues. Now, uh, pass out the, the uh, where are the uh, thumb drives we're going to give the kids? Okay, group number one, or group A, excuse me. Oh, you hand them out. Blue uh, goes to uh, Jan, him. You're the team leader. I know you're thrilled, but no more thrilled than I'm picking you. And then you, you know how to copy him on your laptop. If you don't, fuck you. He has all the cases for you, your team. Your team is uh, W-A-L-E-E-W. Uh, Stefan Siegman. Hmm? Okay, well, raise your hand. Okay. Um, and Mark Ernst. Okay, so the, you guys get it from him. Got it? Next group, Group B. Torres. Andale, pues. Torres. Aziz. K. T. Ekman, you're in Torres group. You're red, by the way, B. C, green. Goins is the captain. Flogel and Salazar. Okay. He's green, C. D is yellow. Shaz is the captain. Tony Amarco, Oscar Floth, and David Chung. Now, group C Green is going in the study in the castle. That's where you're going to meet, break out. Group A is here. Your breakout's in this room. Okay? Um, Torres, red, group B, is in the castle in the um, library. And group D, yellow, uh, Shaz, is in the uh, trophy room in the castle. Are there any qu questions where you're going, who's your captain, and who to get the information off of? Good. Okay? Now... The program is as follows. After I pontificate a little more this morning and answer any questions you might have, uh, you will go to your breakout rooms at approximately 
10 is when I'm going to let you lose. <clears throat> You're due back here in this room uh, at 12.30-ish. Um, um, and then uh, we'll, I'll answer any questions. And um, you'll go to lunch at 1. Um, I come back. We all meet up here again at 2 after lunch, answer any questions. Uh, then you break out again. Now, in the breakout rooms, I will go around. I'll start in this room. And then I'll go to all three of the other rooms. And I will, um, by the way, the first case you're doing is AOL. The first case you're doing is AOL. I will go around and ask, you know, well, the first one, they won't have done much, but, I'll, you know, uh, the, uh, I'll ask you uh, or give you some ideas about AOL. Then I'll go around to all the different uh, breakout venues, and I will see and listen to see if you're on the right track. Okay. Um, and, the, um, and we will be on AOL most of today, unless we've got some whiz kids here, which we don't. Um, first of all, there's a lot of material to go through. And, um, and I'll be able to tell. Now, I'm not accusing any of you of something um, that you, you may be thinking of doing. But I want you to go through the material and understand what a real deal looks like. Not your deals. And depending on the input I get from the AOL, will, will be determinant whether you do another big deal before you start on the smaller deals. But by tomorrow afternoon, either way, you're going to be doing the smaller deals. Smaller deals. With the basis of the big deals as your underpinning, so to speak. Um, and towards the end of the week, if any of you have any deals, as I mentioned last night, that are really like on the one-inch line or the one-yard line, whatever, um, I'll ascertain whether we should try to close them on the phone. And we closed. I have a 100% track record of closing deals here. I close it, not you. 100%. I have not failed. But from what I gather, we don't have anybody on the one-inch line. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll, I'll stand to be corrected. Any questions on anything that I've spewed through my lips so far? Yes, sir. Question. Um, I go back. Uh, you said um, you said to me the first time you have to drop your family. So uh, I'm perfectly honest with you. I didn't believe you. I <laughs> thought I thought that was. It was obvious in your face. You didn't believe me. No, but but I, I thought it was inhuman. But uh, you have to drop them. You're right. Thank you. I, I I know that was hard for him to tell me, but I mean I know. And for some of you, it's not possible for you to do that. You wasted your money coming here because I'm not going to be able to save you. I said, you're God, uh, your country. I don't mean to do terrorist shit. I don't mean that way. Your, your country, your family, your, your, your nieces, and whatever that shit is, you know, everybody. For 10 years, I was isolated here. Seven years, I didn't talk to my mother. Eight years... Sally didn't talk to her mother. And that's hard for a daughter. It wasn't hard for me. May you rest in peace, Mom. And then she did me the favor to come and die here. But anyway, uh, if you don't do that, it's like uh, corona. Now, during the last corona lockdowns, your buddy Marcus, your buddy Marcus, went and almost got arrested 15, 20 times because he was out running and gunning. He didn't stop because of corona. He didn't stop because of corona. He didn't stop for anything. Um, and I'm sure I wouldn't have stopped for corona. I spit on them, they die. I don't, you know, so I'm not worried about that. And nobody's done that in the history of Scotland since William Wallace. Nobody. So, guys, I'm just telling you, none of you are going to be up here, but, I mean, it's no different down south. It just isn't. But you've got you to go after it. You've got to want it, you know? And the, um, 
Now, if you're diligent, which you're not, you should start working on the next big case because this took too long today. I did it because you're slow, okay? But uh, we're going to go through the case like shit through a goose now. Everybody understand that metaphor? Shit through a goose. You know how when a goose walks away, he's leaving shit behind him? That's how quick we're going to go through the cases now. But the next big one, and then we're going to start on um, some of your individuals. I looked through them uh, today, and uh, some of your cases we can go through in three minutes. The ones that you brought. And I'm giving you the benefit, three minutes, probably 30 seconds. But um, we'll see how that goes. Um, and then we've got some other premier cases. But you understand the drill now, how it's supposed to work, and how it will work going forward. The, um, <clears throat> but I don't want the presentation where you just get up and bullshit. Those aren't acceptable. Yours, yours, and one other one. We want written. You have a question, James? We have it written. We just didn't bring it. Uh, well, whose fault is that, James? Mine or yours? Are you going to answer me? Yours. You're the captain of the team, right? Okay. Yes, sir. Looking at a case in three minutes, just focus on the financials then. Just the numbers? Uh, you can have a little, you know, you can have a little, <clears throat> not all of the numbers are that clear in some of the cases, especially the, the cases you gave me. I mean, you have to, you know, you know what it is to find a hen's tooth? Hens don't have teeth. So, you know, but the, um, the cases that I'm giving you, except for one, they're all, the numbers are, you have to read through the case. But the, the fact that, uh, you know, everybody knew Steve Jobs was not that nice of a person. Uh, every, you know, that's common knowledge. I mean, you could have said that stuff about him and not know anything about the case. But we want the written backup. Uh, and, but the one case, your group, where's uh, Blue Eyes that came up with the idea? Oh, him. Uh, and it was magic to my ears, and I, uh, not too much magic comes through my ears in these seminars, when he said kind of an offhanded comment. He said, by the way, I, uh, there's no cash in this deal, so it's cashless, so it's like seller for And I go, oh, God, thank you. Thank you, God. And it is seller for Nasdaq. But he's the first guy in a long time that's got it. Yeah, so uh, from your leadership... He got it, I'm sure. <laughs> and, but, I mean, it is because it's a cashless, same as seller finance, $2 billion. They did it for the $2 billion is what they did it for. And they overpaid $2 billion and they got $2 billion. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great deal. I don't know for a fact who structured it. I know Steve wouldn't have structured it because he wouldn't have gotten the details. But he probably told whoever the investment bank on his side was that I don't want any money out of my pocket. And I, and, uh, the, uh, and I want it to be palatable to them over pain. So, and, and because remember, I mean, that over pain in shares, a bunch of it accrued to, to Steve because he was, the, uh, I believe, the largest shareholders in Pixar. So, I mean, it was a great deal. It's, it, and it is a, a QLA deal. It is. And so, um, so there's different ways to skin the, the QLA cat is what I'm trying to say. And that was one of them, and the um, and it still work. It still works. Whenever you see in the newspaper, you read the Financial Times or whatever you're reading, and you look at a share for share deal, look a little deeper into it, and the uh, and a true share for share deal. Remember, when you acquire a company's shares, you acquire its past, present, and future liabilities, along with the uh, accounts receivable and all the uh, ca uh, cash equivalents, et cetera, et cetera, unless specified otherwise. And so they disguise, well, I won't say they disguise it, but the, uh, the average shareholder, the average, you know, rum dum that has shares won't notice that. They won't notice that. And they sold it, as I recall, uh, they sold it on Disney's name, been around a bunch of years, not hundreds and hundreds, like one of you said, but on Disney's uh, reputation. And the, I still remember going to Disneyland 
in the summer of 1955 as a 10-year-old. My dad, because he was a cop, got free tickets. Cops and firemen got free tickets, otherwise I couldn't have gone. And in those days, they had A, B, C, D, E tickets. And A tickets were like $4.50, which means you could ride all day and all night or whatever. And B tickets, and I mean, for peanuts, but we, we, we wouldn't have been able to afford it. And um, the, uh, some people say that there were only cops and firemen the first day. Uh, but I don't know about that. But uh, I still remember that. I was 10 years old. The, uh, but Disney's got a great reputation, still got a great reputation. And now they do all these other things, and the, the uh, chairman of Disney stepping down. Um, he's been on the, on the news quite a bit. Uh, he's done a great job, though. He's done a great job. I think he's been there 15 years or something. Every December, normally they start about Thanksgiving, though. But we didn't have so many for Thanksgiving this year. I don't know why. Maybe they weren't giving thanks. I have no idea. But a couple of them I'm chairman of, unfortunately, and they should know better. And um, one of the doctors said, all the, not all, he said all, he didn't mean all, all the points we agreed, pre-credit um, uh, committee, pre-term sheet, out of, um, they've gone back on. I, I scanned it, they, they went back on three. One, they want the board to sign a non-compete for three years. That's virtually unheard of. Absolutely, in 51 and a half years, I've never seen that. Where the board's got to sign a fucking nine compete to get a fucking chicken shit loan for $6 million. <clears throat> but the guy's desperate. He's like you. He'd, sell, he'd let you fuck his mother in the mouth for the last breath she had of air. That's where he is now. Second thing. Um, they say it's a tax event buying this $6 million piece of shit in Colorado, whatever it is. Um, and they want us to put, the board to put up a fund so the bank uh, is, doesn't have a, a, some sort of figment of their imagination tax liability. I don't even know what that is. That's, that's unheard of. I, I've never heard of that before. Uh, in Colorado, it's kind of weird now that they all smoke weed, but I mean, it, that's impossible, okay? And the third thing was um, they wanted the doc in the deal to sign his practice, his existing practices, uh, over as collateral, out of the blue. And most people will sign all this because they're desperate. There is a webinar from... Um, Jason Nagy from a couple years ago, where um, he says, basically, banks are crooks. That's a, more or less a direct quote. And he's right, if you let him. Nobody's got a gun to these kids' heads to sign this shit. But some of them have been out in the field one year, two years, five years, eight years, nine years. No deal. So after eight or nine years, you start to begin to think, well, fuck, maybe I am a worthless piece of shit, like the old man said. I could have saved him eight and a half years. <laughs> because you'll do anything. The longer you work at it without a deal, the more you'll reduce your morality, your humanity. Remember, the two longest deals we've ever had in this program are 12 and 13 years. Both Germanic. One German, one Austrian. Just imagine what those people were thinking. Some of you are on your way to, I mean, uh, I, they better watch out because we got some boys here that are going to pass you. Just imagine after 12 and 13 fucking years. Whereas on the other end of the Germanic continuum, Superstars. But most Germans, Germanic species, or whatever you want to call them, are too careful. They don't make mistakes. Well, 12 and 13 years of, uh, is, a, I think, a little overkill. But getting back to the, the emails I just read, 
So um, needless to say, these are emergency calls, even the guys that never came to the seminar. I don't answer emergency calls. Ever. Emergency is, no, there is, well, I can't even envisage, as they say here, any emergency you could ever have that I would answer your call. Your chairman sold the deal at the goal line. That's not an emergency. That's your stupidity. We've had that too. Now, I think those are kind of funny, as Sally would say. Now, I have a distorted sense of humor, admittedly, for sure. But I think, you know, if, right at the goal line, that means at the board meeting. Remember, right at the board meeting, you where you're waiting to have a board meeting to discuss the deals and, and give the stock away and all the bullshit, right? Right there, he goes, like, like um, the Flash in the, the movie, whoa! And he, and, he, and he runs out the door, and half the board follow him. I think that's pretty funny. And if you're that fucking stupid, you deserve to get fucked. And the people that taught me, the icons, if you're that fucking stupid, Danny, you, get, you deserve to get fucked. I was never that fucking stupid. I've had some deals stolen from me. So now these guys are wandering around on Christmas Eve. Well, these emails came in like 2, 3, 4 in the morning. So it's not Christmas Eve where they are, but it is Christmas Eve here. It doesn't make any shit to me, but the, the kids, you know, and I used to, 25 years ago, I felt sorry for them. As much sorrow as I can feel, which isn't too much, but I mean, as, as much I, I felt for them. In the last, well, I, I just, I don't feel anything now, but I used to feel sorry for them. And then I feel sorry if they were a kid. And if for some reason I first took them under my wing, I tried to help them along, and then they fucked up. I used to feel, I don't feel that way anymore. You know, and the, um, I feel that I was stupid to take them under my wing. That's what I feel now. How could you be so fucking gullible, man? Um, this has gotten exactly zero coverage in the newspapers, online. Not zero, but almost zero. Elon Musk, which is obviously, he, he's just about the number one flavor of the day right now. He's pretty, if he's not one, he's number two, right? He's the flavor of the day. Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk says woke, wokeness, and I'm not really sure I even understand really the true definition of wokeness, and political correctness is arguably one of the biggest threats to modern civilization. I say it is the biggest threat. Now, a lot of the big guys think that. He's one of the only, because he's outspoken as hell, as we all know, right? Um, he got fined by the SEC for 25 million bucks two, three years ago because he said something. His stock would have been delisted if it would have been me. He just got fined 25 million. 25 million dollar fine to uh, Elon Musk is like taking a shit. Not means nothing. If you're constipated, taking a shit. And as you get older, it's harder to take a shit. I just want to tell you that. Not for me. I don't, I'm not constipated. All my buddies my age are all constipated. They can't, get, they can't get it up, and they can't take a shit. Can you just ma imagine the combustion? I, I don't know exactly the right word to describe your innards, but I don't suffer from that. And I, I posted uh, about two weeks ago, I had my fifth colonoscopy. Fifth. Um, and I, I, po I posted on the social media. I said, I, I, the doctor, it was down here in Scotland at Nine Wells, and um, a, little, a cute little doctor, about five feet tall, and uh, she had, they had uh, three or four nurses, most of which were Filipinos uh, in there. And, uh, the, uh, and I told her the story, which is a true story, the first colonoscopy I ever had, I was in my 40s. When you're, after 50, you're supposed to have one every 10 years. Well, I've had five. And in my 40s, um, I was in Beverly Hills, and the doctor called in the staff, and this is all online, uh, the staff that said, uh, doctor so-and-so, nurse so-and-so, I want you to see something. And there were six or eight people around, because you, you, I was awake, and you watch it on a TV camera as the, as the thing goes up your, your colon and up into your stomach, and, and he says, this is what a perfect asshole looks like. As God is my witness. And um, I told the little doc that was putting the tube up my ass, and she started to laugh. In fact, she twitched a little, you know. And then I was sorry I told her. <clears throat> but I've had five colonoscopies, uh, and my innards look like a baby's innards. Still, as much as I've abused myself, of course, the doctor said, just imagine if you, you know how they say, lighten up my, my heavy tone and I could uh, 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 rule the world. But I don't want to lighten up my tone at all. Just imagine if you didn't beat your fucking body to death. 
You'd lived 140, 150. I'm going to live to 120 anyway, beat myself to death. And as my dad, who died at 91, and his brother, older brother died 30 months, lived 30 months longer, 94. And um, his older brother died before my dad. And my dad drank. He smoked six packs a day, between four and six packs of cigarettes a day, till he was um, 84. He drank a fifth of whiskey, minimum, and two, three bottles of wine a day from the time he was 18 till he was 88. His brother, uh, Larry Pena, my uncle, who's gone now, never smoked a cigarette or drank a, a drip of whiskey or wine. And he lived 30 months longer, 30. Needless to say, you can make the choice. My dad made the right choice. And my dad never did a push-up when he didn't make the Olympics in 1932 or 36. He was an alternate. He never, from that day forward, he never did a push-up. He never ran more than to the bar. And um, he was an all-American athlete who, when he didn't make the Olympic team, that was the, his last physical exercise ever. So we have good genes. My aunts lived to 101, 102, 103. Elon Musk. Now, why isn't this more publicized? Obvious reasons. He said also, which I didn't, I didn't post, they wanted, they wanted to get him for an interview with um, Lemon, the guy on Lemon uh, on CNN. And he said, I'm not that desperate. Well, how come it never gets... Am I the only motherfucker that sees this shit? I must have a special, uh, what do you call it, shit that uh, you feed or? There are other people that think the world's fucked. There are other people that think, you know, we're, we're past it. But they don't talk about it. What's the first rule of crisis management? Lie. Go, going back before the Romans. The first rule of crisis management is lie. There's a great scene in The uh, Officer and a Gentleman by Jack Nicholson. He said, you can't stand the truth! Because you can't. Or as they would say in this part of the world, you can't. They can't speak English up here. But the Romans couldn't, didn't beat the Picts, but they can't speak English, and they still can't speak English up here. Okay, but... Make Angus great again. We ordered, I'm exaggerating now, 42 million of these, along with poster boards. I mean, come the new year, you can't go down the motherfucking street without seeing my goddamn face. And I'd be the only one since they started voting here, some people s s still say they can't read and write up here, that started their uh, campaigns two and a half years before the fucking election. But I, I may not win, but it's not because they didn't know me. Getting back to Elon. Why? why? I, want somebody, I want a comment. Why? Uh, Steve Jobs thought we were past it before he died. Hawking said we were past it in 2004. Now, these are some of the brightest gifted people that ever were put on the planet. We're not talking about you. You and your, I had a nightmare about your princes, the royal families. I won't tell, you don't want to know what I saw them doing to you. Why? That's exactly right, media control, but who controls the media? Normally the liberal faction. Fox is an exception to that. I don't even consider Fox News news or conservative news. They, 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 they say it's on the conservative end. Uh, well, I, the guys that I know, and I, I don't hang with anybody, the guys that I talk to think Fox is liberal. That's one of the reasons they lost their um, the channels here in uh, Britain two or three years ago. There was only 64, 61,000 people that watched Fox News in all of the UK. And so they uh, gave up the, the franchise or whatever the right word is. Do they have Fox in Australia? Yeah. Last night you saw the movie. Which one? 
Pardon? Yeah, Andrew. And my namesakes, and it's part of my manifesto for those of don't read it, but for those of you that uh, might have seen it, my business um, uh, virtual mentor is Andrew Carnegie. My political uh, virtual mentor is uh, Churchill Winston, not my dogs. One dog is named, we got him a name, Sir Winston. We bought him a title. He's Sir Winston. And the other dog is Churchill because we haven't had any real politicians in Britain, in my opinion, in 70 plus years that have any balls. So the, the wokeness and the PC started well, when the second time they threw out Churchill. Just like they threw out Maggie. Maggie Thatcher was along those same lines. But um, no good deed goes unpunished. Maggie Thatcher saved the country from bankruptcy. Saved the Bank of England from going down the toilet. And they tossed her out on her old flabby ass. Churchill, similar from World War II, although they brought him back once. Uh, um, the, um, so you saw Carnegie. Now, most of you should know about Carnegie from the first seminar, uh, but um, any comments, takeaways from Mr. Carnegie? Okay. Hi, Mr. Payne. Good morning. Well, basically, uh, the, the level of ruthlessness and competition between those uh, top hitters, it's, <laughs> it's pretty... Uh, yeah, intense. It's, it, it's, it's definitive. I mean, they don't fuck around. As opposed to you guys. Or not just you, I mean the current generations. Since I've been giving the seminar 28 and a half years, and I've told you the toughest guys were in the 90s and the early 2000s, and then uh, the last generation, which is 20 years, um, has been, I won't say dog meat, but I mean, because we've got a lot of great students but compared to when Dan Locke came back to the seminar, I don't know, 10 years ago or eight years ago, whenever it was, uh, five years ago, and, uh, and Whipple and these guys came back, Dan said, the only thing you don't do, Dan, now is do the deal for him. Because when they went through, there was no webinars, there was no USPs, there was no nothing. Nothing. There was no homework. Fuck all. They, they swap bodily fluids, sex drugs, no drugs that I know of. Sex drugs and fucking rock and roll. We wa used to watch the sun come up from the snooker room. Hangover, Bloody Marys in, for breakfast. And I'm sure there was drugs. I didn't do any. But it was sex, drugs, and rock and rolls from 1993 to 2002. And then they left and they just went out and took care of business. Now, because it's, it's the DNA that's changed. And you can't change DNA in a generation. So when I say that, I'm saying something really powerful for you morons that don't understand genetics. It's impossible to th change DNA in a generation. It's not possible. But I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it with my own eyes. And they were just hungry. And you're right, they were ruthless. And when um, Carnegie was having people killed, etc., cetera, and, uh, the, and they were trying to unionize, yada, 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 he came to, to Europe, and he visited the queen, and he did some shit, you know, and he was here. But, as I said the first night, it's not by accident. With all the good he did with his money, who was, in my judgment, the first motivated seller in the world? Andrew Carnegie, when he sold to J.P. Morgan. Andrew, and he was trying to make up for his sins. He has not one title, not one award from the, ki the king or the queen, Queen Victoria back then, or the king, because um, he died in 1919. Now, isn't that remarkable? Not one motherfucking, bless you, not even one, yes, sir. Is that because, as my dad used to say, uh, people tend to look at the bad, but not the good. One, you can do one, all, Good things, but one bad thing. And yeah, well, well, that, well, he didn't do any good thing until he died. His money was left four hundred and some odd million dollars, which in today's money is a lot more than that. And um, but you can't go 15, 20 miles south of here. I don't know if that's south or not. I think that's west, so that's east, so that's south. You can't go uh, 15, 20 miles south of here without seeing his name and where he was born, etc. The um, 
And of course, you know, he gave a lot of money in the United States, uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon uh, University, etc. But he did a lot of ugly shit. They didn't get, you know, no awards. Not an OBE, MBE, no, no barren shit, no, nothing. Just think of that. But nobody, when I, when, uh, not last birthday, but my 75th birthday, Sally was kind enough to take me to uh, Skibo Castle, uh, Carnegie Estate, uh, for my birthday um, during Corona. And the, uh, that estate is not like this estate. This estate is well manicured every acre. They're not. Anyway, it's not the same. But um, it's, it was amazing when you talk to the administrator, of course, you know, and it, when you go to America and you talk to the administrator of the Carnegie uh, Trust, they've got all kinds of reasons. But the bottom line is you got nothing. Now, another interesting thing, and there's a bunch of this on, online. Uh, there was a book written about it, that um, Think You Go Rich is not based on an interview with Andrew Carnegie by um, uh, Napoleon Hill. It's a fraud. He never met Napoleon Hill. Now, the other side of it is, why would a 19-year-old spend a weekend with a 65-year-old man? A three-day weekend. And he wasn't even Muslim. I mean, we do that here. 19-year-old? Well, yeah, you but know, you go. No, 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 but you're not, you're not spending the weekend with me. Okay. You're not spending the weekend with me. And, and, and Sally, well, she, I, I, I don't have breakfast with you. I don't have lunch. But I wish I didn't have to have dinner with you. But Sally said that, you know, for the much money as you pay, they should be able to at least look at me at dinner. I, I don't sit with everybody. And now I even like it better because you're all spread out. You know, if it chronic gets bad enough, then I'll just sit up here and have dinner. And you guys sit over there. So, um, so any, any, any other comments other than he was a ruthless guy? There's no question about that. And, but at the castle, Skibo Castle, the one thing you don't notice unless you look for it is the door handles are all, instead of where a normal door handle would be on a door, the door handles are about a foot lower because of, he was short. And we stayed in, in his um, daughter's suite, which adjoined his suite. I asked, where was Mrs. Carnegie's suite? Everybody looks around. You need a long, I'm exaggerating now, you need a long-range bomber with refueling capability to find his fucking wife's suite. Success leaves clues. She was on the ass end of the castle looking up at a, a, a mound of dirt. And his suite was on the corner and his daughter's suite was um, adjoined to his suite. And um, they're about the same size. The old man's suite was a little bigger. But when we were there, it was, um, and uh, this is online. We, we ate in the library one night. We ate here one night. And uh, service was very good. It was only about, I don't know, six or eight people staying at the place. Because it is expensive. Um, yes, sir. Uh, take away from me. Uh, doesn't matter they are in different industries. They still compete with each other. They compete for power. They compete for being the best. Yeah. And when I, when I just told you the first real motivated, registered motivated seller on the planet was Andrew Carnegie, you looked at me like I would have thought that you would have figured that out, but you didn't. But <laughs> most of the stuff I think you're going to figure out, you don't. So I'm not sure if it's inductive or deductive logic. There's something lacking. All the synapses aren't firing like they did 25 years ago in humanity. They're just not. But as Dan said, the only thing you don't do, Dan, and then Whipple said something to the effect, or not Whipple, Dan said, and if you bought them a deal, they'd fuck it up anyway. Because there's, there's a lack of hunger. Uh, they're going a little faster. Uh, towards the, in two, three days from now, they're going to be going because you're going to build into your presentation the errors that you've seen other people make, and so you're going to learn by default. And that's what the system is here to do. Any questions of me, I'm going to let you go back out. Dinner's at 7, you know, as you know. I'm going to let you go out and work. But any questions of me while I'm here in front of you? Yes, sir. Hey, just the TDA when you have money. 
But isn't that against the really yeah, Well, it is, but I mean, you're going to find a deal. Now, see, I'm, I'm going to, uh, just like in the regular seminar, I say, you're going to buy doctor practice if somebody is, okay? You don't want to buy the fucking building. But you're going to buy the building. Because you're going to be pressured that the doctor won't do the deal without you buying his fucking building. You're not going to remember all the things I told you how to get around that. I'm not going to go through them now. So the cash flow will not cover the debt service on the business that produces the fucking income, cash flow, and the building. So you come up 50, 100 grand, 300 grand short. So instead of going to get a refinance, get a fucking loan on it, it's easier just to write a check. That's what I mean. But if you follow and you don't do buy the fucking buildings and you follow the steps like the Carlings, you won't have to write a check ever. And as Graham said very proudly, as a cheap Scot, he said, I've got no money in the deal. And we're already taking money out. If you heard him clearly. Now, did anybody find it difficult to understand him or his wife? Yes. Yeah, okay. Well, I understand now because I can, okay. But um, the... Um, and as I said, uh, Leanne, you're a much better face than he is. You know, I think he's, he's losing his hair a lot quicker now. So, you know, the, uh, but stay together. I need the couple up there. Don't, uh, don't dump him. Uh, but, I mean, the, so far, um, and even though uh, when Andreas was here uh, a couple months ago to give the presentation, he, he told, uh, he was asked several times, uh, mostly by Germans, that, that if he's got any money in the deal. And he said, the only money I have is I borrowed 25,000 euros to start the GMBH. Because he, he put all the money up for the GMBH up front. Uh, I wouldn't count that, but he did count it. So that's factored into the numbers between Bitcoin uh, versus QLA. Uh, and I told you a little while ago that he closed another deal today. And, the, um, and he, God willing, he'll close another one before the end of the year. Uh, because they give in at this time of the year. They're more afraid than you. They're more scared than you. And they need the fucking thing more than you. I know that's hard to believe, but true. And you can squeeze them like a fucking $5 hooker. I mean, right down to midnight on the 31st. And a few of the guys aren't going to do that. Just as I used to. And uh, nothing wrong with it. That's just the way it is. <sighs> Any other questions of me before I let you go back to your own devices? Now, now Abdul bin Laden over here, now, we, we heard you explain the deal. Okay. Now, you know, but all these deals, not all these, but most of these deals work out on paper. Because they do. <laughs> they just work out on paper. And when, you, when they ask you, I've told you this before many times, when, <laughs> when the banker or the business development guy at the bank uh, said, well, do you have a business plan? And as Andrea said on one of the webinars he did for us, he said that, um, well, have you ever seen a business plan fail on paper? And one of the credit officers at the German bank that he was dealing with, that's what I keep telling the credit committee. Why do we collect these damn business plans? Because they never fail on paper, which is the absolute truth. As yesterday when uh, I hammered home about... Uh, I mean, I hammer it always, success leaves clues, and, and I tease and taunt and uh, the audiences, which are not just the groups, but when I go to schools, etc. cetera. Uh, and they read a lot of books in this room. I can't, I can't even imagine how many fucking books you meet as a read. But anyway, <clears throat> and you read one book, and then you read uh, Charlie Munger's book, and then you read uh, Elon Musk's book, and then you read... Read Jeff's book and uh, uh, Bill. I don't know how many books Bill's read or uh, written. And so the average guy that comes through here has probably read as many as 50 books. And there's a lot of, a lot of from arguably, ostensibly, a lot of successful people. Some are luminaries, you know. Uh, and some aren't. Uh, the, and uh, some are two, three, four trip ponies. They've read, read, or written, excuse me, two, three, four books. Some have written, fuck, I mean, 
there's guys that have written 15, 20 books. Um, like Peter's, uh, you know, the, from the 80s and still writing books. And they're all worth something. And maybe there's, giving them the benefit of the doubt, maybe there's one um, kernel of knowledge in the book. Maybe one. Sometimes a couple. I think that uh, the words of Charlie Munger, whose personality is very much like mine, is uh, got a lot of kernels. But they're listening to him now more, you know, and I wish you'd live another 20 years, Charlie, but he's, he's right at the end of his life cycle in his late 90s. But he's been saying the same shit for 50 years. <laughs> Not dissimilar to myself. You know, uh, some of us get uh, a run towards the end of their life cycle. I'm not as old as he is, but, uh, but you continue to read them, but you take no action. This room, not just this room, but almost all the rooms, um, giving you a slight benefit of the doubt because it's the hardcore, only a slight. Um, we cover no new material here. So this is less of a, a good buy than the first seminar. This is, on a discounted cash value, this is minus the seminar worth. And of course, you know, uh, other notables, not as notable as myself, say that people don't look at that. They don't look at it that way. And I've said this many times, you think reading books is taking action. And uh, even just for a microsecond, just if, 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 if you didn't think that, then you wasted a lot of time. I used to ask, and we used to debate this, kind of a debate. Now, we don't even have debates here because, uh, you know, when I get tired of hearing your shit, I just shut you up and I move on. So it's not really a debate. But um, so you wasted a lot of time. Uh, we don't have any 19-year-olds, or, and we certainly don't have any 14-year-olds like the Carlings are bringing in a couple months. Oh, I, they're the next slide, by the way. I'm, I'm pointing at them as if they're there. Um, the, um, but that's not taking action. I like a terminology or a, a, a quip that uh, Warren started maybe 10 years ago. It's uh, like, like winking at a girl in the dark. She doesn't know you're winking, does she? Your efforts heretofore are like winking at a girl in the dark. It's hard to get laid winking at a girl in the dark unless you jump on her and do bad things to her, you know, but... but, but Normally speaking, that will get you no results. So most people that are on my website, there was about 10,000 people on the website yesterday, uh, which is pretty good for Christmas Eve. There'll probably be 5,000 on today uh, because everybody's doing all the things that I tell you you shouldn't do. Um, but since all the material is free on the website, and the first seminar is just a reiteration of all the free material, basically. You ostensibly get, not ostensibly, you really you get the thumb drive and you get some templates. All those templates are free on Reddit, the black web, you name it. Every fucking thing that I've ever produced in my 28 and a half is on the web, on, on, uh, online someplace. Someplace. So if it really worked, you could find it. Even that thing, that magic thing that Andres has produced that thing for the board meetings, that's online. And so then this is not a reiteration of the first seminar. Um, um, we do some, no, I don't call it role playing, when they get up and they, uh, you present, some of your presentation skills are okay. Uh, at best, uh, uh, the biggest uh, difference I see is in uh, um, James, because I've seen, I've known him 27 years now, that seems like, and I've seen him, and he, he speaks pretty well now. He speaks pretty well. And he said he went to improv. Um, and James followed my instructions to a T, to a T, until they went out to hustle and deals, and then he hit some speed bumps and he got diverted. Anyway, be that as it may. The, but guys, and for the benefit, and I'm not, this is not my Christmas message, so don't get confused here. Um, we're coming on to a new year. And um, I was, um, I looked at uh, Twitter 
about three minutes, and I saw Logan Paul, who I was on a show a couple years ago, just before uh, Corona. And, um, and he made a comment that is really p pretty germane. He felt that 2021 was he was living his life legitimately. Now, I'm not giving him more benefit than he deserves because he's a crazy kid. But I mean, he said what he wanted to say, to whom he wanted to say it, and he had no reservations. Now, some of it was acting because he was going to fight with him in the ring and he get paid a lot of money. But people say about me, a Hall of Famer, a double Harvard degree Hall of Famer up there. Uh, this is back in the 90s. Uh, uh, Mr. Pena says words that we're, we dare not even to think in our subconscious. Some of you in this room would not say shit if it was in your mouth. And how's your program worked out? A couple of you are delusional enough to think your program's worked out well. He's one right here in the corner. Some of you know your program hasn't worked out, so you brought your deal here, which is fine. And we've gone through it. And, you know, uh, it's like when the, the, the one German was beating up on the other German. He, yeah, yeah, but I'm going to, uh, well, uh, most of his answers were, yeah, yeah, but. I, I hope and pray. And if he came here to, to practice, and so when he goes, gets out and is really doing it, the answers are not, yeah, yeah, but, then it was worth him coming here. But if you don't have the answers, more importantly, if you're not, a, and a lot of you have boards, which I'm, I'm happy about the boards, but I'm shocked that they haven't grilled you and prepared you better and asked you harder questions. Now, in some cases, you haven't brought it to the board yet because you're embarrassed, maybe, you're embarrassed, so you bring it here, which hopefully, you know, you'll get the answer. So then when you bring it to the board, you're not as embarrassed as much. That's giving you the benefit of the doubt. And then, um, but, and some of you went to the seminar two years ago, three years ago, uh, but mostly in the last three years, last 36 months, more or less. And there were a lot of reasons. Uh, when the guys were here and they, we got shut down and then uh, Corona and there was a bit, and then we, I, I think I canceled the summer uh, um, hardcore uh, a year or two ago, whenever it was. So there was a reason why there was a separation hardcore. I, I understand that. And some of you went out and went deals. The slum landlord went out and did three uh, mini uh, uh, slum deals. So, uh, and that's great. Okay. And he's building up to a big slum deal, which um, if he takes a 50 pound cut a month, he can flip to the fucking council who are morons. I did his, I, I explained his whole deal in a half a sentence. Now, remember how, how long he was up there stuttering? I told you, if your communication skills, maybe this is my Christmas message, if your communication skills got half, 5% as good as mine, you're a billionaire. And then I, I, I reframed that information. I said, if they get 1%, I looked up at there, 1%, you're a billionaire. Not even 1%. Um, Goins went to improv, and it's, it's, it's noticeable, and his presentation skills, it's absolutely noticeable. And um, the, um, but for those of you that have boards and you showed them the deals and they didn't critique them like you were critiqued here, you got the wrong board. I'm, I'm guessing you got the wrong board anyway, but since you presented information that shouldn't have come out of your lips if you had a board and you used them. Now that's a big if, because most people don't go to their board because you don't want to sound idiotic. I had a couple more calls last night. Oh, God help me. Anyway, and, the, um, and he said, um, you know, well, what did so-and-so say? Well, I didn't tell him. What did so-and-so? Well, I haven't shared that with him. Okay, I didn't ask any more because I figured that if he didn't, tell the, uh, uh, the chief legal officer and our CFO, well then fuck nobody, I mean, which are the two primary ones you go to normally. Um, we can't, we, we can, and for the successful um, people, their testosterone is increased, but we can't grow balls for a year. And again, the questions you asked the Carlings yesterday, 
there wasn't one good question, especially from Namnats over here, Dumkov. Not one fucking good question. I would have asked them how you got the first deal. Well, they explained one. He, he stumbled into one good question when he said he was in a hotel with their lawyer and they saw administrators and were running through. So they, they connected the dots. Most of you would still be sitting there. They connected the fucking dots. Fuck, somebody must be going bankrupt. And that's what administration means here, uh, bankrupt. And they jumped on the deal and they got the deal. And they got on the short list, um, and they got the deal, and they saved 150 jobs, yada, yada, yada. Um, but the, the, the other questions, other than they were a couple, a successful couple, uh, weren't really germane. Weren't really germane. So success leaves clues. And I've added the phrase in recent months, uh, uh, seen is be believing is seen is believing. And the primary reason for the, um, the webinars today is not the reason that I started them many years ago. Uh, I started them many years ago because you could relate to a regular person. Hope, I thought. I was wrong, though. You know, a, a regular Joe. And today we're going to see Peter, the, ho the uh, hospital magnate. And who I thought was as normal a human being that we've ever come through here that got super rich as normal. He didn't have any attributes. He didn't speak that well, although I'm told he speaks eloquently in Hungarian. I don't know that, OK? I got to take that on somebody's word. And that didn't work. Originally, I put up um, Josh Kim. Well, fuck, if a 17, 18-year-old kid could do it, I, I mean, everybody should be relate to, relate to that. And God, he's got no education, he's got no qualification. His only asset is a 15-speed fucking bicycle. I was wrong about that. Because then you thought he was fucking uh, Michelangelo. So at the end of the day, as, as Graham said yesterday, live, uh, that... Um, they just did it, and they followed the steps. He said it four or five times. And the reason they say that, guys, is because they're the only ones that are successful. They follow the steps. I'm not saying the slum landlord is not going to be successful. I'm not saying that. But that's not our model. There's, uh, there's 100,000 of his ethnicity in the greater London area or southern England that are doing exactly what he's doing. At least 100,000. Remember, if you can't be first, you got to be different. And even though this kid doesn't believe me, I know there's 100 people doing what he's doing. At least 100. Absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. If you pay the kind of money that they, you think is a lot of money, which is not, uh, and you don't listen to what I say, it's just like you reading those books that you never took action on. Why? Because you're not where you want to be in life, and either in your gut, in your heart, in your brain, or your wife, or significant other, what are we going to do the rest of our lives? Sit in this two-bedroom um, apartment that we rented from the slum landlord? We gotta, you got to do something. So you pretend. And that's why I call you pretenders. Graham didn't say it's part of his story. That's in the article. In the, uh, uh, put the next slide on. Oh, it's me. Excuse me. In that article, he talks about how he lived in council flats. Uh, when he got started, and he bought his wife a book, uh, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Poor, whatever that book is, okay. Uh, and that was the beginning of their trip uh, to success. And then he failed at four or five things, and et cetera. Um, but that was maybe 20 years ago. And then he found me about five years ago. But reading those books and reading and, and having the um, USPs uh, uh, and uh, the templates, what you could have got without coming here, 
Uh, now I'm told categorically, there's no comparison between listening to the tapes and me in person. I understand that. Um, and there probably is no comparison for, if you get the stuff on uh, the dark web or Reddit or wherever, uh, than actually hearing me say it here, or hearing people say it. But we have people that are multi-billionaires that I never met. 99% of all the people that have uh, uh, created my trillion dollars, I never met. How is that? I never met, never touched, never screamed at, you know. I'd like to scream at, you know, a million people. That would be fun for me, for me, not for the million. I've, we've created in excess of a million millionaires without meeting them. So that means they either read or heard me, and they took action the way the steps say. Now, we do have a couple billionaires that we go, I've got at least two crypto fuck billionaires. I had nothing to do with it. And um, they decided to fade what I said as part of the portfolio. Well, let's, you know, let's do 10% of what Penny says not to do and see how it works out. Well, it worked out for them, you know, they're multi-billionaires because of Quipfuck, you know. They were multi-billionaires when it was 20,000 a coin. So I don't know how much now. They, uh, they stopped throwing it in my face now. They got tired of throwing it in my face. So the, uh, but guys, this is the third day. It's Christmas. Uh, we're doing something that 99.9% .9 of the planet's not doing. Okay? When we came downstairs, my wife asked uh, Mr. Adelaide, uh, are they having Christmas dinner right now? I, I think was the question, something like that. And he said, yeah, there are so many hours ahead, whatever. Um, and I only had, last night, I only had uh, seven emails. Um, the, um, because just like I say, you'll never exceed your highest and wildest dream. In the old days, they, everybody, the guys used to say, and the reason why I wrote the book, 100 million, because the 100, first 100 million is a bitch. It's hard. After that, it's pretty easy for all the reasons. I mean, just like you got your deal financed, I mean, because you've already been successful. <clears throat> and, and now people say billion, and then they say billions, and once in a while, one of you guys will say, I want to be a trillionaire, you know. And that's getting more uh, reasonable because now you've got guys worth 150 billion, 200 billion, et cetera. So somebody, you know, um, down the road is going to create uh, a trillion dollar a company, not like the trillion dollars that I created to you know, a million of you uh, meatheads. But normally, if you say 100 million, and I've said this a couple times already this week, your brain internally, see, your brain doesn't know you're full of shit, your subconscious. It starts to slow down, and at 85, 90, 95, 98 million, you fall across the goal line at 100 million, 50,000. But most of the people that say, um, and remember when we did goals in the regular seminar, um, they say, you know, they said 500 million, they make 110 million, I never hear from them again. Because it's rhetoric. They're words that you read out of somebody's book or listened to on a podcast, but they're not you, what you want. But in personal development, it's like in the 70s, doing cocaine, everybody's involved in some sort of development to make themselves better. Wellness, whatever you want to call it. And how are their programs worked out? They haven't. They haven't. Last night, well, forget last night. I wanted to say, you heard Graham live and his lovely wife yesterday. Uh, when they came to me five years ago, their turnover was a little less than a million pounds. Their turnover uh, now is 120. I, I've been seeing 106. I don't know where I got 106. I think 106 in AOL today. I don't know why in my brain. Is 120, they've got about 850 employees. They saved 150 or 60 employees down the road here, and they're the darlings of uh, Scottish business right now. And they're gonna be the darlings of my political foundation going forward. If I could take this and create this, what could I do with a, state, a county, a country? Because I'm not afraid to upset people. 
And on top of it, I get off on it. I enjoy it. I enjoy being able to tell, say people shit their pants in the, not this room, the other room. That makes me feel good. And we haven't anybody shat themselves in a, in a while. So I'm either getting softer, which is what Sally says, because you're not getting tougher. The income was about uh, five, 500K. The debt was minus 700K. So it was not, not convenient. It was not fitting the QLA model, right? But I, as, as you said, I asked for the taxes and it was corresponding. Mm -hmm. Because as you, as you say, it is very important that those two things are checked. Correct. Because it is, it is my experience that the taxes, they never cheat. In Belgium, the most, most of the Western world doesn't cheat. They, 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 they do not cheat. So I think that they are less creative with the taxes than with the accounting. So, okay, so I wanted to do a deal, QLA, and uh, I saw in the, in the balance sheets that there were buildings, assets, uh, worth about uh, 2 million uh, euros, fixed uh, assets. And I still uh, hear you say, uh, Black Beauty don't buy uh, the assets. So I visited because I wanted to, to, to achieve and first the man said, okay, I said, I'm not interested in your buildings. I just want to, to see your, 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 your business mm -hmm. as such. Um, but the first visit, he said, okay, business, and we exclude the buildings. Okay. Then I did a little research and there were, uh, he had license problems. So in fact, he had a care home, but it was not legal. It was not legal. Mm -hmm. Then I asked for the, uh, how can you say, the, the occupancy. He gave me numbers, but it was already, he was so desperate, it was already partial. So of the 40 units, he had sold 20 to his patients, and he hired 20. So I said, okay, uh, you always said, building, do not do it. Do not do it. Then I found out, when I went on, on the grounds, I said, sir, can I just make a, a tour here in the gardens? And, and I met a nice gardener, and I went to the... And he said, I said, there is a river here. It, it's all black. He said, yes, sir, but don't you know? I said, what? It's a flooding. <laughs> so it, it is all. Every year, we have three, four floodings. And you, you said, you have to visit it. So I visited with the CFO, <laughs> and I wanted to see the cellars. The, the, how can I? The, the, the cellars. The basement underneath. The, the, base, yeah. the basement. So there was mud. There was... It was uh, quite uh, uh, incredible, but I wanted to achieve. So I went for a, 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 a second uh, visit. I, I said, I do not want uh, the buildings. But then the man, we sat in a room. His wife came, his aunts came. And it was clear that, 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 that there was a family problem, a family fight. The family wanted out. The family wanted to get rid of the building and all the, all the trouble and, and, and hassle. So I thought it was, it was perfect. Um, there were problems with licenses, as I have explained. And I visited the garden, so I knew, I knew about it. And then I found out, um, I think on a legal way, that, they, that he had pl uh, problems also with uh, very powerful local uh, politicians. So there was, a, uh, th there was a problem there. But, and then I made a second visit. Uh, I know it was on 
New Year's Eve. Yes, it was on New Year's Eve because I wanted to break uh, the record. And then suddenly he wanted to, to include the buildings. So in fact, he asked for uh, 3.4 EBITDA in the beginning. And then suddenly he asked 15 times EBITDA. Of course, he had included with sure. his accountant uh, uh, the value of his building. Um, and he, he said it to me. I found it very stupid for him to say that. He wanted the big life. He wanted, as you said, the golden exit. That was, that, that was what, what he wanted. And 15 times he would have had a golden exit. Yeah, he would have had a, a golden exit. So I, I, I went to the board. I, uh, I presented it to the CFO. And uh, they said, uh, Jan, there is nothing good about it. So I rejected it. But I have to, I have to say I, 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 I didn't do it full-heartedly because uh, I, wa I was on, 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 on the track to break your record. But as you say, if you want a deal bad enough, you do a bad, bad deal. deal. Correct. So it would have been a bad deal. And I just want to present to the... I just want to comment one thing. And a lot of the kids do the bad deal. Two seminars ago, we had a guy sitting back in the corner uh, who was Italian from Brooklyn, the Bronx. And uh, he was... Pardon? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. And he had married, just got married uh, in the last uh, 25-year-old or something, you know. And, yeah, yeah. The... Uh, now, I, I make the story up now that she was a hooker, but she wasn't. I don't know that for, for a fact, but, and he had a baby, and he was all proud, but he was too old to have kids anyway. But, so it was probably somebody else's baby. But anyway, so he did uh, one deal, and when I, when I go through the two models, remember the 60-40 and then the bad deal that you shouldn't do? Well, he did it almost exactly like the bad deal you shouldn't do, plus he put in two hundred or $250,000 of his own money. Okay. So he made a bad deal even worse by putting his own fucking money in. Uh, and he said, oh, I did that. So almost everything that, they, that uh, I said that you shouldn't do, I did that too. I did that too. And I mean, it, it was like a, a comedy, a show on TV. Um, but I would rather, and sometimes it's very difficult to step away from these deals. Believe me, I understand yeah. that. But you did. It was, uh, it was uh, very hard, as, as you say. And uh, you feel uh, rejected. So that is... Uh, so the second deal was uh, radiology. That was income uh, 750k, debt uh, 625. It corresponded with the tax uh, returns. Uh, but after evaluation by my uh, CFO, who is an ex uh, PBC, he said, uh, "Yam, what do you want to do? Buying the doctors or the joints or, or, or the joint?" And I have. I, I have to admit, I did not understand why he asked it. He, he said, I want the names of, of, uh, of, the, of the doctors. And in fact, there was one who wanted out and one who wanted to stay. And we found, in, uh, and that's why I always go back three years, in 2000, 2018, they had a legal fee, suddenly, a legal fee of, uh, I miss carefully, it was 500,000 uh, euros. So there was something going on. I asked the question. I never got uh, an answer. Never. So in the beginning, they said, vendor, okay, no problem, 30, 40%. And then later, no. Was not, we could not discuss it anymore. The asking price was seven times EBITDA. So the board said, next. And then to just uh, make the relation with uh, what, um, what, 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 you said, what you just said about uh, private equity, I had a good deal here, Health IT. Uh, it was a digital waiting room. The tax returns were amazing. Uh, not amazing for them, but uh, okay. Uh, the valuation, so they made the first year uh, 750K. Uh, a loss of 255. Uh, the valuation was uh, okay. 
I don't know if I can say that, but uh, in Belgium we have a, a very famous institute that's called, called the a uh, very rich uh, family, and they uh, call the shots, as you say, and uh, they always say for such, such a business, you have to ask six times EBITDA. That is the benchmark. That's the, that's the kind of family who sets the, the benchmark. Um, I said, okay, nice. Um, so I talked about it uh, in the board. Vendor loan, okay. Multiples, okay. So we started uh, the negotiations. And um, uh, 10 days ago, I was told that it was uh, snatched by private equity. Uh, there was already uh, an LOI and the same evening uh, closing. Why did they uh, chose for private equity? They got it. They, they, just, the they just wrote, uh, the check. wrote out the check. Right. And that's a problem, Mr. Penny, that I want to say. I don't know if it is uh, exact also in the, in the UK, but in, in, in Belgium. Private equity on the health market is really, um, how can I say, shocking along. They are investing in everything they see, in everything that moves. They are investing. But, well, but as you say, they are not willing to do the dirty work. Right. They are not investing in one unit. If you have 10 units, Correct. then you can talk about it. Correct. If you have 50 units, better. But they, they will not do, no, they don't do the dirty, dirty work. work. Correct, correct, correct. And as I, I mentioned, Andres has just started to get uh, contacted by the uh, private equity uh, since he got about 15 units and now we're closer to 20. Um, and they, they don't want to do the grunt work. And they're willing to pay you, though. You know, uh, they're willing to pay you 50% or even higher on your money that you've got, not you invested, but that you've purchased, that you've spent already. Um, but um, they, Belgium is late in the game vis-a-vis -vis private equity getting involved. They, private equity has been here for, for, not forever, but I mean for 15, 20 years uh, since, uh, since the Four Season Healthcare roll-up that I was participated in 20 years ago. Um, but I mean, it's still a numbers game uh, now, in the, and that's why I tell you to have five LOIs, uh, because for one reason, either private equity is going to get one of them, if not more, or uh, they're going to change the terms as uh, the guy with the uh, mud in his cellar uh, came and changed the terms and wanted to sell the building, uh, and that's why you need to have more. And uh, the first board meeting Andres had, we bought four of the five, four of the five, and so. Um, but you followed the process. Yeah, I, I, I did. I just wanted to say that um, uh, I had a, a, a very high, I, I don't know if I can say that, a very high level contact with the private equity. And it's, uh, you fall of your, of, your, of your chair, how they deal with money. They don't think in economics. They only think about the money. They want to put in the money, double the money but they have no strategy, not at all. And the bad thing is, as you say, it is not their money. No, I know it's not, They're for sure. pension funds. I don't know if I can say No, that, sure you can. I mean, the, they, the, they, um, are, they, are, they are gambling with pension funds money. Pensioners, like me. Not, not like me, but my age anyway. The, um, no, it's true. So, so that, that's it. And I have just five things to say to the, to, to the class that I found, um, that I found uh, very important. Um, I do not believe in, uh, in, in Zoom calls. I believe in meeting people. One-on-one uh, -on -one is most effective. I could, could keep my board together because I, I talk to them. And if you look somebody in the eyes, you know how, how it works, I think. You're right. Um, I agree. And, I, and I did one great uh, stupid thing. That is the, the picture that was taken on the seminar. I'm not a IT nerd, but I did what you said. I was I activated LinkedIn, but I was so stupid to put my uh, picture with you on LinkedIn. <laughs> so uh, I got uh, approached and used by uh, thirty idiots 
So I was hunted down. For sure. Uh, can, we, can we do a joint uh, venture, Jan? <laughs> so in fact, uh, I was doing all the work and they were doing just uh, nothing. Nothing. What? Well, in in the beginning, the the guy was so uh, desperate, and I was. But now it's it's uh, no. I I said it's over because I I noticed that I did all the work, and he did nothing at all. Nothing. So, was he Belgian? Uh, yes, he was Belgian, and uh, if I can be perfectly honest, he uh, was uh, uh, part of the um, uh, Facebook uh, program of your friend, my friend. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce the Whipple. Yeah, yeah, he was. Well, Bruce has been. Well, we've all been fucked. But I'm, I'm banned. Other than my political Facebook, it's not banned. I just opened it up a few weeks ago. But the, um, and that's not the charm. That's the lure. When they like, uh, I've closed down several QLA Facebook pages, QLA podcasts, Q, because I have nothing to do with them. But because if they, if you Google QLA, I come up, and so people said, think that I'm indirectly involved, and I'm not direct. I'm not involved indirectly, directly, or any kind of way. Uh, and that's why Kath, one of her primary jobs is shutting people down to sell our product illegally, uh, or not even our product. They just use our name. Uh, so I, I, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, but uh, people will use scam guys and gals will use something that has got a high profile, that has name recognition, and QLA does have name recognition, and I have name recognition. So, um, but I mean, but it's a numbers game. I mean, you follow the steps and you, did, you try three things and they didn't work out. No, and, I, uh, that's just an example of all okay. the, of all the deals sure. I screened, but who, who not, but they go even further, Mr. Pena. They, they, they look at the contacts that I have on LinkedIn, and they contact my contacts. That, that's, so when you accept them, that's that's so yeah. That's, I understand uh, that. So I, I just wanted to say uh, I, I, I'm I'm a lawyer, okay, but the rationale of, of of QLA there is none. There is no rationale. I just wanted to to explain that. And uh, they always talked about me. Uh, rich people are smart. I think not. They just try and take risks. So. Um, that's what. That's what. Well, I if want. you don't take any risks, you're never going to get anything done. No, that's that's right. And uh, I just wanted to make uh, it, it plain and simple that uh, I don't think uh, if anybody thinks here in the classroom that Mr. Pena is your friend, he is not. I think uh, his core business is that uh, everybody has, as his father said, has talents and gifts, and uh, but people do not use them. And I think that is that uh, drives him crazy. So it does drive me crazy. That's, and, that, that, and the, that well, not everybody crazy. has talents and gifts. I mean, some people have talents and gifts, and most don't. This is for one point zero 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 one percent of the people on the planet. And that one in ten thousand are people that have a stronger emotional bank accounts that can gut through uh, the gut. Not it's not gut wrenching to me, but the gut wrenching experience. Uh, rejection, failure, rejection, and failure before success. But the one thing I guarantee, and I guarantee the first night or the first day, if you stop or if you quit, you start and quit or not, never begin, the chances of you creating generational wealth are zero. They're zero. I mean, but I mean, no, no program. This is the best program that you can have that I've ever seen with no money. Somebody would shit for money, nothing, to get rich. I don't know any, but there's, that's the financial perfection of the model. The emotional is another side, another side. And uh, the, uh, we do the best, success leaves clues, and all the guys are tough, and not everybody that comes to the seminar is tough. It's that simple. Any questions or comments? Thank you. No, oh, 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 you're not done. I'm sorry. No, okay. no. I, I just wanted to say that I'm not. I, I, I still see you see it. There is one motivated cell, uh, one moving part. That's it. And, and for me, uh, it is not that. It is. Uh, it's all about uh, self confidence. If you have no uh, self confidence, um, if you cannot take being stabbed in the back, no. 
You cannot, well, you, self-confidence you cannot, is another you, word. Jack Welch uses the word self-confidence. I say self-esteem. But I mean, it's, uh, there's six of one, half a dozen of the other. Uh, but you build self-confidence through experience. You're not born with self-confidence. You, you build self-confidence by what you see your parents do or not do. And as uh, Leanne Carling said yesterday on the Zoom call, uh, our kids see us work all the time. Our kids see us working through the weekend. And i.e. they're coming in, in March with their, their 14-year-old son. I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun. Uh, uh, Graham and Leanne, I guess your kids probably haven't seen you slapped around, have they? Or they're going to get an experience. They're going to live vicariously every time I poke you. Um, but you're right. And, uh, and the downside of LinkedIn, and he's absolutely correct, the downside of LinkedIn is the, uh, they have access to your uh, contacts. I, I, don't know how, I don't know anything about it. I, I know I have uh, 26,000 people that I'm connected with in LinkedIn that what I got connected in to 10 years ago when I first got on LinkedIn in Asia, when we had our crack team, uh, they'll probably both uh, defer and say that it wasn't them. It probably wasn't them, but somebody, and I've got, I had 30,000. You max out at 30,000, so I've whittled it down from 30,000 down to 26,000 over the last year or two. But, the, um, but I'll say right now, just because they're connected to me on LinkedIn doesn't mean I do business with them. In fact, virtually none of them do I do business with them. And I, and I don't reconnect or try to connect with people uh, on uh, LinkedIn or any other service for that matter. Any other any co questions, comments from you? No, sir. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Camel jockeys are thieves. The, the odds are, uh, I, I'm kind of warm enough to Bin Laden a little, but the, uh, I haven't had a mentee named Bin Laden for real. I told you the story. And he, he couldn't believe that the, because of his name that they were being uh, uh, unkind to him. Now, how fucking naive can you be? Well, I've seen a lot of naive people here. Okay. Um, tonight, it doesn't feel like Christmas, does it? Not to me, anyway. I wore my red. Sally dressed me this morning with my red thing. I, I, I was going to wear red socks, but um, I already put this on, and I'm too lazy to change my socks, so that's it. Um, any other questions about, I'm somewhat surprised that did you, either because you were so embarrassed when you saw Peter, you didn't ask more about Peter, because he's you. He's you. No offense, Peter. You're my main squeeze right now. You know, no offense. I was, you know, the, uh. Well, day after tomorrow, you'll see him in the flesh. The, uh, and when he stands on this and I'm standing on the floor, we're about the same height. He can fit under my armpit. Any other individuals? I, I know you got a lot more deals, but I mean, it's um, no volunteers. Okay, then I'm going to leave you to your own devices. Um, champagne and cocktails are here this evening. Uh, your gifts will be on your table where you sit uh, when uh, they sneak them back in, wherever they're coming from. And, the, uh, and all the fanfare, you can thank Sally. I had zero to do with it. Um, all I see is cutting into my margins uh, when I see her buying shit for you guys. Um, the, um, we... Uh, I, I thought a ghost, was, it was going in the, in the, from the shadows, just <laughs> creeped in from the shadows, you know. I could see something ethnic, really racist, you know, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, okay, I'm a kinder, gentler guy now that I'm 76. Um, but uh, speaking of that, uh, the, um, I told you about the long letter I got from the rich guy in Scotland, but um, one of the things he alluded to is when he, after he met me, is that how healthy I looked. And I don't think about it. I look in the mirror and I see my face sagging and my belly sagging. And, but I mean, for 76, uh, you know, but I hate when they say, you're in great shape for your age. I hate that. I'm in great shape if I was fucking 40, you asshole. But anyway, so uh, I don't like that. But the uh, uh, health, and if you really drive yourself, 
I mean, you're going to get, you're going to be more susceptible to colds. You're going to be more susceptible to the flu. Uh, I don't believe you're going to be more susceptible to corona rona, but because uh, your uh, immune system isn't used to it. And if you remember, I showed you during the regular seminar, uh, Marcus uh, speaking at a um, hardcore. And he said, I worked 11.75 hours the year before last. I worked 11.4 hours per day, 365 days uh, last year. And I worked 11.2 hours a day this year. And he says that I don't have the energy I had when I was 26. I can think he was 36 when he did this. And, um, and uh, if you think so, I mean, because he's been at it 10 years. 10 years is hard to be at it that hard and that long. Um, and it will. And it will. His exercise, as you, if you recall, he walks on a treadmill all day behind the desk. Walks at a treadmill. I've tried, and I'm not coordinated enough. I mean, I can't type. You know, I'm just not coordinated enough. Um, I, yeah, I wasn't a great athlete or anything. So, so I, I, I stopped doing that you know, a few years ago. But um, your health will, will be required in your, in your stamina because even the best ones take three or four years. Hard charging, toward, running towards the gunfire. Okay? The slower ones, five or six years, and the doom coughs, eight to ten years. But that's running towards the gunfire and, and, and eliminating as much as you can uh, of that emotional baggage. Uh, but it is possible. Now, um, in Peter's case, it took him four years. And so, um, again, even though I call him a mouse, he's, he's a smart mouse. And uh, so you heard him speak, and now you're going to see him in person. Any questions about anything about at all? Tomorrow, uh, we will uh, meet here. Well, I'll see you tonight. But tomorrow, we will meet here, and uh, we'll try to finish up our personal cases uh, we should be able to do it by, if not tomorrow, the middle of the next day. And then we have a few surprise cases that um, we're going to uh, entertain, uh, more complicated. Um, not complicated vis-a-vis -vis our model. Complicated because a lot of deals have bells and whistles to distract you. And it's tough to see what the core value is. And 99% of the time, we're looking at the only thing is the core value. In most cases, when I see deals with a lot of bells and whistles, we're, I'd sell those off to generate cash. Cash. Uh, now, if semi-submersible had anything that produced any fucking money, those ancillary things that he thinks are so important, he, which he alluded to about selling to a fucking spec, selling air to a spec, which is air, which I think that's pretty cute. You want to sell air to a SPAC by definition is air, but has money. Right? I didn't misunderstand you, right? You wouldn't call it air, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Well, if he had any of those assets, and he's got that lovely chart and the shit, and you know, if any of those assets were producing cash, I'd sell them off, but he'll have trouble now because he's selling a concept. He's selling a concept that in the future will be worth $50 trillion, I'm sure. Okay, in the future. But today it's worth fuck all. But um, you need a world-class salesman. All deals like that need a world-class salesman. Start with Greta, who couldn't give away a blowjob. Start with Greta, get her off the scene, and a world-class salesman. That deal would... Um, I think, uh, uh, be of interest to one of my big hitters. But the first thing he'd do is throw you out. Because the truth is, you don't add any value. And it's, it becomes more obvious, none of you guys add value to anything, okay? I've already told you that, right? But you're buying something that's shit, shit and money, in theory. So they kind of look past the fact that you don't add any value to the deal. You have the energy to But when a deal like, you know, the uh, bells and whistles, and it's just an amorphous of smoke, you know, even with the patents in, in um, uh, Job of the Hut, 
it's harder to bypass the fact that the guy in the middle, like a three-ring circus, you know, he doesn't really bring any value. And that's why I say all those big deals need a super high-powered rhino skin salesman that can take a lot of abuse. Okay, YouTube, goodbye. If there's no more questions, I'll see you at 7 or thereabouts. And um, you can go back and work on your deals. Uh, the, uh, because it's Christmas, I don't really give a shit what you do. I used to keep track, I mean, really definitively, when we don't anymore. And if they don't call me or uh, if they don't write or cry, uh, call Kim to cry on her shoulder, you know, we don't know. It, we don't know. So it could be 99%. There's only 70% that we, you know, that contact us. The, um, and I'm not recommending it. In no way, shape, manner, or form am I saying that, uh, you know, uh, being a billionaire or whatever is worth losing your, your spouse or whatever. But it's just a fact of life. A fact of life. In the early years, uh, I, I won't say we hit it. But we hit it, <laughs> um, the, uh, because we used to advertise with the seminar back in the day, and uh, some lawyer uh, recommended we put a footnote, and that there was a high probability that uh, you were going to be uh, unwed or whatever. And back in the uh, when we first did the seminar, if you recall, and I might have mentioned this the first day or two of the seminar. Uh, they started calling partners because of AIDS. Because partners uh, conno or denoted a, a more permanent relationship. And supposedly, AIDS wasn't uh, passed on uh, to, uh, easily passed on to permanent relationships. So that's when they started calling, you know, he's my partner, she's my partner, or it's my partner. And uh, I, I knew guys, very wealthy guys, that as soon as they announced it in 1981 or whatever it was, the study, they weren't sure what it was called or what it was, but it was deadly. Um, a bunch of guys I knew got married. Boom. That was uh, the end of their promiscuity. Last night you saw the fourth movie, fourth edition, right? No? Nothing? Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. Well, she had a Christmas book. I didn't know I was going to get hurt when I had that movie. I should have put some fucking uh, Godzilla movie on or something. And just to bring you up to date, I have cracked ribs, uh, fractured wrists, um, amongst other things. I can't stand up straight because when I stand up straight, the ribs poke into me. So uh, it's not that I'm having a stroke. I just It's easier for me to bend to the right. But other than that, I'm twisted, stealing panther bits. And the rumors that Goins was spreading last night of my death were highly exaggerated. Highly exaggerated. Um, and I'll be sitting in this because I don't want to jump up in the chair like I do uh, for uh, obvious reasons, even to the meatheads in the room. But nothing's going to change today. We're going to uh, uh, go through it just like we would. Um, and I, I told you the example of when I almost got killed and I still showed up for Klaus, and Klaus still uses that as an example, you know. If you, uh, not just to him, but to, to his uh, flock of people that report to him, or his directs, as they're called. And since I mentioned the word directs, I'm going to say it now. I just got an email from a smart-ass Canadian um, uh, ex-gangbanger uh, that um, uh, has, uh, I think he has five directs. And directs are the people that report to you and if you have 500 or 800 employees, as you heard Graham yesterday, said that he's got directs and he's got, you know, some general managers. You may call them vice presidents. You may call them executive vice presidents. You may call them, you know, whatever. But one of the keys to getting on that wall is delegation. Delegation. And uh, for those of you, and we always have people that are control freaks, it's tough. And that's the difference between making a 50 to 250 million and making a billion, is your ability to delegate. Is your ability to delegate. Because right now you don't have much to delegate, so you know maybe these words are whistling over your head like you didn't think the, the Disney uh, story was um, worth any of your time. But the sooner you understand that, i.e. like uh, Andres, uh, I think he has four 
regional managers now. Otherwise, uh, you can't possibly. Even if you have more than three or four entities that, um, whether you're in uh, assisted living or home health or uh, uh, semis over here, uh, you have to have uh, people. And um, now this is beyond your board. These aren't, these aren't your board. Your board is your brain trust. Your board is, uh, you want to, and it sounds uh, discourteous, you want to milk them for as much knowledge that they have as soon as humanly possible. And uh, you're not going to assimilate all 150 or 180 years or whatever you've got on the board, but um, you will assimilate, assimilate uh, hopefully, the best of the information they have. Now, I, I think I mentioned the second day, most of the board members haven't been in the field for a while. They haven't been you know, running in the trenches, dodging bullets for a while. And your first deal, uh, remember, 750, 850, then a million five, you, you easily have the, the know-how to do the due diligence yourself. And some of you have done the due diligence with your own board members. But the, the challenge is, if the board members fuck up, what do you do? You got nobody to sue. So I only one time did I do due diligence internally, in other words, us, because I was concerned that the guys hadn't been out there running and gunning for a long time. Some laws change. Uh, now we weren't doing healthcare, but in healthcare laws change and laws are different in different states. And I, I don't know about the different states of Australia, but they're different. And if you haven't had a guy transfer licenses, et cetera, uh, recently, then there could be a mistake. And then, you know, now they normally when the board member makes a mistake like that, they fall on their sword and they resign normally. OK, uh, but that doesn't help the fact that the deal's fucked up. So I I would uh, strongly recommend if the board members are not have not been in the field in the last five or eight years to use the um, accountants uh, and the lawyers, not just because if they fuck up, you know, they've got deep pockets and they've got malpractice insurance, but um, the, uh, and there's no need to put pressure on the board members uh, early on because they, 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 you didn't tell them they were going to be practicing law again. You didn't tell them they were going to be practicing accountancy again. That's not part of the templates. And so um, you want them, you know, um, you want as much knowledge as possible, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be doing the, 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 uh, the actual work. Now, the other side of that is every board is going to have at least one, if you pick them right, at least one that likes to walk the property. In other words, they like to get out of the house. They like to be there. Uh, our son Derek has got a, a great guy. He used to be CEO of a, a fairly large healthcare company. And he likes to get out. He, you can only bounce your grandkids on their knees so many times. And you can only play so many rounds of golf, and you can, et cetera. So um, he's got one and, uh, and a second guy that like to go to the properties and walk the properties. Uh, of course, during uh, Corona, we've had people, and I said, against my judgment, they have bought properties without seeing them, which is beyond me. I can't even imagine that. And the banks have lent money without going to the property. And I can't, be, I, I can't believe that either. Uh, but I'm not absolutely positive, but I, I, I stake Gowen's life on it that that's not the new new. That is not the new new. Banks are going to, once again... Uh, go to the properties, and it's a lot easier, and you can get deals done a lot quicker, you'd think, if uh, they're not going to the properties, but they, the banks have found new ways to lengthen the process, uh, new ways, because uh, the, uh, when, when you get, um, and it, it shows up mostly when uh, you have to extend the LOI, and I told you when you extend the LOI, that's, a, that's an absolutely great time to, uh, well, you know, there could be another six, eight weeks, ma'am, and then they turn white, and they want to faint, and well, we can get it done by Friday. This is Tuesday. We can get it done by Friday. And they say, well, uh, how, well, what, what do I do? 100% uh, uh, seller's finance or seller's note or whatever they call it in your part of the world. And a lot of the people will, will uh, turn and make it much easier for you. So again, the, um, your board members, you want to suck the knowledge out of them as, as much as possible, but 
that added pressure of them uh, doing due diligence is, many times is a bridge too far. Many times is a bridge too far. Now, some of the guys will tell you, well, I haven't been in the field. That's what you want them to come to you. I haven't been in the field, you know, or my accounting license isn't uh, up to date anymore. You know, uh, I'm a chartered accountant, but you know, don't you have to renew a chartered accountant every so often? Okay, and I haven't done it, and there's not, what does it cost, 80 pounds or 200 pounds? Okay, and they don't want to pay 200 pounds, so they don't renew it, okay? Which I think is foolish, but anyway, I'm not a chartered accountant. And they'll, or the other method, as Andres would say, on the one hand, on the other hand, you ask them, are you up to it? Do you feel okay going out and doing due diligence on the 1.2 million pound, 1.2 million euro deal? And if they blanch or they hesitate, they, they probably don't feel up to it. They say, okay, well, we'll, we'll use KPMG, we'll use PWZ. Um, I never asked them, but I never used them either. Occasionally, the workaholic members or of your board that want to get in the field and do, you know, walk the property, they may want to walk the property with the accountants when their accounts are there. Not to look over their shoulder, not that kind of um, uh, action from them, but uh, and if they want to do that, that's fine. Now, the accountants may not want them there. You know, KPMG may not want a former PwC partner going through the, the acts of a uh, due diligence. And remember, a due diligence is not an audit. It's not an audit. And several of you, um, not just here, but several of the kids out there, they call them an audit. And just because the, the uh, accounting uh, has their logo on the stationery, that doesn't make it, remember, there's a review and there's a compilation. Okay. The, I'm not going to ask you what you thought of the Christmas movie. Um, Duncan! Um, but um, any questions? But when I was going through the, some of the emails late last night, I had trouble sleeping, and uh, I remembered, the, and I came across this, and uh, I thought, you know, in, in the spirit of full disclosure, um, the, uh, he kept a dog. He kept a dog. Um, but we've had gals leave and leave the kids with the dad. That's highly unusual. But we've seen it. The new generation. I can't even imagine my generation, a mom leaving the kids. In fact, I, I've never seen it before. But I have seen it with um, the run and gun millennials, which um, I guess parenting means something else to them. I don't know what it is. So any questions? Yes, sir. If we're rolling up in two different industries, is it okay to have one or two of the board members on both the boards? Yeah, okay, it's a, a great point. Um, normally I say one at a time, okay? But because they're doing a lot of the stuff on Zoom and, and, and Skype, you can get a lot of stuff done quicker. Um, now, on the conglomerate, like Anelli's doing, he's got, he's got people that have been in roll-ups for conglomerates before. So, I mean, his industry experts, like myself, I'm an expert. Yeah, okay. Would you have somebody give me a Diet Coke, please? No ice. Okay. Simon the Bell, uh, elephant hunter, we're going to see. Uh, he's down from 440 to 300 pounds now. You won't be able to notice that, but I notice it, you know. Uh, so um, you'll have, as Anelli has, three or four guys on the board that have done various and sundry roll-ups in various and sundry industries. Now, to answer his question specifically, the, uh, uh, you can have two guys or two gals or two its uh, uh, on both boards. Um, and, uh, of course, they'll um, get equity in both deals. And uh, I've been asked before, and I don't have a real good answer for this, but I'm going to throw the question out. What are the two easiest simultaneous roll-ups that you can do where you're saving the most time. And um, I used to think oil and gas and construction, but I don't think that anymore. I used to think that. And, but I mean, it just, uh, you know, uh, healthcare IT we've done. Um, uh, you all know about uh, Jason Nagy. He sold his, maybe you don't know, he, he exited his IT company here recently. He's getting ready to, I believe, exit the, um, 
his um, radiology as well, and then go on to something else. Um, so th there are two that kind of fit together. Um, because if you're going to do like cybersecurity and IT, that's kind of the same anyway. If you're going to do artificial intelligence and cybersecurity, that's kind of the same thing anyway. So you will uh, have, uh, you can share two, three, you may even be able to share the CFO in the beginning. Because the CFO of these little deals in the beginning aren't full-time jobs by any stretch of the imagination. And you'll see that when you do two roll-ups uh, at a time, that one of them will be the favorite. Just like for those of us that have kids, we're not supposed to have favorites. Right? We love them all the same. You know that line, right? Uh, well, the, uh, you're supposed to be equally uh, enchanted with uh, each roll-up, but you're not. One, it's either because you have a, feel a kindred spirit or whatever the reason, um, and, um, and you'll figure that out. And normally you exit the one you don't like first. You exit. Um, I, I, I had a friend a long time ago had triplets, and uh, two of them were like angels, and one was like the devil, kind of like me. I like the devil kid my, myself, but anyway, he, he was always getting in trouble. And I, I would tell the dad, you know, he's a good kid, you know. He's got to mature. And uh, kind of like when my dad's only goal was to keep Danny alive until he reaches the age of reason. We don't know if it's 20, 25, 30, or 40, whatever. Um, but um, you'll have a favorite. Another thing that, you'll, uh, that, that part of the delegation uh, uh, experience is you'll have favorites in the people that work for you. Uh, it's human nature. Uh, it's... Is, is, is as much as you fight it in, in a meeting, you'll comment, you'll give him more or her more compliments, I mean, but you'll have a favorite. And that's really disruptive to management and trying to have, you know, the uh, leadership comes from the top and it flows down. Uh, not, not to similar to the, uh, what they say about economics and the trickle down theory. Uh, but you gotta be careful about that because, you know, they, they, everybody expects to get paid on the same basis Everybody expects accolades on the same basis, and it's very difficult. And that's why I, I go, I overdo. Familiarity breeds contempt, so I'm not nice to anybody. But that has been easy for me and my personality, okay? And you've heard me say before, our daughter was here, Daddy treats us, and I asked her when she was here just a few days ago, and she, well, uh, well yeah, I, I, I did say that. But daddy treats everybody the same like shit. So she's been saying this since she's five, six years old. And we used to chastise her for using the S word, you know, when she was little. Um, the, um, but um, so I keep distant. I don't have breakfast with you. I don't have lunch with you. I really, you know, if this was a year long course, I wouldn't have dinner with you, you know, um, because you get, and there is, and I, I think I published on social media a few months ago uh, when I had my heart scan. I, I put it on social media, you know, and there's actually something in there. Uh, and so I do have a heart. I'm not so sure that it's not true that I do have ice water running through my veins. But um, so I'm not nice to anybody. I'm not close to anybody. I don't go to, you know, if you work for somebody 10 or 15 years, normally uh, the families would go out to dinner. I never did any of that. I never did any of that um, because familiarity does be contempt. And I told you about this story about the guy, his right-hand man, 21 years, boom. Now, subsequent to that event, he, would, he said, how come I didn't see it? Because he became his brother. And for those of you that have brothers, and I, I have a kid brother, uh, the 15 years my junior, and I look, and, and he's very successful, so he's made it easy for me, okay? Uh, but I got another brother who, uh, younger than him, that hasn't made it easy for me uh, because he hasn't been a super high performance individual. So you will, you know, somebody's, you know, you're working together with somebody for 15 years and you'll look at his, his results differently. Or subconsciously, you'll give them a benefit of the doubt. I don't give anybody a benefit of the doubt. For those of you that have worked in the corporate world, you go to work there and they say, well, uh, six months, you got six months to get your feet on the ground, or whatever the time frame now is now. I, I, um, first of all, nobody ever told me that, and I certainly subsequently have never told anybody that. 
I expected them, you know, not within the day, as I, I tell the universities when I talk, but within the week, they either know the job or they better start looking for a new one. Now, there are exceptions to that. Uh, Dr. Joe, who's a vascular surgeon, said uh, that, you know, Dan, they just, you know, it may take me six, nine, 12 months to train up to, a, to get a guy that, to be a super high performance surgeon right out of medical school, you know. Uh, although they gave you three years, but he says really super surgeons that are really obsessed with surgery uh, do it in a matter of uh, weeks or months. You will be blessed if you get employees like that. But for the most part, uh, you know, you don't want average employees. And as long as you show them that you're not average and you're a high-performance person, they won't do what you tell them to do. They'll do what they see you do. And, I, and I, again, I, I point out the uh, a weekly management um, report that you will fill out. And again, it's for you. It's not for me. Uh, that you give a reasonable facsimile of that report to your underlings, people will quit left, right, and center before they even fuck something up. Because they'll feel the pressure. If you those of you that remember, you know, the 70, 75 questions, and if it's, you were supposed to say, if you didn't do it right, I fucked up. I cunted out, excuse me. And you've got 40, 50, 60 I cunted outs. I mean, it's pretty much a foregone conclusion. Okay, that was a long-winded answer for whether he can have uh, uh, guys that are on both boards. But the answer is yes. The answer is yes. I've seen it uh, where the same CEO, but the guy's got to be, uh, not, you, not, not the you, but the same CEO. And I've seen it uh, really uh, gifted. I told you the Indian guy that we had uh, CEO of Worldwide, our operations, you know, 12, 14 years ago. He... He was just, he was a phenomenon. I mean, mean, ruthless. I mean, um, any other questions? Okay. <clears throat> um, who's ready to, um, I'm not, forget that ready word. Who's got uh, a uh, deal to present? Now, we still got, we still got 15, so. <laughs> now we don't have to get in an argument about this. Have you? Well, forget that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let's, uh, yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. Well. The. Uh, now, when you were going to school. The kids that sat in the front row, if they weren't placed there, were normally suck asses. Now, when you went to school, was the guy that, or the gal that sat in the front row right in front of the teacher a suck ass? Yeah, okay, okay. The, not, well, we're, not, we're not talking about reform school. Okay, we're not talking about prison. I'm, you know, a regular, you know. I was always sat in the back, uh, closest to the closet, because I went from the I stand up against the wall with a dunce cap, uh, and then if I turned around, then they take the dunce cap off me and they put me in a closet until my, uh, somebody, an adult, would pick me up. And the, I remember one time, I was in the fourth grade, I think, and uh, they couldn't get a hold of my dad, they couldn't get a hold of my mom, they couldn't get a hold of my grandmother, but my aunt, who was working uh, the, the swing shift at some manufacturing company, took her four or four and a half hours to get there, and so I got tired, and so I ran out of the closet into the uh, lavatory, uh, the bathroom. And I locked myself in one of the stalls, you know. And the, uh, so my aunt got there. She says, where's Dan? He says, well, uh, he's gone into the bathroom. He's locked himself in a stall. And so my, uh, my, uh, unlike my mother, her, her sister was real fucking aggressive. And so, you know, she pushed her way through the principal and this, that, and, and said, and of course, Danny, Danny, my little angel, my little angel, which I wasn't, but my little angel. And so she crawled under the door to get in the toilet in the little stall, and she said, oh, did they hurt you? Did they do this and that? And I had pissed myself in the closet, so I had urine all down my pants. And so she came out of that thing like, a, like the devil, saying, we're going to sue you. She didn't even know what that meant when she was saying, I'm going to sue you. But um, the... Um, and of course, none of that happens. Now, I would pull out my safe card. I would have a permanent safe card on my chest, sewn. Safe. You can't yell at me. You can't hit me anymore, etc. 
uh, NATO, when they do our uh, exercises with the Germans before the, the uh, I was there before the wall came down. So the Eastern uh, Bloc countries and uh, the, the senior officers and the German officers uh, uh, all agreed uh, it's harder to hit a moving target. That's one thing that all infantry based now, and well, now they hit, kill them with drones and shit like that, but the, um, and you always got to keep running. And that's why I say run towards a gunfire and metaphorically kill everybody. Well, most, you know, most of the people that come to the seminar aren't running at all. You know, they may be moving forward, but, you know, and even though I say a, a snail, a turtle, or a rabbit, the rabbit's going for, uh, farther, but the only time a turtle can make progress is when they're most vulnerable. They stick their feet and their head out. And you've been trained not to be, not, to be risk averse. Even though you've got a riskless financial model, you're talking about emotional risk you're not willing to take. You're not talking about financial risk. Because if you follow the model, other than uh, dinosaur hunting, and that's why I tell 99.9% .9 of you, don't do the dinosaur hunting. Because there's less likelihood that you're going to succeed. And then you're going to go on Reddit and say the fucking thing doesn't work. It's, you're not going to go on Reddit and say I didn't work. But we have a few. And in 28 years, we've had less than 10 big uh, dinosaur guys that have been successful. He's the most recent. Uh, and he'll talk to us. You know, there's, there's names that I, I, you would recognize like that. <laughs> names that you recognize like that. But they're not interested in sharing their, uh, their success and or failure. Yes, sir. Mr. Pena, you just said uh, that you used to go to which, which meetings to get information to, uh, to where to invest and when, you said? No, well, I mean, there's, a, there's, a whole, there's the tombstones that they, um, they put up after a 10 or $20 billion deal, all the, all the banks and all the companies that were involved. That's uh, a prospect list. I used to go uh, read annual reports. That's why Warren Buffett reads annual reports day in and day out. That's, you know, plus he reads an occasional book. Uh, I don't read the books because this, I, I haven't learned anything in the book in about 35 years. But the annual reports, because within those annual reports, and by the way, the, the, the real financial information in an annual report or accounts, yearly accounts, are the footnotes. All the rest is fluff bullshit. You read the footnotes. And uh, the, uh, you know, uh, Siemens, Ford, Berkshire Hathaway tells you what they're going to do over the next 15, 30, 45, 50, 60 months in the footnotes. It also talks about uh, in the footnotes that the um, executives, the board, is selling shares, okay? And they've always got a bullshit reason why they're selling shares, but normally they think it's the top of a cycle. Nobody knows more about these companies other than the board members. Um, uh, but the, the annual reports, and it's all in the public domain. It's all public information. But I mean, the, the, um, I find it easier, of course, now, there's financial podcasts. There's financial newsletters that are printed daily um, that give out information, not insider information, but now the, the, they, because of the, not political correctness, but because of the, uh, um, the CEOs want to paint a legacy, so they're, they're trying to give out as much information that's not insider trading as, as humanly possible. And there are, there are pundits that track this information. And so when Joe, uh, Herr Professor Dr. Uh, Schmidt says such and such, seven out of the last eight times, that meant they were selling. When Herr Professor uh, Dipshit says such and such, 95% uh, uh, of the time, it meant they were buying. And there's all these people that they, uh, uh, through uh, uh, coding and algorithms, that uh, you know, they can give you a 90% probability of what the companies are going to do. I don't like that. I want to see them said they already did it in their annual reports. Now, I may be uh, 30 days late because the annual reports come out quarterly normally. And in this country, they come out every uh, six months. But I would rather ab have absolute 100% information that they're doing it as opposed to depend on some dipshit 28-year-old who uh, 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 did an algorithm to figure out what they're going to do. But the information is all there. I mean, we are rock with financial information now. I mean, if you listen to uh, Bloomberg, like I do, I have Bloomberg on one TV, 
and I have uh, CNBC on another TV, um, and I have another uh, on my uh, laptop. I mean, the information, you have no shortage of information. You can make investment decisions that are almost categorically perfect just by listening to the info, but you guys don't do that. See, you, your job as CEO or founder or both is deals and money. Deals, you get through the financial information that comes out every day. Money, I mean, it's, if you do it right and you build up a relationship like uh, Nagy has with KPMG, so, um, I mean, and you stay away from the day-to-day -day management. Because the day-to-day -day management, one, because you're not experienced, a couple of you are, but most of you are not experienced. So, I mean, uh, you can decide. This is like our, our friend back in the corner. He's going to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with uh, his CFO. I would have fired him already. No heart-to-heart, -heart, fuck you. Fuck you, you're fired, clean out your desk. I'd have security, drag him out of the building. But because it's a virtual, there's no building to drag him out of. You have no idea when the employees, when you got employees, like Adelaide has, and security drags the CEO out. That has fucking impact. Now, see, I can just look, I can see the hurt in your eyes now. Famous story, we're in India, 2005-ish. So the controller, Sally comes in, comes in and uh, wants to see uh, the numbers for last month, whatever, you know, whatever it was. And, uh, the, um, and she said, well, uh, so-and-so, who was the CEO, we had an Indian CEO, not the great CEO I told you about earlier, but another CEO. Um, and they said, well, uh, so-and-so said that um, unless he gives permission, he can't see the numbers. You can't see the numbers. So I get into the office about a half an hour later, and Sally tells me this. So I walk up uh, to the guy, uh, and I said, um, and he actually took the books and put them in his top desk drawer, rather than me see them. I grabbed across the desk, and uh, little Indians have little skinny necks, okay? And, and he had a clip-on tie, you know? And I grabbed him, pulled him across the desk, and I pulled him, we had a, um, a call center attached to the office of about 400. And I pulled him, bashing his head into every desk I could. Boom, boom, boom. I dragged him up and down the aisles like this. I didn't go straight to the lift. No elevator in India works. They're all out of order. And they, some of them have a yellow tape, and some of them don't. I drew, uh, we were on the 11th floor. I drug him uh, to the lift, and I picked him up. And then, oh, fuck, he'll probably die if I throw him down the elevator shaft. So I threw him down the staircase. Four or five hours later, the police show up. And in India, they call you uncle. I don't know why they call you, but everybody's uncle, right? And they came to my office, and, um, they, and he kind of scratched me a little when I was dragging, you know. He had a little uh, life in him. Uh, he was in the hospital, and the, the police come and say, um, uh, uncle, this is, um, is it true? And I said, yes. To this day, if you go to Bangalore, that story's alive and well. To this day, that was 2004, 17 years later. Now, I'm not suggesting you do this, and this is only by example, YouTube, so don't be fucking calling the police. And I will neither confirm nor deny if that's true or not, but... That's, you got it exactly right. That's exactly how we solved that problem. Um, but guys... You heard Simon the Bell talk about rearranging needs. Everybody understands what that means, right? And there's certain places in the world, that's how you have to do it. I'm suge suggesting, based on your personality, you don't go to those parts of the world. I wouldn't have to think about firing that fucker. He'd already been fired. Better in a big office, though. Firing him on the phone, at least you should have his team on the phone so they can hear it or see it on Zoom or the board. People will fuck you for practice. They will fuck you for practice. In big companies, there are no mistakes. Why? Because contrary to the iPhone, they get fired almost immediately. And you guys won't do that. 
I'm not say, telling you to take the pension away, all that kind of shit, which a lot of guys do, but I don't. I pay them out, you know. So you understand. And that first, how many, well, you don't keep, you're not German, like you said, so you don't keep track of the calls. But you made a lot of calls, didn't you? You don't remember how many? Uh, uh, I don't track them anymore. Okay, okay. But another, another point, and it's related to this exactly, uh, you need to attack this from multiple angles. I'm, I'm just quoting him. And it's true, because the value chains in this type of projects are so complex, there are so many pieces that you need to connect. Correct. That you just need to... A lot of dots to connect. Exactly. And unless you act and take action, you will not clarify the vision. And then if you don't have the, the vision clear, you don't have the strategy, and then... Well, and you get tired... You get, uh, you get buyer's remorse even before you buy anything. And, um, and you get, you know, I, I had a world-class salesman several years ago, and um, we finally had a board meeting, yada, yada, and his uh, fiancée was there. And she says, well, you know, Chris looked at the phone for 45 minutes. This is when he was starting the cold call. This is a great salesman. He looked at the phone 45 minutes, and I finally said, are you a cunt like Dan says? I wasn't there. If your significant other is really supportive, that's what they tell you. Are you a cunt like Pena says? Now, see, none of your significant others are going to tell you that. In fact, I can see, look on your face, you'd be insulted. You'd be hurt. We'll see how many get support. I'll bring up that one that, you know, a guy sleeping in his parking lot or his driveway. So, well, you've already missed Christmas. Okay. Let's see. Uh, the next big one is Valentine's Day, right? And then the birthday. And then the an anniversary. And then the this and that. Uh, well, New Year, well, you, you, you're going to uh, be home for New Year's unless you go fuck around like you should. But anyway, you're going to be home for New Year's. Yeah, exactly. Um, the... Um, you know, why don't we celebrate in Christmas in January? You know, because Daddy was here or where or someplace or in India. The, um, I mean, but Simon's telling you the truth. It's hard. Coincidentally, and I knew that uh, Semi over here could relate to that. And if he hadn't, he'd still be making calls and wouldn't be here if he hadn't gotten that money. <laughs> And it's a bitch. And that's only the first step. And if you, if you focus on that, fuck, you'll never get to the second step. You can't focus on that. You got to focus on the end. You know, do the end, did the uh, end justify the means? Short of murder, to me, yes. Short of murder, to me, yes. And when we were talking about how you lived five, four, five, six years ago, blah, 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 okay. And there's no comparison, is there? No, <laughs> exactly. Um, Short of murder. And some of the guys, it's not short of murder. And I'm not recommending in any way, shape, manner, or form that anybody break the law blah, 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 uh, by rearranging their knees. We're talking about getting new stockings. But it's a different world, guys. I'm just telling you. And these are the, the we got a lot rougher, tougher, but they don't won't talk. They don't want to be on camera. But most of these guys, they're doing a lot of gratitude for me. And I don't give a shit about you, but the important point is they're, they have enough gratitude for what I've helped them, assisted them in doing to be able to talk to you. But, I mean, all the information you hear from these people, you know, most of it you don't like hearing. You take notes and you, well, I know what to, but, but you don't like hearing it because you realize how far, only you realize how far you are away from that end of the continuum or that place in the continuum. You know that better than I. I see. I only know it based on the, the, the paperwork that um, you filled out initially. Uh, but the fact that you're back here again, looking for um, uh, something else, obviously to fit in your pistol, you know. And we've got you know a couple of people that are successful, pretty successful, by uh, not necessarily my standards, but you know my standards are uh, you know significantly different. And it's just like the things I think about, you know. I move here, instead of buying a flat, I run for prime minister, or I get a passport. That's pretty significant. I really want to be pope. I really want to be pope, because I wanted to be a priest. 
I think I, um, I've run out of that road. I, I, that runway isn't existent, is not present for me anymore. Oh, but they, the church says, oh, you have to repent and mean it. There's certain things that, you know, I, I just don't believe if there's a big man upstairs, that based on what I've done in my life, that um, they'd have to be a, running out of people to be pope, for me to be pope, or to be on the short list to be pope. Qu comments about uh, Simon. He's a, he's a thin guy now. I mean, Simon, you look good. I'm telling you, you lose 140, 50 pounds. I mean, yes, sir. We, that meeting was like, what was it, in August? Yeah, of course. August. Correct. Since then, uh, how many? Well, he, the 1.2 billion deals closed. Uh, and now he's working on um, another energy. Uh, he, he told you the deals or the areas. And the areas... Healthcare, um, telco, internet, IT, um, and the, uh, because even no matter where you are in the world, people want to live longer. It's, you know, and people are living longer now. If you were born in 20, this year, 2021, uh, and you're a girl, I think you can live to 91.5. If you're a guy, almost 90 years, which is a far cry from when I was born or when several of you were born. Um, and what does that mean? We need more hospitals. We need more home health. We need more assisted living. And when I told Rick Scott this back in 85-ish, I didn't realize then healthcare was going at about 7% a year. Now it's pretty much 20% of GDP for all the major uh, countries, Western countries. Not just Western, but I mean civilized countries, what they call civilized. It's not that high in African countries, etc. But I mean, Anelli, Anelli, his goal is he wants to be the richest man on the African continent. Now, that includes Saudi, because that's the continent, okay? I mean, there's some big fucking rich guys. The, uh, and he, uh, he's 40 now, uh, which is young to me, but I mean, he's, he's 40. And the, uh, based on what he's done so far, you can't count him out. I mean, created you know, six, 700 million in 40 months. You know, it's not the best I've got, but it's one in the top 10. Now, just think of that. 40 months, 700 million. Some of you have been out of the seminar 40 months. And he's not the best. Yes, sir. He also alluded to this with other words. He said, it's fucking hard, uh, persistent. It is uh, hard. It's at 24-7-365. Thing, and if, if you're not willing to do that, um, not even think of And, and like he it. said, if you're, if you're going to try, or I actually said it, I remember what he said from the, the last uh, webinar, if you're going to try, then it's not. The question I get most from the Netherlands, Scandinavian countries, etc., can you do this part-time? That's the, 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 the question I get from those the, the nice countries, what I call the nice countries, you know, civilized countries, as you would, you know, uh, where they take care of you from the womb to the tomb. Huh? Yeah, well, they are, but, the, the, um, but to me, that, that sense of honesty, but I'm honest too. You know, I, I, you know I, I, I'm not gonna say this anymore. I'd fall down and crack my head open before I lie, but I'm not gonna say that anymore. Uh, I went back and I was looking at the uh, fucking sidewalk and the, li the lights were out, so it was black. So uh, Sally said, why don't you go where the lights were? That's a good question, but I didn't. So that's hindsight. Hindsight's always twenty twenty. But the, um, you know, I, I, I know I'm honest and the, the other uh, end of the continuum is honest, but the other end of the continuum will equate to uh, sensitivity equals poverty. And if the countries weren't socialistic and taking care of them from the womb to the tomb, most of those people would starve to death. Yet, in that part of the world, Vikings came out of there. And they came down and raped the Scots and turned into the Picts. And the Picts beat the, the Romans. I mean, what happened to all that fucking energy? What happened to all that fucking chutzpah? What happened to all that fucking balls? What happened? We were talking about the Spaniards used to be uh, crusade. Bah, what happened? They got civilized. That's what happened. 
The Germans used to kick the shit out of the Romans in the books that are written by uh, whoever wrote them. They swung down like animals like from the trees. They're talking about the Huns, which are the Germans. And that, that died out more recently, and we know all, all, all know why it died out more recently. But what happened? We still have it in us. We still have it down deep. You know, the DNA doesn't uh, disappear uh, in 50, 80, uh, even 1,000 years. But we got civilized. We got civilized. Now, I've been accused of many, many things in my career, but being civilized is not one of them. And even though I know how to act like a gentleman, I know how to talk, and I've, I've met more important people than you guys, I know how to talk when, okay? And doing deals is not one of the, uh, one of the uh, areas that you have to talk and be civilized. You have to be fucking effective. And I am that. When you need shit to get done, the kind of people that I've described so far this week come to me because I know how to get shit done. I know how to get shit done no matter who I embarrass, including myself. I engage in self-deprecation all the time, making fun of myself. Because I have self-esteem, and I know I, for me to make fun of myself, you know, very few other people, or, or to my face, rarely ever, uh, make fun of me. But my mother got carried across the Rio Grande River illegally. Most Mexicans don't brag about that. I still have illegal relatives in the United States. And you would hush it up. I talk about flunking out of university three times. You can't find a fucking German that would say that in his whole life. Never. Yet I met five presidents, none of which in the White House. <clears throat> when we go to the Pentagon in a few weeks, it's not likely, well, I shouldn't say that, you know, I, I, don't, I haven't seen my agenda yet. All I've seen is my acceptance and yada, yada, yada. And, the, and I, I still have a top secret clearance. I hadn't even thought about that until you mentioned it earlier today, which most people that haven't been in the military or don't know what that means. It doesn't not important for you. And it's certainly not important for this model. So, but I mean, you heard it. And he said, it's fucking hard. And he says, it takes longer, costs more. And, uh, he, uh, and when I told him, when he, I, first of all, I told him, don't go dinosaur honey. That was my, <laughs> because, you know, he was already, by your standards, rich. So why would you go bust your balls, lo lo almost lose your fucking uh, net worth? Because he knew, when he heard me, after he heard me, he said, fuck, I'm wasting my time. And as I was teasing uh, um, uh, your, your uh, wife's uh, first, hu second husband that's going, coming down the road, um, you know, these poorness rubs off. And just as the, the B schools teach them how to overpay, you know, when, when you rub uh, shoulders, and that's the biggest thing I have against families, is because, you know, poorness rubs off. And unless uh, your name's Trump or Rockefeller or something, uh, most of your families, you're probably the rich, uh, it's hard for me to believe, a couple of you, I can believe it, to be the richest guy in your family. I mean, I fuck. I mean, what, what do you come from, the slums, the poverty, or, you know, the, um, and as Peter said, his father is an engineer, his mom's a teacher, low performers. Well, I mean, they, they're educated, you know, become a teacher without being educated, and you certainly don't become an engineer without being educated. But unless you had, you know, the Williams sister's father, or you had Tiger Woods' father, or you had, you know, a high-performance person, I mean, you have no role model. So, and remember, you don't do what your parents told you to do. You do what you, you saw your parents do. And uh, the, uh, the, I'm beating a dead horse here, but I mean, um, you know, any, any comments about Simon, you know? It's not many people that come through here that want to be like Simon. They want the money. And I've been at a $30,000 dinner with him. 
And that's not a lie. And I'm not saying you should, suggesting you should spend your money like that, but I mean, Sally and I are not dissimilar to that. And just as poorness rubs off, wealthiness rubs off. And that's why uh, since uh, Harvard opened up and since Oxford opened up, uh, 1150 or whatever the year was, you send your kids to where something other than you know, being an idiot, a child rubs off, and that's why the rich families have for centuries sent their kids since Roman times for it to rub off. Now, money's not everything, but, you know, I say sarcastically, it's the only thing anybody keeps track of. Keeps track of. The, uh, but it's, it's, it's a different thought process, and as Simon said, it's a different thought process, and it is. And uh, hopefully, this is getting you one step uh, you know, some of this rubs off. Uh, at the end, uh, I'm not going to ask yet, but you already know of the people you've heard so far and the people that you heard from the uh, initial seminar, some of the, somebody in there you kind of relate to. Even though when I used to ask how many relate to jobs and you're, you'd raise your hand, I'd say, you're all full of shit, you know. Uh, in your dreams, you, you're like jobs. Um, but um, Peter, who I believe... Not putting any pressure on you, Peter, uh, that you'll more relate to him. And he's super rich. So uh, it is, you know, you don't have to be Simon. So we have Simon, then Peter, which is a big contrast. Big contrast. And there are other people, a few like me, not many. Um, but uh, Simon is a ruthless fucker. Now, he is ruthless. Some of the kids call me ruthless. I'm, I'm tougher than he is, but he is ruthless. He is ruthless. And he moved to uh, Asia for uh, more opportunity and pussy. I reminded him, as you heard me in the tape, but in his, one of his original um, webinars, that's what he said. And, uh, so of course, he's, he's now married. And you heard, he wasn't with his wife seven months during corona. Seven months. I don't think I've been away that long. No, I know I haven't been away seven months. I've been away four or five months a few times, but not seven months. You know, and that's, that may be a bridge too far for most of you. And but when, you're, when your wife's telling her second husband, I mean, uh, I, I could have took, took three or four months, but honey, uh, seven months is too, far, too long. Too long. The, uh, and even though I chuckle about you not being supported by your significant others. I'm trying to make light of it so when it happens to you, it's not a shock. It's not a shock. There's a reason why I don't travel alone. Sally hasn't left me go anyplace alone in decades. And I always consider myself pretty trustworthy. Or uh, I try to sell Sally on that anyway. Uh, but I mean, in decades, I can't remember the last time. And she's pissed at me now. I knew I should have come back and walked back with you when I fell on my head last night. So, uh, but I'm blaming her forever now. Okay, she, she brought it up, so she feels guilt about it. Well, I'm going to make sure that she doesn't forget that goddamn guilt. You know, uh, Sally, it's like, remember I, f I fell in the pothole during the Remembers Parade, you know, at four for, uh, a few weeks ago, and a, and a big hole in, in, in the pavement on the high street, and if it wasn't that 91-year-old man that caught me, and, uh, you know, I would have, you know, fallen in. And uh, so, uh, well, now Sally's going to be on me like, like a guide dog now. You know, in fact, she had, where's EJ? She had EJ come and meet me to walk, and it's not dark. And then, and then, and then Kat, uh, you know, are you all right, Mr. Pena? Yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, fine. By the way, when I yell and my adrenaline, I have less pain in my body. So the, uh, uh, I'm sure there's something chemical about it. I'm, not, I'm positive something chemical about it. Now, now, guys, now, you heard some of the words Simon used, which are, you look like he was speaking Greek. Because they're words that you know of but don't use. But the, the, um, 
I would say just what I just said. Oh, you mean your exit is dying in the saddle? You have no idea how impactful that is. Sounds better in Spanish, though. I mean, I'm not bullshitting. Words matter. And you're, and you're, and it's not funny, but I'm not, I am poking fun at you. That's, I'm a lie. I was just about to say a big fucking lie. But, the, uh, but you have no idea, the words you don't use, how important they are. Because you, you push them. Now, that's a gentle push for me. The, the way I look at your face, you think I hit them with a fucking axe or something. But I mean, these work. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. So, so far, I, let's say, well, I'm at that moment now in this deal. And uh, the reason I wanted to bring it up, because I, I got the, the number validated and so for 2020 just before I arrived. Okay, when you say validated, what does that mean? To a non-fin? Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, well, I got the tax returns and, and uh, audited and everything. No, no, no. no. Audited? You, know, you guys, you, uh, I don't, so you got their financials audited through 2020. Audited, not compilation, not review, audit. It's like when it's, when, well, when everything is done. Well, okay, now I want you to go back. I'm 99% sure that when you say audit, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Okay, there's a big difference. Yeah, there's a big difference between, as, as our chartered accountant can explain to you tonight over a drink, not now, but I mean, there's a big, huge difference. Compilation review mean dick. Zero. They're based off numbers that the, 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 the person that hired to do the report gave them. They're one step above or below a quick, uh, a, a quick fuck numbers. So, but anyway, let's just assume they're audited numbers, but you got to go back and check. I asked you the same thing on your other presentation, didn't I? Okay. And, and they're not lying to you. Uh, they may be, if it weren't Tijuana, they'd be misleading you. But I mean, there's a big difference. There's a quantum difference because in the valuation that a bank would or wouldn't you know, give you. you know, be, on the one hand, he can get stuff done uh, based on his credibility and track record for 82 years, OK? Uh, with or without audited numbers, probably without audited numbers, although he probably audits his numbers periodically as a group, right? OK. But anyway, let's assume these are audited numbers. Go ahead. He knows the market is hot. Well, everybody knows it. Yeah. Yes. And uh, he, it, it probably wouldn't, will not be that cheap. But if I can leverage pretty much through this one, then... There's too many ifs. Okay, if, no, I mean, the, 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 uh, really you don't have enough information to, uh, to decide whether to say yes or no. You don't, okay? Um, you know, uh, he may or may not want to sell if it's the right price. Okay, that doesn't mean shit, okay? The, um, uh, if, uh, if he, uh, he doesn't know about this, but it would be interesting if he had that. I mean, there's too many ifs. I mean, you need more concrete information. And this is why. And again, not just him, whoops, well, that's all I need is uh, the, uh, uh, that's why it takes you so long to do these things. So I wouldn't look at this, you know. Um, and let's just say that this is a fraction of a uh, semi-deal, meaning in time frame. You don't have, you know, you're a relatively young guy, you're a relatively young guy, but I mean, you, you don't have enough time for this many projects. I mean, that are going to take this long, you know. I told you about the, the, one of my mentees that was bringing sun down to the earth and blah, 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 blah. Eleven years later, he, hired, he raised $200 million, and uh, most of which he put in his pocket, you know. Uh, and he went to jail. Now, I'm not saying that uh, he's closer to going to jail than you, because you haven't raised any money yet. You've got nobody to bitch. Whether he owns 92% or 2%, if somebody figures out that there's malfeasance, he still goes to jail. He just goes to jail, a bigger, uh, maybe a bigger jail with a tennis court. Because the, the so the 92%, you understand, only protects you from the people within that other 8%. It doesn't protect you from malfeasance or you might do something wrong. And of course, he, he, he guarantees he's not doing anything wrong. 
So but let's get back to this. You, you don't know enough. So how, you know, bringing it here is great. It gives us an opportunity for these guys to see another project. There's not enough information to make a decision. Now you saw how, and I'm not blowing smoke off the little guy from the asshole of the earth, but concrete, bam, 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 numbers, bam, bam. I mean, I think everybody in the room understood 85 to 95% of what he said. Because it's simple. And these deals should be simple when you have enough information to make a decision. Right now, you don't have enough information. What you need to do is, one, uh, nail down the price. I mean, nail it down. You're, shit or get off the pot, and he's not an old man to me, he's a young man. Shit or get off the pot, old timer. And I guarantee you, he'll either piss, you'll piss him off, or he'll tell you. You know, you don't do 3,000 transactions like me without, well, maybe on the one hand and on the other hand. You know? You, pardon? Yeah, I mean, you, 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 you want to nail down the price. Number two, since as soon as you nail down the price, and let's say that uh, it's something you can do, okay? As soon as he finds out about the other project, he's going to think that you led him down a primrose path because you didn't give him all the information. Because his price would be higher if he knew about this, right? There are no secrets. There are only mysteries. He's going to find out about this sooner or later. Probably sooner than later. You guys, you know, not just you, I mean, in, um, uh, in general, think that these people are stupid. Well, to tell you they are stupid, but I mean, for a different reason, okay? The odds of this guy doing a seller finance, to me, seem pretty low. How do you see it? Okay. Next. Okay. So, I mean, you got to ask him. Uh, don't waste any, a bunch of time. You know, uh, and even if the government will do 70% and then he says no, then where are you? You're going to convince him like a uh, uh, ghost rider over here. You know? I mean... Guys, I mean, and the reason you don't is because you know you don't want them to say no because then you spend all this fucking time pissing it down a rat hole. That's why you don't do it. You know, intellectually, he's not as stupid as he looks, but he's pretty close to being as stupid as he looks. Because, and not just him, but all of you. You don't want to hear the truth. In my opinion, they, 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 I told you this before a couple of days ago, there's a white paper um, that is going to come out that said as opposed to the heroes here in, in England, everybody clapping for the NHS and saying what a great job, they did a shit job. That's coming out. But they're going to wait. Boris won't be prime minister by that time. If that report came out now, just like they stampeded the White House on January 6th, they'd stampede Westminster and burn him at the cross because they, they didn't do a good job. Anyway, getting back to this. Um, the, uh, you got to know. So you get the, you know, and giving the government money, and I'm just guessing, it doesn't happen overnight. What's the time frame, the lag? Well, let's say one month. Well, well, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Okay. One month. Do you know anybody that got money in one month? Yeah. Like, if for the banks to, they have started in, in, in Finland, they have a, a special... Fund. Okay. You mean they can fund automatically? Yeah. Okay, well, that's, that's good. That's good. Okay, but uh, if one month happens to him, Ghost Rider, that's 100% for him. But if one month doesn't happen to you, you can't plan on one month. But let's just get, let's keep playing the game. One month, they say yes. Then you go back to the, the, the old man, right? And you're going to convince him the 30% sellers know it. That's a lot of ifs. I'm, I'm not saying it's not possible, but I mean, and how much money is this kind of deal, the total package? Well. With 200 million euro? Uh, uh, well, th th this company, uh, or th the whole? No, no, this, this, this thing here. This one. Big project. Big project. Oh, that's uh, around between 150 and 200. Million. And, and then this? The, the 
So you don't know, but uh, yes. Company, let's say 10 to 50. 10 to 50. F 15. F oh, okay, 10 to 15. Let's say 15, okay. Uh, and how many times EBITDA does that? Then we have about uh, five, five times. So 15, so his, his EBITDA is now 5 million. Oh no, it's uh, 10, 15. So his EBITDA is a million and a half, two million? Yeah, million and a half. Okay, so, uh, and you're gonna pay, pay 10 times? No, it, for, they have some assets and, and so uh, well, But you're gonna pay 10, I'm not interested in assets. Another uh, ghostwriter answer. I mean, so you're gonna pay 10 times EBITDA. EBITDA is a million and a half, right? He's paying 15. Yeah, I mean. No, well, let's, let's answer the first question before we get to the bigger. Before we get to the semi here, I mean, I mean, but all government loans, not all, but most government loans have some parameters that they'll loan, they'll put money in based on something that has value. 10 times EBITDA, that's exactly how Elon Musk got his money, though. So it's not impossible. It's not. Okay, because the governments, nobody gives out money more stupidly than governments. So based on that theory, he could possibly get a 30% government and a, uh, if he convinced uh, the, the guy, well, why wouldn't he pay uh, sell at 10 times? The, I mean, he, uh, he obviously would. Maybe, maybe he's got a, a dream that he wants 25 times. But there's too many ifs. There's too many ifs. Well, he, he, the relationship he's already started with the guy isn't that kind of relationship, because you're already on your back foot. Understand? Okay, back foot. He's already got an advantage. And 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 the um, and the um, QLA model is that you have the advantage. From every single step, you have an advantage. And even then, you fuck it up. I mean, every, there's not a step in the QLA model that you're not on top. Not one. And you want to, like I said, you'll find a way. You'll want to, uh, and I understand it's, it's green and it's hot and this and that. <sighs> but whenever you bring a government entity into the equation, it's harder. Okay, even let's say it's true in a month. I don't believe that, but let's say it's true. So why would you, I know what, uh, the... The, the pizzazz of the, the idea. But why would you go, and this is not an elephant deal. Okay, elephant, you can convince me, you know, I'll spend a year or two and we'll shoot craps and see if we can make it happen. But this isn't even an elephant deal. Plus, there are, I don't know how many other companies trying to do something similar, correct? There's competition. So give me a reason why you want to do it other than, you know, for the love of and the love of Green and Greta and... Well, he doesn't, I mean, he doesn't sound too passionate. Maybe I'm, I'm missing something. But people in that part of the world don't sound too passionate. They're understated, quiet. I understand it because I've, you know, uh, my first wife was Finnish. So, the, uh, but explain to me why this is a deal other than He's in love with it. Explain to me why this is a deal worth doing. There's too many. It's not. If you had a billion dollar balance sheet, I'd say absolutely you could do it for sure. But you don't have a billion, you don't have a dollar balance sheet right now. So, I mean, there's too many ifs. I'm not saying those deals don't get done, but there's too many ifs. And right now, I mean, there's too much money lying in the streets right now. <clears throat> for deals that can be done yesterday to, to venture off and do this. Uh, there's just, you know, there's too many. And uh, I don't even like one if, but there's several ifs. And my experience is that the, um, the more ifs, the more things that are not nailed down tight to begin with, 
the higher the probability the project either takes forever or doesn't get done. It doesn't get done. Uh, which, you know, as Sally would say when she used to, we used to make presentations to the big guys, she says, Dan, you take all the fun. Uh, because they, they don't, most of these decisions at this level are made with somebody else's money, big companies' money. I mean, with big balance sheets. They can walk in there. If they make a $20 million mistake, they can just, you know, shove it aside. Uh, the, um, I, 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 this is a way low probability. In, uh, in the B schools, there'd be high case, medium case, low case. This is below a low case. The probability that this is happening without somebody stepping up and writing a check, a big equity check, which we don't have. Uh, remember, we're not supposed to use your money, our money. So um, I, I, I think it's, a, it's worse than a long shot. It's worse than a long But the good news is he's in a hot, hot, hot area. He's in a part of the world that believes in this shift. All that's positive, but that doesn't get the deal funded and done. The old man, you know, may have a, a very uh, crazy idea of the valuation of the company. Um, and he knows he's in a hot position. And he said, you said from your own words, you read him as if he doesn't get what he wants, he'll do it himself. Right? Yeah. That's, there's nothing motivated about that. There's nothing motivated about that. And you can't afford to under, uh, under, uh, buy your market share like the big boys. So, I mean, you're between a rock and a hard place. Go back to the board. If these guys are wealthy, God, God love them. Uh, and they understand the risk more than, uh, allegedly, they understand the risk more. Uh, but uh, it's easy to say that we'll fund it, and there's a big difference between that and writing a check. I know you don't write checks anymore, but, you know, uh, the... Uh, I used to carry a check in my, uh, when I carried uh, shit in my wallet 25 years ago. I, ca I carried a check from 1970-something, uh, and uh, it wasn't even on an account I owned anymore. But I always thought that I could just write a check and buy my way out of trouble in Mexico or Bolivia or some shit. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd start, I'd go back and uh, say that you're, um, well, we're going to give you the opportunity to belly up to the bar, as they used to say and um, invest money. Now, the first tranche of money you need to buy this old get, get out, you don't know. No. Okay. But the first thing you got to hammer down is what this old guy wants. And again, I say old being sarcastic because he's not old to me for sure. But, um, um, but this is um, just off the top of my head, three to five year deal. Contrary to what you think. Three to five years. And you want to spend the next three to five years, okay? The answer should be no. But I mean, lust, you know, that, you know, that, that stiff dick, I mean, it's tough, you know. Uh, but uh, I can show you 10 ways to make more money in a third of the time. Not guaranteed, but almost guaranteed. The. Um, you could, well, if this was a Marcus Bauer deal and he had had a 12-year track record in this as opposed to where he has a track record, he could crowdfund this in a couple of days, a few weeks. Do any of your guys on your board have that kind of track record? Like Marcus Bauer? No, 10, 15 years of absolute profit in green, project after project after project? Yes. Well, then, I mean, then for sure. A combination of crowdfunding and their own money get this deal done. I, I doubt very much if they put up a dime. That's my guess. That's only being, based on 50 years of being cynical and almost always being right. I've sat at a lot of tables where, you know, and then when it came down to you pass, you know, it's like in church. Do they still pass a plate around to collect money in church? Okay, and... It passes all the guys, and nobody put up any money, you know, and the plate keeps going around and it's, until it gets to Sally and I, and then Sally throws in our black American, ah, what are you doing? You know, Jesus Christ. She says, you told me to be generous. I said, I don't mean that generous. Yeah. But, I mean, you got to find out. Two things you got to find out. Are they serious about being able to fund it? And two, 
And even before that, they need to know how much they're going to fund. You have to nail down the price. What does he want? What does he want? And uh, that will either kill the deal or give you an, at least an idea of what kind of money you need. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Any questions from you? No, oh, I... I'm all set now from this. Okay. Any, anybody have any comments? You want to poke him in the eye before he sits down? Yeah, I knew. I, leave it to an Asian to poke him one more time. Kick him one more time. I think it's a great project. That's a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> he probably meant that sincerely. If I, if I was saying that, I wouldn't be making it sincerely because this is, you know, a shot in the dark. This is like winking at a girl in the dark, as Warren Buffett would say until you know the purchase price and you know the level of um, sincerity in your board that has money, that has experience, has a track record in this very same thing, you're just, you know, you're just um, spending time, hours, et cetera, not knowing what the, the possible outcome is. And uh, now, assuming the board would put up money, would they put up with you? Sorry. Assuming the board would put up money, would they keep you in the deal? Uh, you gotta say yes. Of course. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you don't believe that, then I mean, you're right. You gotta say yes. You eliminate your self-esteem, which is a big thing to eliminate, and you eliminate how hard you can work or want to work, which is also a big thing. Uh, the, um, excuse me, you eliminate your dream, and you're just left with how hard you can work. People that have virtually little or no dreams and, and little or no self-esteem still have made a lot of money. I think it was Edison that said it's 99% perspiration and 1% inspiration. He was right. Now, I uh, equate the uh, hard working hard when I was asked a question and I wrongly answered 50-50 balls and brains. And it's really 99% balls and 1% brain. But if you're not willing to work, and um, although I haven't seen um, but a couple of your um, reports, because I still had a little bit of reporting in the mentor program, uh, and a couple of you uh, were participated in it, when you, when you logged how many hours you worked, it's not the hours that are requisite to make this program work. Because if you don't have self-esteem, that means you're gonna make less calls. And so the, uh, and I don't mean working is standing over the phone and not dialing, I don't mean that. But this is a long hour program. The emphasis is on the long. And I, I told you the day before yesterday, I've been asked, um, can you do this part time? And uh, it's really laughable that somebody would ask that, but I, I am asked it. And, I'm emailed, emailed it more often, but I don't answer the emails. So I don't answer emails on either on my Facebook page, which has just gone up for politics, and I certainly don't answer um, messages or questions on the um, LinkedIn. And I never comment, uh, almost never. One comment, maybe two comments a year on YouTube when somebody is so dead wrong, and one of you hasn't, answered it, you know, a reply to somebody that says something that's off the wall crazy, then I sometimes answer it. And uh, to the amazement, wow, the trillion dollar man that may uh, answer the email. Of, uh, um, but if you're not going to put in long fucking hours, and I say this, remember, I like 20 to 40% margins, better 40% margins, because then you can skew it up. The management, I mean. 20% margins, that's gross margin. That means you're operating at, at somewhere between an 8 and 12% net margin, and that's tight. It doesn't sound tight, but it is tight. It doesn't leave much room for error. Uh, and uh, some people they say, well, Dan, if I work long, 100 hours a week, that means if I'm a bad manager, I'm going to mismanage more hours. Yeah, you will, but you're also going to get some shit right by accident. And see, I don't care if you get it right by accident or serendipity. I know that if you, if you continue to swing at the plate, eventually 
the bat, whether in cricket or in uh, baseball, is going to connect to the ball. And I don't care if you get on base by accident or on purpose. The, um, but I was, I was reading uh, some of the YouTube comments and uh, some of the uh, emails I get in. And it's in a roundabout way. It's like I told you when I had the uh, Mercedes guy here and the BMW guy here, they both said in different ways, in different seminars, I never heard so many people say in different ways as it come down to you know, a lot of cold calling, which means a lot of work. Because most of us, myself included, consider cold calling work, even though I was very good at it. And you know, for those of you that have cold called, you make cold calls, you get negative results, it's draining. If there's a word beyond draining, you know, it, it's debilitating. But that's still a, a requirement of the program. Um, it's hard work, a lot of hours. The, uh, and, and some people just aren't willing to do that. That, against the culture now, resignation, against the culture now, not uh, a four-day week, three-day week. So uh, you're fighting, you're like acting a shrub, pu pushing that ball of shit up the hill, but you're one of the only ones pushing it up the hill. So that means it's easy for us because there's literally no competition. Other than you guys. And I asked you, I asked the Germans if they've uh, crossed paths with Andreas and uh, they essentially said no, or they heard of somebody that did or whatever, you know. That's like... Um, when I first started in the business, um, I was told that there were people, high performance, uh, that were um, not hardworking, uh, that were uh, part-time. And I used to say then, back then, and I, I said, now, I don't even say it now, show me one. Introduce me to one. I'll fly there. Let me talk to them. Let me touch them. You know? Let me shake hands with them. Back when shaking hands was popular. And to this day, I have not been introduced to anybody like that. Now, maybe there is one or two on the 7.7 .7 billion uh, people planet, but I certainly haven't met them. Uh, I've heard it's like um, you, the, um, uh, uh, the Iceman, you know, the guy that's supposed to live up in the forest, he's, and he goes around and uh, he's, uh, uh, yeah. And I'm, I, I've talked to people that say that they might have seen him, but they haven't seen him, you know. It's more or less like Santa Claus. I know who Santa Claus was and uh, who is still, for the most part, around the world. Um, but if you're not willing to put in the time, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Now, um, for those of you that have been away from the seminar, the first seminar, you know, months, uh, the, uh, notwithstanding, exclude the pig fucker, 26 days, exclude him, okay? It's hard for me to exclude him, but it, exclude him. And it's hard for you to exclude him because you saw him, you heard him. But, I mean, even, you know, uh, people that are just stumbling around at uh, five cold calls a day should be able to put together a number, or, I mean, real cold calls, you should be able to put together a number of LOIs. Now, remember, uh, um, there's a slide. This is one of Andres' famous, uh, not famous, uh, uh, most friendly slides, that I, the, uh, the program, uh, let's take 1,200 um, cold calls. Uh, 1,200 cold calls uh, in, in a year. Uh, what's that? That's 100 cold calls a, a month. That's uh, 25 cold calls a week. And I know you're not going to wait because you're German. You're not going to work seven days. And because you're Pakistani or you're Sri Lankan, you're not going to work seven days. So you're going to work five days. So that means five cold calls a day. That, that's it's just such an incredibly low number. Five cold calls a day. But when before I did away with the mentor program, that's not the primary reason I did away with it, but when I went back and did the, the sums, as they say in this country, and I added up all the numbers, and, um, and some days uh, they counted out no cold calls. Some weeks they counted out no cold calls. Some months they counted out no cold calls. Now, how can that equate in any shape, manner, or form to hard work? Yet your, your schedule was busy with other shit. But the primary thing that drives the model is looking for motivated sellers. And how do you get a motivated seller? You get them, uh, for, the, for the most part, through cold calling. Now, of course, brokers, the business brokers, which I elaborated yesterday afternoon and early evening about all the, some of the horror stories. But, I mean, the, although a few of you, when I ask you, how did you get that lead? Cold call. 
the best leads come from cold calling. From cold calling. The very, very best leads are when they're not on the market. As uh, Graham and Leanne said, they're not on the market. They approached the suspect in their mind that turned out to be a prospect that turned out to be uh, a, uh, a purchase. And, and if you keep swinging at the plate, you get lucky once in a while. They were sitting in the hotel lobby, as they pointed out, and the, uh, the, uh, the liquidation is happening in the, in the hotel. Now, that's, that, that's, that's, uh, that's not, uh, th they would like to say that that's because they were at a meeting on the weekend with their lawyer there, and if they hadn't been working on a deal, they wouldn't have been uh, apprised of that opportunity. There's a lot of truth in that. Uh, but it's also lucky as shit that they picked that hotel in that city to do the liquidation. But hard work, you know, um, all the guys in the Building of America, from Carnegie to Vanderbilt, all worked their balls off. All worked their balls off. And it's the biggest differentiation I see from the 90s and early 2000s to today is the work ethic, or the lack thereof, is the lack thereof. And, um, the, uh, and I've, I've told these stories. Um, when I turned 16, um, and I had cause, because one of the, the first time I applied for my passport, and failed, uh, they, they asked you, you know, uh, where, where's, where'd you first work? Where did you get your last paycheck, et cetera, et cetera. And I went back and I, I had them pull the files, the IRS files. And this was at an Asian office of the IRS uh, and uh, Internal Revenue Service. And they had these old uh, fax copies of stuff. And uh, uh, I turned 16 on August the 10th, uh, 1961. Uh, and um, my first paycheck was August 1961, $124. I was getting paid $1.05 an hour. So from the 10th to the th 31 days in August? Yeah, 31 days in August. In 21 days, I earned $120, and that's 120 hours approximately, $1.05. So I worked uh, 21 days, um, uh, five hours a day. Um, and uh, they used to call me Pena, Shift Pena. You want to go home, have sex with your wife, I'll take your shift. You know, you want to uh, go visit your sick mother, I'll take your shift. And so I worked through, uh, and I've always worked long, long hours. The, um, but when I first started working, I was uh, 10, 11, I worked on a big hay farm in the San Fernando Valley. Where I got paid a dollar an hour. Uh, off the books, uh, I didn't pay taxes when I was 10 or 11. And, the, um, and my mother used to drop me off uh, at 6 in the morning or when the sun came up. And I used to pick weeds. And then my mother would come back when the sun went down. And I've said, to, said this story before. And the, my mother comes. She was late. There was traffic, blah, blah, blah. Because uh, she, she's coming from East L.A. to the valley, which is not, not a short trip. And I'm asleep up against a tree uh, about 7 o'clock at night. So my mother goes into the panic mode. Uh, first of all, after she figured out I wasn't dead, she's screaming at me, uh, how much acreage were you supposed to pick weeds from? And I said, we've got, you know, about another acre, or acre and a half. She turned on the lights of the car, and she got on her knees with me picking weeds. Later on, because, I mean, we didn't have much money, uh, you know how much gas I burned up keeping the lights on? Because, but I said you could have kept the lights on, Mom, and not had the car running. But the, you know, then the battery goes down, et cetera, et cetera. So I've always had that same work ethic. And the thing that I notice most, some of you in this room consider the last few months that you've worked hard hours. I don't, because now you don't have to drive there. You, you know, you haven't had to do that because of the advent, not the advent of Skype and, and Zoom, because it's been around a while. But the, the acceptability of Skype and Zoom now, it's considered kosher. It's considered okay. Not to me, but to most on the planet to uh, introduce yourself. Remember, it's either call, uh, email, call, or vice versa. You know, email, call, email. And um, so you could have, should have, um, at least been able to go through two or three times more people than you would in regular time. And uh, as, as Whipple and Dan Locke would say, vis-a-vis um, -vis the old days when you actually went and met to every meeting and looked every single person in the eye, and there's a few of you in the room that um, 
realize either by uh, serendipity, uh, intuitively, uh, or because I've said it, that that's the best way to make a connection in person. In person. And those, last, those connections have a tendency to last longer than the uh, one made on Skype. Now, some of you guys, I, I'm not sure I can uh, accuse anybody in the room, making introductions on, uh, um, not a tweet, but a, a text. It's hard for me to understand that on any level. Some of you, and I'm not saying this room, fire people on text. And that absolutely I can't understand on any level. That's so poor leadership. It's not e shouldn't even be categorized with the word leadership. Yet uh, the kids, a lot of the kids feel comfortable doing that. What they don't feel comfortable with is eyeball to eye firing somebody. And again, I've said many times, in the, in the first seminar, and maybe a couple times here, if you've never fired anybody, and you're 25 years old, and you find somebody 60, that's, that's not easy. That's not easy. It was always easy for me. OK, uh, any comments, questions um, about anything uh, before we uh, move on? But I, I was thinking about this this morning when I was looking at the slides. And um, it's, it's just obvious. Either the people that are working through the program now, even though we had the best year ever last year, this year ending in a few days. So we've, but we've also had four times, more, four times more time to do it. That's an exaggeration. Three times, but at least twice as much time to accomplish uh, these uh, simple steps as before Corona. Because we, we, you know, we're not driving, we're not flying, we're not doing all this stuff. I think my uh, guess is we literally had between three and four times more time to uh, enact the steps. You know, you think about your own day. Uh, later on today, uh, we're going to see um, the Goomba Brothers, which are two uh, Cuban guys in um, Florida that were skeptical in the beginning. You hear them now, but uh, that they have just catapulted over the competition and you know done some pretty uh, remarkable things. Uh, the uh, and they'll they'll tell you, but I mean, uh, they always spend good money on themselves. They feel com comfortable spending money, dinner, trips, and shit like that. But they sure as shit didn't uh, feel comfortable spending big money on lawyers or big money on accountants. Uh, but those big money lawyers and those big money accountants have brought them business just as they're supposed to, et cetera, et cetera. Um, any comments or questions on anything? Semi? I'll comment. Well, I know, see, I can always, there's three or four of you, I know I can always get a question out of or a comment. Go ahead. No, work, work ethics, uh, the Vanderbilts for. Um, for me, it goes down to focus. In that time, there were no, not so many things distracting Correct. oneself. Um, that's exactly what we do, and it's all the emotional bank account, how, how we cut those ties so we can stay focused on the few things that move the needle. And not the many. Um, I made the comment yesterday, a lot of Asians have more than one business. And I said, well, the reason is, well, if this goes out of business, well, at least I've got these other two businesses. And, and there's truth in that. There's no, you can't question the veracity or the validity of that comment. But by the same token, on the one hand, as Andres would say, but on the other hand, you're, you're not putting 100% focus on a majority of your time on perhaps the biggest opportunity. And, and normally, uh, we shy away, uh, and I did uh, when I was younger, and I'd have to knock myself in the head, bad uh, pun right now, but uh, to focus on the stuff that had the biggest opportunity. And in the beginning, you're looking at three things, and um, you don't really understand what the biggest opportunity is. And, and this is the only kind of uh, uh, catch-22 until you start looking at it more deeply and spending time on the three things. Then you realize the one, let's say the third choice that you might have had, really has the biggest opportunity. Uh, there's no question that the green stuff that we're looking at uh, from uh, Denmark, Finland, that area, huge opportunity. I mean, it, you don't have to be a, a, a brain scientist or a, a rocket scientist to figure that out. But there's a lot of bumps. There's a lot of bumps. And so it's whether you can get through those bumps 
as, as fast as humanly possible. And when you're working against the corporate world, which is going as slow as humanly possible, and when you're going against human nature, which is uh, maybe not as slow as humanly possible, but almost as slow as humanly possible, because nobody wants to be put on the line uh, that you made a mistake. Um, and uh, that's why, you know, when I tell the story about Ross Perot, when he got on the board of uh, General Motors a year later, they were still finger fucking around with the same thing. And he said, well, I'm, I'm out of here. You know, uh, I, I knew it was bad in the corporate world, but I didn't know it was this bad. And so he, he left and he founded another multi-billion dollar company. But see, we're drawn to that uh, Venus flytrap inadvertently. A lot of these um, big opportunities, because I mean, right now, if you're not green, you're not, I don't know the, the analogy, but, um, and you heard the carbonization uh, duo of uh, Leanne and uh, Graham. Uh, I'm not sure they can spell that word. But in, um, in the world, it's hot. It's hot. Uh, and even though an RQLA model doesn't sound sexy, if you look at the results, i.e. the um, Andreas model vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Bitcoin, uh, it doesn't sound sexy, but the results are plenty sexy, for sure. There's not many models that can create you know, 50 million euros in two years. In two years. Uh, we will be seeing, uh, unfortunately, Peter has got the corona. He's been struck down in the prime of his life with the corona, and I'm sure he'll get better um, uh, tomorrow uh, uh, via live um, webinar. And we're also going to see uh, Roberto uh, tomorrow uh, in, early in the day via um, a webinar, not live. He, he, he filmed it about a month ago, uh, and he, I've already told you he's at a partial exit. He just got married uh, a couple of weeks ago, and so uh, I'm sure that's not going to uh, affect his uh, work ethic. Maybe more than a week or two, till the, um, uh, with the greatest respect, the lust wears off. Uh, that's what the stage of their, uh, their, uh, their relationship is. No other questions, comments? Okay, who, uh, okay, who has, who still has cases to present me? Or us as a group? So, you've done all yours. You've done all yours. You've done all yours. You've done all yours. You've done yours three. You've done. You've done. You've done. Okay, you, you, okay, you. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, the uh, lawyer. Okay. I'm not ready yet. You've done. Oh, I'm not ready. Yet. Oh, you're not ready, okay. Um, hit it. Sometimes you don't know the real reason they fall apart. There's, you know, there's your reason, their reason, and then the real reason. And um, the uh, and if shareholders thought that you willy nilly threw seven million bucks, but now we're talking about at that time a hundred and fifty five million dollar deal, the uh, and then the extra money, um, or as they say in Kentucky, the extra the extra money we got uh, on uh, the financing, we bought a drilling company, we bought a pipeline co construction company, we bought a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but um, but you never know why the real reason. Like, you don't know the real reason your wife leaves you. You don't know the real reason. Some of you think, or you don't know the real reason your mother left your dad. You know, there's uh, always three sides to every, every story. And so uh, I've closed a lot of deals that way. I told you I saw a several hundred million dollar deal that was going to fall apart for $55,000 because somebody, blah, 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 and I, I just picked up, uh, picked up the bill myself. So sometimes you get too, too um, focused. There's focus, and then there's laser beam focus, and then there's moron focus when you can't see the forest for the trees. And uh, I, I used to be that kind of focus. I used to drive things home, whether they needed it or not. Now, I've mellowed quite a bit since then. Uh, you know, but the deal getting done is the most important thing, as long as legal, moral, and ethical, and again, ethics and morals swing in the wind. But... Legal, I mean the rule of law. It's got to have a rule of law, otherwise you're pissing in the wind. And I used to make the analogy, that's like a lady pissing in the wind, and that's fucking hard, you know, for a gal to piss in the wind. Um, okay, uh, comments, questions about the Goombas? Yes, sir. So following uh, Tony's question, uh, Phantom, stock options uh, to retain employees, 
exer- you, you exercise that, they exercise that. But the only time they're exercisable is at exit or, or controlling. Actually, there's two different kinds. There can be control. In other words, if the Goomba brothers give up 51% control, which is not likely, but if they did, they, the employees that have the phantom options could exercise them, or total control when they sell out. So it's uh, on a liquid event or drag and tag, or when Correct. you exercise drag and tag. Yeah. yeah. All right. And uh, you can put them on a vesting schedule as well. Well, no, 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 he, they don't do that. It, it's, you know, they give them to them up front, and uh, because there's no plan, we're going to exit in three years, uh, they're part of their little script is, we're going to exit when it makes time, makes sense. He, uh, Jason said that when it makes sense to us. When we have mass, and um, the um, and they haven't got mass. I thought this last uh, two deals they did, you know, that um, might give them some incentive to uh, exit. But now they realize now it's easy, but now they realize it's not that fucking hard. So their dreams, you know, have gone from you know four or five zeros to eight or nine zeros now, which is normally the case. And of course, if you give up, that doesn't happen. You never see that, you know. You know, the, the, uh, that story, um, there's light at the end of the tunnel, but you don't know the tunnel is four million miles long. I mean, so there isn't any light when the tunnel is four million miles long. So they, they don't use um, the uh, vesting. That, to me, that's, that's overkill. If, if you haven't fired them, they haven't quit, and you're in the deal six, seven, eight years, I mean, that's enough vesting. You can always fire them. And they work in a uh, right to work state, whatever it's called, so you can fire the guy if he, he, he parts his hair wrong. Literally. So, but now some, some of the other states, and if you recall, I showed you, or I told you, how you hire people that you don't have to worry about uh, firing them. Uh, but virtually nobody does the contract for 30 days, the contract for 60 days, or 90 days, the contract for six months. We have a handful of people in 28 years that have done that because, you know, it, uh, I don't think it's embarrassing. I, I, I'm protecting the shareholders' equity. But some, you know, some people say, well, I just had a 30-day contract. I just had a 60-day contract. Now you want me to sign a fucking five-month contract? Yeah. If you don't like it, see the door? Don't let the door hit you in the flabby ass on the way out. And uh, no matter what state, the toughest... Uh, H&R state, uh, human resource state in, in the country, is, uh, one of them is uh, Connecticut. I mean, you can blow them out the door. I mean, we've done it, blowing them out the door in Sweden, fucking Denmark, uh, Iceland, you name it, if you follow those steps in hiring them. And you make them, remember I said you have a, whoever's a human resource person, you have them uh, and you're hiring eight or ten people, you spend two days going through the contract word by word. And you have them, you have them initial, every corner, the top corners and the bottom corners, and the sign at the bottom of the page. Next page, word by word. You have, you have uh, two law, law firms there, memorializing with a notary. In some countries, you have a notary. Word by word, okay? And you go through every motherfucking page of the contract. Then you go through the constitution of the company, articles of incorporation, word by word. You can fire fucking God in heaven. And then they'll say, I didn't understand what I was reading. And then when they go for a break, I mean, uh, they can't tape. You take all their cell phones. I, I mean, I know how to do it. But you won't do it. Well, then it's not that important to you. Then it's not important. It's not important enough for you to follow those instructions and fuck you. Piss on you. It's not because I haven't taught you how to do it. It's you've taken the choice. You've making, yeah, or as they say, you've taken the decision, as they say here, not to do it. A lot of the kids say, well, that's, uh, nah, I mean, Penny, that, that happened in the 80s and I, it doesn't happen anymore. That's bullshit. Happened last month. And your lawyers will say that, um, that they'll write you a letter telling you how you shouldn't do this. Your accountants will write you a letter telling you uh, why you shouldn't do it. They're not telling you it's not right. They're not telling me it's not legal. But by some moral compass that's theirs, that may or may not be yours, I've done it to black, Chinamen, Koreans, Pakis. I mean, you name it, I've, I've done it to them all. You know, that's how, you know, but how, how, bad, how important is your dream? In addition to working, how hard you work for it, 
You heard him say, it's managing the fucking cunts. And not, uh, well, one, one of you at least has got enough employees to know how fucking hard it is to manage these pricks. And I say business is great without the people. I don't want to make friends. I mean, if you want a friend, buy a fucking dog. Um, I just, you know, I would rather you just send the money and not come. All the shit's on the website anyway. Just send me the fucking money. You know, I, I need to have, be having meals with you, and I like it better this way, though. I like the separation. I mean, this is right up my alley. Um, any, any comments about, uh, did I answer your question? Okay. Any comments or questions about the Goomba Boys? And they're, um, but we got a, a ton of them. I wish uh, uh, more of them would talk, but, uh, but when they talk, then you hunt them down. Then you hunt them down, which is uh, another sad commentary on humanity. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you know. Wise words from our Korean friend. The, uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but, uh, uh, any, anything else about, uh, <clears throat> Jason or, uh, or, uh, Tony? And, but they work like dogs. They're hardworking guys. Now, the Cubans tell me they're all, well, that's not true, because I know some lazy ass Cubans. So, but I mean, uh, the, uh, and they didn't go through the story, they can't, swam the water, and they rode a shark, you know, uh, uh, on the beach. The, the, the story is, you know, we came with uh, $20 and uh, a holy t-shirt. The only guy that I've seen with $20 and a holy t-shirt is my guy that's from uh, Malta that sells the inner tubes on the beach. And they're in, a, in uh, although they have a lot of contracts, they've uh, expanded the contract business and they've expanded the scope of the things they bid on. But now they get in, in, in certain states, and I think Florida is one of them, you only have to be in the top five. The top five to, to be considered for the contract. You don't have to be the lowest, just in the top five. And now that they have a big history of contracts, and they have some of the really uh, good contracts, um, and they've performed. If you don't perform, guys, not, all this is bullshit. It's just it's moot. I mean, it's, it's me flapping my lips in the wind. But if you perform, when you perform, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the world really can be your oyster. And as if you heard from them, the um, corona hasn't, hasn't stopped them. Uh, uh, again, they had to explain seller's equity. They had to, you know, these things which aren't foreign by any, by any stretch of imagination, but the, they're foreign to, you know, a majority of business. A majority, and some of the small accountants and some of the small law firms will tell you wrongfully, that it's not legal, it's not this, it's not that, which is bullshit. That is utter bullshit. It is legal. Now, I think, see, on the other end, I think it's criminal that they don't tell you. I think they should be brought up on charges for malpractice for not telling you. Well, of course, that goes over like a turd in a punch bowl. Nobody wants to hear that. When you know there's a better alternative for your client, if you're in the county or you're a consultant or whatever, if you know there's a better alternative and you don't tell them, to me, that's malpractice. Malfeasance. Um, I'm one of the only people on the planet that thinks that. But uh, they should. There should be a fiduciary responsibility for them if they represent you, if they take your money, um, um, that they tell you the whole truth. They tell you all the alternatives. And there's not many people that are fall into that category. And when we were running the Guthrie Group for, for Bohr, which we're not anymore, we occasionally take on a, a case or a client. Um, the, you know, when we did it for a tenth of the price, 10% of what the big guys would charge, and we got it back, back to you in a fifth of the time. And the reason why they take months, and sometimes years, is well, how do you send somebody a $14 million bill? I mean, how do you send somebody a $2 million bill, a 2 million euro bill, unless you worked on it 11 months? Yeah, and the, um, uh, we, we were working on a deal in, uh, in uh, Silicon Valley years ago, and um, three weekends in a row, I saw the partners of the big consulting firm on the golf course. Three weekends. Of course, they asked why was I there, but that's a whole other story. Because we met, we used the country club's uh, conference facilities for our meetings. So I was there, and I saw them playing 36 holes of golf a day, drinking in the bar. There's nothing wrong with that. I've done that a million times. 
But they're supposed to be on this big Fortune 50 company's um, case. And they were, I don't know how the, those big partners were billing. I know how they were billing. Uh, when they had the little minions doing all the work and uh, they were sitting in the bar and, on, and or on the golf course. Nothing against bars and golf courses. But I know, um, and I'm not saying that maybe that was just one instance in their whole career. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Uh, they, and there were some bankers there. And if I told Jason Nagy that, I told you bankers were crooks, Mr. Pena. I told you they were. Uh, I just got another email. I haven't read it yet, Jason. I'll read it uh, later today. Uh, but uh, anything else about um, the Goomba Boys? Are you warm enough, uh, James? Now, the, uh, the uh, um, Clyde Goins, who was my big time co operator, he passed away a couple years ago. Uh, the, uh, um, he had his five boys working there in the coal mines, five. Uh, and he had countless cousins, countless, I mean. Uh, and I tell the story now, this is a true story. Uh, the, uh, they were trying to unionize our minds. And the laws used to be, I don't know whether they are now, that a union representative, if he, can, if he can get three or five people to join in a meeting, he can have a meeting, even if you're not a union shop. Okay. I didn't like that law, and so we did everything humanly possible, so they couldn't have meetings. But occasionally, they'd get four or five of the young uh, coal miners we have a meeting. So about three or four in the morning, uh, one uh, Saturday, I was there over the weekend. They came to me, um, the um, sheriff uh, and our head of security, and uh, they said, we got a problem in mine 13. Uh, mine 13 was my lucky number. My, my, and they said, uh, so we were driving down there, and they've got uh, uh, the, um, the, uh, the people that you know, collect the dead bodies and uh, were there, and it was obviously a crime scene. And so then one of the sheriffs sarcastically said, this is, Mr. Penny, you probably have, don't know, this is one of the greatest feats of athleticism known, not just here in Hazard County, not just here in fucking Kentucky, but in the whole goddamn United States. Hmm. I said, really? So I know something bad has happened. And he says, this boy, and he, he, he draped with a, uh, uh, whatever you put over dead bodies, uh, he not o with his hands tied behind his back, and his feet tied together with barbed wire somehow leapt 19 goddamn feet over the chain link fence and dropped into the coal crusher. And the crusher, coal crusher t takes coal down to like 50 cent pieces. Not once, not twice, but three goddamn times that boy jumped over that fucking fence and fell into the coal crusher. And I said, just out of curiosity, Sheriff, who was that boy? It was that goddamn union representative. You don't tell me, Sheriff. Well, sorry to wake you up, sir, but uh, since it happens to be the owner was in town, we thought you ought to know. And that's how they play ball, up there in the hollers, up there in the hollers. And a few years prior to that, when I was doing business with the Vatican Bank, for those of you that are old enough to remember, the controller of the Vatican Bank hung himself over London Bridge in London, the morning before he was going to testify to uh, uh, Westminster. And that boy, that was only a 17-foot fence. And his hands and legs weren't with barbed wire. They were just rope. But he only jumped once. Once, I guess because he cracked his neck. He couldn't jump twice. And this is the real fucking world. This isn't pretend. Does the Vatican play hardball? You goddamn right they play hardball. And then they got little you, you know, trying to do the four dead man walking deal. You know, one of those dead man walking might have been somebody important. The father was somebody important. Any other questions? Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, when, when we say, okay, we will pay it back over three years, and this is the amount we pay the second year and the third year, do we attach that to a minimum EBITDA, or do we just say it doesn't matter the EBITDA, okay. we pay it? Let me you? tell you the way that it's supposed to be structured initially, and then I'll tell you the, a couple of ways that the kids deviate from it. I'm not telling you the deviation is good, but a lot of kids will sell into the easiest sale. In other words, where you think that they, there's a higher probability of them agreeing with you, as opposed to the best. Everybody understand that? Okay. 
Our, our, our LOIs, again, remember, unless you're going to have money to fight, are bullshit, okay? But are going to be based on, a, should be based on an EBITDA spread, you know, based on three to five times EBITDA subject to due diligence and finance. Okay, now in your mind, you already know the finance is going to be hopefully a la Winnie willing uh, seller finance, but you don't put that in there. You're, it's absolutely legitimate for you to say, you know, uh, EBITDA subject to three to five times uh, spread. Now they're going to say, not always, but they may come back and say, well, fuck. Now they wanna, they'll say, God, gosh, uh, Joe, why uh, are you that uncertain between the three and five? I mean, that's a lot of money to me. That may be 500,000 pounds, or that may be 2 million on that difference in spread. And you say, gee, Jane, well, uh, the numbers, in my experience of the board, is that uh, the numbers that we get are, are rarely the numbers that we make an offer on. So we like to make offers that in the neighborhood of. And that way, nobody's embarrassed. Now, they're going to think, well, fuck, I know I cooked these numbers. You know, I cooked the book, so... You know, uh, I understand now. And that normally, they back off. Okay, now, the spread is based on the industry. Remember, you've warmed up banks, and the banks, uh, you know, you're in the lending mode for, you know, uh, home health. You just were part of an $11 billion deal at Cardinal Health, yada, yada. Uh, and uh, the, uh, what were the parameters that you were looking at on these acquisitions? And they will normally tell you, because there's nothing there that's, they're giving away not useless information, but in their mind, useless information because they don't normally make loans on spreads of EBITDA. They make loans on the deals. So they're helping you, but inadvertently, okay? So they're glad to give you that information. And the banks have told you three to five or four to six or whatever the multiple is. Now, when you put that EBITDA spread in the LOI, they lock on the five when you want to lock on three or less. And so they will always pretend that their deal is at the better end of the continuum and not the bottom. Now, remember, they're subject to finance and due diligence. Well, and I told you years ago, well, I've been saying this a long, long time, that due, due diligence is a euphemism for knocking the price down. Now, I told you again, only one time in my 51 and a half year career have, after due diligence, has the price gone up. Only once. And that was um, the uh, Naval Academy guy current, uh, that was on current Navy duty who bought a substance abuse thing uh, on the West Coast. And the accountants were, fucked it up, uh, the numbers. And really, the, the, the business was worth much more than the business owner knew. But other than that one time, the price has always gone down. Always gone down. Now, you asked the second part of your question, if I understood you correctly, was... Uh, can you make it um, uh, subject to a, a um, uh, not a, okay, well, no, you, you want, remember, three years tax returns, three years uh, their financials. Uh, most of their financials that you're going to get are going to be from QuickBooks or something. At best, you're going to get a review or a compilation from a big accounting firm. You almost never get an audit. Almost never. And an audit from KPMG is significantly uh, better and more important and has more leverage at a bank than an uh, audit from a Joe Schwartz and company uh, or uh, Abdul and company uh, out of uh, Manchester. <laughs> okay, well, so um, you, I, I, I don't think that extra step is necessary. Uh, you get this, the spread and, um, and that, will, that will suffice. And again, the more complicated you make the goddamn LOIs, the less they are inclined to sign them. Even though, you know, they're not worthless, but they're, but they're our first stepping stone. That's our foot in the door, you know. She's agreed to stop off at the motel. But, you know, stopping off at the motel and going upstairs are two different things. So it's a first step, and it's very useful. It's very useful. Yeah, what else? We then include, um, like, uh, he's a non-compete. In the letter of intent, too? No. I, I, but again, it's worthless. So, okay, let me ask you a question. What's your purpose? Now, you're just getting to know the guy, okay? What's your purpose 
You get an LOI sign. What's the purpose? And I'm, this sounds like something that uh, Ghost Rider would put in. Did you get this from Ghost Rider? Okay. Don't tell me yes. Oh, fuck. Oh. Uh, okay. Now, what's the purpose of a non-compete? He's going to steal your ID. He's already in business. You're not. No, there's no non-compete. And um, do I need to put in an exclusivity that... Oh, now, this is important. You don't know for sure if you're going to get seller finance. If you're going to get seller finance, I mean exclusivity of 45 or 60 days is plenty. But you don't know that. And if any portion of the purchase price that's agreed is commercial bank, you're going to need more time, for sure. Um, and if you're with the SBA in America, you're going to even need more time. So uh, you, you want it out as far as you can, but you don't want them to get seller's you know, uh, fatigue. Now, if you slap them with 180-day uh, exclusivity, they're going to look at you and you give them all the bullshit. You've got 300 years of experience. We've done this 82 zillion times. Well, then what the fuck you need six months to close this pig? I mean, so, you know, I, I think the going rate now is maybe 90, 120 days. Uh, I'm not saying that's right or wrong. It depends. Uh, the, uh, but you don't want uh, a real long time. And you can always go back. You're not planning for a plan B, but you can always go back and ask for an extension. And most people will understand an extension. And if they balk at the extension, that's when you drop the dime on them about, uh, well, we can get this closed next week, 100% seller finance. 100%. Now, and what I used to do is a 60-40, and then we had to do an extension for whatever reason. It took longer to get the licenses transferred, whatever, whatever. And I'd say, well, you know, I, you already agreed to 40% seller finance. Let's do 100% seller finance. Now, some people will want some cash, no matter what. They're not interested in your song and dance. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I've seen, okay, well, you know, 100% seller finance, and I'll give you 50 grand. Not give, but $50,000 $50, cash, 50,000 pounds cash. And this, in some cases, it's not even 50. I mean, uh, I've seen it done for 15,000 pounds. The guy needed 15,000 pounds for something, I don't know what. I'm sure it was nefarious because he didn't want us to tell his wife. So I'm sure it had, it had nothing to do, you know, it was nothing good. And now, if they tell you that, that means they trust you. That or they're stupid. Okay? In this group, I'd say they're probably stupid. But that means that you, you have uh, built some rapprochement, as the French say, a, a rapport with them. Um, and th then you do the best, you, you know, and when they're willing to work with you like that. Now, some sellers that are motivated will really work with you. And part of my sales pitch over the kitchen table with a pot of coffee there was, you, I'm sure you know, you know, as things are going along well, I'm sure you know other sellers and probably unhappy like you are. It's a tough business, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, Margaret, Margaret, bring me Sam and Alice's number here. Yep. And just like, like a throwaway, like, you know, like, like uh, they should. And a lot of times they will. A lot of times they will. And, um, and of course, then, then you know, it's, it's fun to not, uh, you know, to maneuver the, the sellers uh, towards their best interest. Because nobody else is going to buy this pig. Now, I, I know you won't say that, but I mean, a couple times, a long time ago, they start to get sellers fatigue at the table because I'm not leaving the fucking table until the, they sign. So I had sellers fatigue in hours. You know, because, and then I say, hey, listen, your, your wife's out of, the, uh, out of the room right now. You know you can't sell this to anybody. You know. Uh, I mean, work with me here. You just don't, don't make this more hard than it's, more complex than it's got to be. And, you know, many times they will. But that's all sales 101. This is, you know, uh, make them your friend. You know, I never went that far, but... Uh, since I, you know, I had plenty of dogs, I didn't need any more friends. But um, remember, uh, tough-minded leadership, tough-minded management. Well, you'll learn uh, eons of stuff in just two simple little books. No, not so little, they're about that thick. Um, did I answer your question? Okay. Another one. Um, do we... And, but the breakup fee we put inside the letter of intent. No, I, no, no, I, 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 that's, that's a bridge too far. Irrespective of what Tilly Baker says through 
uh, doom coffee, or, you know, that's a bridge too far. You know, but don't be worried about it. It doesn't matter. You're getting your fees on the delay. Who gives a shit? See, that's an oxymoron. And I'm sure if you ask Doomkoff, he's got a reason, which is wrong. But I mean, since they're delayed, anyway, you're going to not pay one penny. Even if the deal craters, why would you have them guarantee, which could be not a breakup fee, break up the deal? Why would you put that in front of them? Unless you're a ghostwriter from, uh, you know, uh, Harry Potter or something. Does he got any more brilliant ideas you want to ask me? Um, okay. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Um, other questions about anything in general? Yes, sir. In my experience, generally speaking, I think uh, 90 days seems to be comfortable because once they've agreed to sell the business to you, they want you to exchange and complete like yesterday. Yeah, so, yeah. As you've said, if you go too far out, it becomes complicated. And Correct. After, after 90 days, there will be at least two or three occasions in those 90 days that the sellers caused uh, delays, so, so you can use that to extend the negotiation. Correct. But the question yeah, I wanted to ask was that one deal that came up with a higher valuation on, on the DD. Correct. I assume, obviously, that those figures came through your accountant. Yeah, well, audit, a real audit. Yeah. And oh, no, the, on our um, quality of earnings, yeah. not an audit, our accountant's yeah. quality of earnings. Yeah, yeah. But you were under no obligation, I assume, to You're right. disclose I, 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 correct. the seller. You're so, right. And, and the, uh, the price didn't go up, but the terms changed. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. He, what he's saying is, we found it. We're under no obligation to tell him. Okay? Uh, the, um, and especially uh, Bin Laden country, I mean, for sure. But you, you, we're not hiding the information. Okay? And why, why, <laughs> why am I looking at you when I say this? Anyway, uh, but... The, uh, but we did feel obligated when he uh, squirreled around and screamed a little, okay, we pushed it out, you know, and so uh, us knowing what the, the real thing was, we pushed it out. And, and then again, and it, was a, it was a reasonable accountant firm, it wasn't some idiot, but they, these firms do make mistakes. They do make mistakes, but they rarely make a mistake on an audit. Even a bullshit firm rarely makes a mistake on an audit. Whereas the compilation, they can always go and say, you know, you gave me those numbers, so I just compiled what you gave me, which is a lot of truth. And, but again, even audits don't look at every number. Uh, and the bigger the, the firm and the bigger the amount, the more paper they look at. They look at. But now, they're not looking at paper. They're looking at entries on a computer screen. So in theory... In reality, they can look at more numbers, but they don't. They charge you about the same, and they, it takes them about a fifth of the time to do it. But that's fine. Remember, no fee's too big as long as the deal gets done. And the most thing, and in the 48,000 EBITDA thing that we looked at earlier, just get the, you know, as Abdul said, just get the goddamn thing done. And your whole world changes. Your whole world changes. And the, uh, and you know, it's, you know, the end you... Uh, I, I still remember um, uh, the Australian great golfer, the shark. What's his name? Okay, well, anyway. And when um, a guy won his first major at the British Open and beat him out. I forget who it was. And he said, now you remember the club. Well, when you do a deal, you're the member of the club. When you do a deal, you're member of the club. And some guys have done two deals, and some guys have done 22, and some have done 2,000. But you're still a member of the club. And, and you're bored, and with all the years of experience, the clock start the clock running again because they're doing deals. And it's a lot different. You know, it used to be, they used to say, I don't know if they say it anymore, when the guys are uh, teaching finance in, in schools, you know, if you can't do, they teach. So most of the guys that taught, now I don't know if that's current day, but uh, I know when I was going to school, uh, the, uh, the guys that were teaching were guys that weren't successful out in the field. And although they were accountants, although they were uh, PhDs in finance, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's hard to eat if you're not doing deals, whether you're a PhD in finance or not. Whereas you can teach, you know, uh, six classes a year, and at least you get paid, even if you, uh, you don't teach them much in class. And, and that's more or less, you know, uh, my opinion. 
not just my opinion, and, and that's not to say there are some gr great professors that teach good shit, uh, but for the most part, I, I wouldn't uh, give them the attributes. And somebody did, one of you did about five, six years ago, and I don't know if this was at Stanford, uh, it might have been Stanford. I had done more transactions, me, by myself, than the whole graduate school team of professors, uh, lecturers, and whoever else teaches those fucking classes. Me, by myself. So you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. The, uh, what else? Okay, you got three cases or two cases? Three, okay. Uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, Goins, what were they? The three, please. Stanford case, IP case about IT company, and one more case just going through HP. Okay, now the IT is how you sell your IT company? Is that the one? Yeah. Okay. I always get a big laugh out of that one, so, <coughs> excuse me, let's not choke on it, Dan. The, uh, who has done enough on that case to explain it? Okay. Let's go. He's trying to email Baker Tilly now. Baker Tilly is a fine firm. I don't mean it that way. But all their clients aren't necessarily fine clients. You know, the, uh, and this, occasionally you get a dipshit. Now he's pretending like he's, I'm not talking about him, but. Uh. <laughs> yeah, this deal um, is mostly about uh, selling your IT business and what factors you have to consider when you want to sell your business. So in this case, um, there are multiple factors you have to consider when you want to sell your business. It would be timing, so this is the right time to sell your business. It would be urgent, for example, of, for example, that the owner has health issues, private issues, into the family, and so on. By the way, stop there. When they say it's a family issue, well, what is the family issue? Now, you're not supposed to do this. Well, exactly what is the family issue? Family issue. Issue. I'm selling because of family issues. And you're not, just like you're not supposed to ask if a woman's going to have any more babies. Conflict. Yeah, well, I said, well, what, what, exactly what is that family issue? And then when they say, well, I'm selling for health reasons. Well, exactly. Uh, what do you have, third-degree cancer? Of three? And even though, and, I, and I, get, I get away with a lot of shit. But I mean... And then all of a sudden, it's not health. It's not family. He wants to leave his wife, you know, uh, and uh, bring his girl. I mean, and the more leverage you have, the more the price goes down. I once thought that the HR manual was uh, written, this is when the first ones came out, 34, just to preclude me from doing business. Because, you, you know, they said that it's not right for you to ask those kind of questions. And I used to say, what's fucking wrong with it? The more personal information you have about the potential seller, the more leverage you have. So however you can phrase this so you feel comfortable asking the question, or sometimes I'd say, uh, I'd make a throwaway statement. Oh, you're doing this for this. And then lo and behold, well, yes, Mr. Pena, but that doesn't sound right. You're right. And the broker didn't tell me that. You know, the more leverage you have, the lower the price. Now, uh, in the big guys, they hire private investigators to go through trash cans. Boy, I'd like to, Ben Laden, I'd like to go through your fucking trash. I mean, there's a plethora of shit there. I mean, I could start a new business. Okay, but they go through trash cans. Now, why does the private equity guys hire private, uh, private investigators to go through trash cans? To get more leverage. So, and you can't even ask a fucking simple question? I just remember that analogy. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so personal reasons. Then there could be reason about the products and their services, for example, that they see in the future that their products or services will not work out in the future anymore. And then also the market, that means the competition is raising up. So they see that their market share on, on the pie will drop, for example. And... Um, also, that they see maybe my business is stagnant, it won't go it up in the future, and when the revenue doesn't go up or the profit long term, it might be an issue 
that they don't get the price that they wish they would get long term. So in this case, we had to... Um, okay, stop. Doesn't that all really relate to if the private issuer, it's the market? Remember, 95, and this is old information, it's 2017, 95% of all companies that went up for sale in 2017 didn't sell. Didn't sell. 5% sold. And the majority, the, 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 they didn't sell because they were asking too much money. They were trying to, not just the magic carpet, Bin Laden here, they were trying to get wealthy on one transaction. Wealth, you know, they wait 40 years to sell their business, and, and what is the most common cliche? Well, I put my money back in my business because I know it best, I control it, yeah. That's horse shit, you know. At some juncture, you shouldn't be putting more money in the, in the company. What's the ROI? What's the return on invested capital? There's all kinds of other questions, which we don't teach you because they don't mean a shit, but the, 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 the fact that you've been told that, 5% sell because they're reasonably priced, or, and, or, and because they're reasonably priced, at the value that the, the market says. And I used to get off on telling people, your company is worth what the market says it's worth. And then I, I, I did a derivative of that. Your company's worth what the, the banks tell me I can borrow against it. It's not worth a penny more. And nobody tells them that. Their own accountants don't tell them that. Their own lawyers don't tell them that. And their families sure as hell don't tell them that. And it's like um, Abdul said, it's 80 million to one group of people and it's 500 million to another. Uh, that's perfect. I'm, I'm going to be using that analogy for the next 25 years. But it's true. It's true. So, I mean, it, it, it all comes down to, and if they ask a, a horrific price, uh, it's easy when it's been on the market two, three, four years. And it's e even easier if it's been on the market that long and they've dropped the price two or three times. And all that information is normally, you can get it. And, uh, and if you're going to do seller finance and you can ask the broker, the broker will say, yeah, it says we've been on the market 10 months because every 11 months we take it off the market and we put it back on the market which is the normal game. Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, and in this case, we had a subcase, which means, okay, when someone has to sell this company quickly, in most cases, you sell at a lower price because the potential buyer will see it, its urgency you have as a seller. That's why they can negotiate from, with better leverage. Um, then, some point, for example, um, that uh, the employees don't get their bonuses, so they can also see maybe an issue that they're seeing, oh, this could be long-term an issue when I am um, employed by the new buyer, so that they can have an issue in that. And most companies also try then house cleaning, so they try to clean their businesses, and this causes long-term also issues in negotiation, for example, long-term due diligence. So, um, for this case, um, in time, they, it was October, and they want to sell to the end of the year. So they have a big motivation, the trigger, I want to get out by the end of the year. So for QLA, it's clear for us when we have these kind of triggers that we use seller finance because we know we can really, in a short period of time, 48 hours, 72 hours, um, I, I, I wouldn't be using those hours because, I mean, everything has to go perfectly to get something done in 48 hours. I say a week. A week. In one or two weeks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. um, also, um, you, ex you had some examples, for example, that they pay you to take the business off their hands with one dollar or one penny, or that you pay a really short uh, price uh, to get this deal done. So, um, yeah, and the thing is... Um, as you say, never ask why, only how in this case, and how does a, a quick sale impact the team and the employees? This is also a question that you have to consider um, that the team, for example, the employees who are in the company, that you bring them as a buyer in, into your board. For example, as you say, you pay bonuses, increase uh, their payment, bring them on um, some, some, some shares, for example, and also on the second tier to involve them in the operation and so on. Yeah. Okay, this isn't just IT. 
This is any kind of company, okay? But a couple uh, uh, observations. You, you often hear, uh, well, uh, I want to sell to somebody. They're going to keep the employees in the corporate culture, yada, yada, right? Okay. Sometimes that's true. My experience, it's not true most of the time. The old man or the old couple or the old lady have a amount. Everybody will sell their soul for a certain amount. And uh, I'm not suggesting that that's how you structure your offer. Uh, but I've never seen, in all the years I've been doing this, anybody take a lesser price to keep on the employees. You mean you'll take lesser to keep on the employees? I'm waiting for that one person to tell me yes. It's always no. Well, I, I didn't mean it that way, sir. Okay, so there is some level at which you don't give a shit about the employees. And I would use, give a shit. Well, I don't mean it that. So what you want to do is you want to beat down the, the, the rationale or the logic they use, why they need a certain price or they, uh, certain parameters. Because it's like, you know, the hooker says, you know, 50 bucks, so you're a hooker. Now we're just negotiating. Okay, so the, 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 the fact is that you want to uh, not humiliate them in their rationale, but make sure that they understand that you understand that that's not really what it's all about. What it's all about is you, you the seller, walking away with a transaction that you, you, you uh, can live with, and, and it's really irrespective of the employees. It's really irrespective of the employees. But a lot of people use that. Once in a while, one out of 10, they really mean it. But I've seen uh, a lot of numbers, uh, or a lot of uh, companies change hand when it really didn't apply. And then, on the earn out, it, you can really see it. When you say we're gonna have an earn out, and blah, blah, blah. Well, how much of the earn out do you want your employees to get? They look at you like you got shit on your face. What? Who? None, zero. So you destroy that whole optic that you know that that's bullshit. You don't want, I told you, uh, Roberto, God love him, he's the only guy I've ever known to give $10 million to fucking key people. I mean, I've been doing this a long time, you know, and I'm proud of him. And he's my benchmark. I wouldn't have given him 10. I probably would have given him two, three, two, probably. A half a million each. And uh, uh, Ben Laden would give him a uh, happy uh, dinner at McDonald's or the uh, Asian equivalent thereof. Uh, so, I mean, there's ways. Now, in these old canny guys that have been in sales, I'd rather have a guy that's done 250 sales. I've got a current guy that we just brought on. He's done 175 transactions in the last 14 years. 175 transactions. Now, that's humping. That's humping. Uh, not as much as I am, but for a corporate guy, for a white shoe professional, that's humping. Because when you've been through that many transactions, it's hard not to have been tried to cheated or lied to or whatever. And you want to be able to use every legitimate bit of leverage. Uh, and when you ask them, well, how much of that, you know, earn out do you want to pay out? Then all of a sudden, the real greed and avarice factor. And now, I went overboard to embarrass people to do that. I don't recommend you do that. I got away with it, but you're not me. So, but you want them to know that you understand that that's, that's pomp and circumstance. That's bullshit you're talking. You know, the, uh, uh, it's a really important point. Um, and the, uh, the other point, um, again, IT are selling at high multiples now. Cyber, you know, artificial intelligence and that kind of thing are all selling at high multiples. They're not the only thing selling at high multiples, but there are some of the more obvious. Uh, the, um, so when, when uh, a lot of those companies fall into the category of 95% of them don't sell in the year because they're asking too high a price. Now, hardly anybody ever says, have you ever wondered why, you know, I know you've taken it off the market, put it on the market, take it off. Why it hasn't sold in four and a half years? I mean, the dipshit broker here mentioned it to you? Because you're asking for too much fucking money. It's a pipe dream. Well, you can sit, soften it up. I mean, I'm sure Ben Laden over here would soften it up and get the same point across. But I mean, harshness at the, as part of your 
sales technique works. Now, I started out harsh, and I got harsher. I would recommend for you that you start off soft and get harsher. But I mean, see, when you start off harsh, you can always loosen up. Now, you're going to laugh when I say, when they start crying and shit like that, I mean, you can loosen up a little. You know, I'm, probably nobody in this room has ever made anybody cry to this close. I didn't think so. And wh what does that say? Submersive, what does that say? That I'm the only person in this room that's made somebody cry at the close. Other than I've sold 82 Julie more than all of you. I mean, harshness works, and it's awful. Fear still works. I'm sorry to say. It's a hell of a way to run the world, but unfortunately, fear still works. But you can be a billionaire without scaring people. But the guys up there that are multi-billionaires, to a one, man or woman, use fear in their, in their uh, tactics, if you will, in your tactics. And, uh, and the schools absolutely don't, don't want anybody to teach that. Don't want anybody to teach that. Okay, uh, questions about the IT case. And that's not just IT case, that's anybody. That's anybody. Or any kind of company, really. Uh, are you done? Okay, James? Okay, well, you're the field general, I see. So, you know, you, uh, you got any words? Uh, University of Pennsylvania, words of wisdom? No. Okay, in the back. You know, with the IT cybersecurity um, industry, a lot of uh, responses I get from the sellers, like, oh, I get like five to 10 calls, a, calls like this a week, right? Mm -hmm. and that's what they say to me a lot. And that's something that uh, I've been trying to battle through, even like, you know, mentally. And after, you know, you telling us all this stuff, I'm starting to think I should start saying stuff like, you know, uh, how many companies have you sold based off of the five to 10 calls or like put them on the spot? Well, I used to say, you know, well, um, and I'm not really interested in Mr. Jones or Miss, Miss uh, Appleby or whatever your name is, uh, why you're selling because, you know, uh, you're really not going to relate to me candidly why you're selling. It's, it's not my business. But if you're selling to get wealthy, you're running out of time, sweetheart. Now, I used to say, I'm accused of saying, obviously that's not true, you run out of time, tits, if it was a woman. Of course, that's, not, that's blatantly a falsehood. That's blatantly a falsehood. But I mean, most of the people that are practicing QLA that haven't come to here are desperate. Some of you are desperate as well. But I mean, uh, they've got nothing to lose. So they piss somebody off in the process. So what? In the cosmos of time, it's not a fart in the wind. You know, uh, you're not uh, uh, dealing in life and death shit. I, I like uh, the uh, analogy from Sophie's Choice, the book that Meryl Streep got an Academy Award in 1981, 40 years ago. She was in a uh, concentration camp. A Jewish lady had two kids uh, with her, and she used to screw the commandant, the German commandant, for extra blankets and extra food and stuff, right? And uh, uh, her, her, her Gestapo, her professor captain Gestapo, wakes up one morning and decides that she didn't do her duty to him. And she says, uh, I, we have to learn a lesson. And so you have to make a choice which one of your children will go to the gas chambers. So Sophie's choice. You know, she's on, the, she's on worse than the horn of a dilemma. I mean, she's got a, that's a real problem. And the whole movie's about which child she chooses, the baby girl or the little boy. And uh, she, she picks one to go to the gas chamber. Four hours, four hours later, the 82nd infantry liberates them. Four hours. They liberate the uh, concentration camp. And uh, of course, she's distraught, she's crazy, blah, blah, blah. And she moves to uh, New York and lives in Manhattan and uh, moves in with a, a Jewish writer and they wrote the book, Sophie's Choice. And then at the end of the book, like in uh, Cleopatra and, and Mark Anthony, they commit suicide together which I didn't think was such a great uh, ending. But you're not, you don't have Sophie's choice. It's not life and death, unless, you know, and we, you know, we have some financial uh, doctors that, that you think you are in here, and uh, financial magicians, but uh, you're not. It's not life and death. Yet, many of you, uh, um, you say it one way, they, they overcomplicate it, because they overcomplicate it because you really don't want to make a decision. You're overcomplicated because at the one end, or on the one hand, as Anders would say, you don't think you deserve the money. 
On the, so, but I mean, you overcomplicate it on purpose. And one of the things that I was I'm very good at, and even today, I don't overcomplicate anything. Um, so we just remember that. It's not Sophie's choice. None of these deals. The best deal that I heard in here is not Sophie's choice. The worst deal I heard in here uh, should be Sophie's choice because you should blow your brains out if you're considering doing the deal. But I mean, uh, it's not Sophie's choice, guys. It just isn't. Not surprisingly, uh, the volume after Christmas uh, on my website goes up dramatically, which we all know because people are doing uh, holiday stuff. <clears throat> the, um, and it's virtually the same every year. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't vary. People are taking time. And in fact, the volume starts going down about uh, the 10th of December. And it really uh, doesn't peak up until about the 7th, 8th, or 9th of January. Because that's when um, the, the, the corporations and or the financial professionals start to shut down. Uh, right now, we're, I'm working on three deals that were, it, when they close, they'll close probably uh, the last day of the, of the year, which is not unusual. But um, for those of you that went to school, and those of you that got even bad grades, normally you don't start studying until the day before or hours before the exams are due. Well, it's not dissimilar to doing deals, unfortunately. And the guys and the gals, all of a sudden, oh shit, there's only five days left in the year. And they go to the whip. Of course, if you hadn't been pushing the professionals all the way along, and if you haven't been pushing the motivated seller, you made that uh, request or that demand, or you screaming may fall on deaf ears. And it quite often does, and then it doesn't close. And then you figure out another reason how to step on your dick so the deal doesn't close at all. I was taught that you never extend. Um, I don't believe in extension of LOIs. Because if uh, I don't keep this data, but I'm pretty sure that the data will show that maybe uh, 50 to 75% of the um, extension of LOIs uh, get completed, not 100. Um, I was taught that the, the, you have no extensions of when you go IPO. You don't, you don't give a shit. I mean, as you recall, uh, I did it on my birthday because I wanted to do it on my birthday. And uh, because in, early in my career, because I set goals with time limits. And I said I was going to be filthy rich by the time I was 40. So I said, well, why not 39? And so on my 39th birthday, we went public. But unfortunately for me, thank you, um, Maggie Thatcher, in her infinite wisdom, uh, was uh, privatizing uh, Jaguar on my birthday. And everybody, and you know the story, everybody and his brother, all the professionals, one, because it was in the middle of summer and nobody wants to work in August, okay? Two, uh, a better excuse or better reason is that Mrs. Thatcher is privatizing, and I believe it was one of her first privatizations, was privatizing Jaguar. And uh, in theory, a good portion, if not all, the institutional money would be sucked out of the system for that privatization because uh, Mrs. Thatcher was not popular with the common folk necessarily, but she certainly was popular with the financial community. And so uh, they wanted to postpone it, and I said, no, we're not postponing the fucking thing. So, but um, the holidays and the summer, trying to get a deal done in Spain or Portugal or Greece during the summer, July and August is uh, hard because everybody is uh, on their permanent siesta, or whatever the Greeks call it. Uh, but it's not that easy, uh, much easier in London. But the Americanization of the city or the financial district in the UK has uh, weighed heavily and had the Brits work longer hours during the summer than they would like to. And it's the Americanization, the, uh, uh, or the Americans, or the American work style, or work ethic that has changed finance. Um, just as Trump has changed finance, uh, just as Trump has changed politics, even though they've they uh, undone a great deal of what Trump did uh, when Biden got elected. And the, you have come in, in the last three or four years, into a, uh, a uh, less relaxed environment than we had here um, in Europe 20 years ago. 
yet 20 years ago, they got more deals done. And all the data and all the research that we do or have done gets back to the guys in the 90s and the early 2000s. They got more stuff done um, with not a fraction of the material, not a fraction. I hate to, uh, to use the word toolbox, but uh, without a fraction of the tools in that toolbox. Um, and we, we, we discussed and I pointed out uh, beating my chest uh, why. Now, the, um, whether you were in the 90s, the 2000s, or the 2020s, this is the only thing that counts. You're going to be judged by your results, and your board will judge you how soon you get results. And when the kids lose board members, it's because they lallygagged along, and you didn't keep them informed. We've had kids that, you know, God forbid, took two years to do a deal, but they kept their boards informed. So the boards didn't think they were left out in the cold. I got an email from a, a chief information officer of a big techie thing. And uh, he said, I, have, I haven't had any information uh, in uh, 18 months. I can only assume that we died a natural death. And it was quite po poetic what he said. And then within about a day, a day and a half, we got emails uh, and I, I'm not on the board anymore, but I'm still was listed because this is one of my alleged protégés. And um, four or five uh, people resigned because they hadn't been kept in the loop. When you don't keep in touch with the boards and you don't keep them up to date, even though you don't think you've done anything, uh, they think the deal's dead. And in some cases, they may even take other positions on other boards. And then even if they liked you, which I don't like to use that word, and even if they liked the project, and again, I don't like to use the word like, they've got a conflict now. And uh, legitimately, um, it's the you in the equation's fault. So now, they're only looking at results. Well, life is that way. You can't buy a house or a condo or a flat unless you made some money, right? And everybody's complaining about, not everybody, the millennials are complaining about not being on the property ladder. And I've used the property ladder or two other analogies early on, and I don't see that myself. You kids that are millennials or thereabouts have bought houses. At the same time frame that the millennials are complaining about not being, not being able to get on the property ladder. I have two mentees right now, both looking at eight million, one $8 million, one $8 million euro house, both on a lake. I don't know what it is about a fucking lake. You know, they don't have a boat, but they're looking on uh, houses on, on, a, um, on a lake. Um, and I don't know what it is about eight million, you know, but uh, it's certainly better than the cold, uh, well, cold water flat means in the old days, you were in a flat with no refrigerator and you put your milk out on the, on the, on the windowsill and that was your refrigerator. So when you go by a Ben Laden slum, you'd see milk, cheese, Salami on all the windows outside. And now that's not a very nice look. And I'm hoping that you don't have that, uh, Abdul. But so um, now everybody, not everybody, but most of the people are complaining about millennials not getting on the property ladder. So what do they do with their money? They save five, 10, 20, 30, 50 grand, and they buy crypto fuck. And that's going to be their quantum leap to property. And unfortunately, they buy it at 59000 And it goes to 34000 Now, some, I only hear the stories about the 59000 I, I rarely hear the story that they bought it at 34000 and it went to 59000 If, in fact, they did what Andreas did starting two years ago, about today, his first deal, he certainly got enough money to get on the property ladder. And even though he's one of the guys looking at the 8 million euro house on a lake in some fucking place, I like to say Bavaria because I know Bavaria better, but it's not in Bavaria, it's up in the north. And I, don't, I look on a map, I don't see many lakes. So how big could the fucking lake be? But anyway, that's a whole other story. It is, it's not the cure-all, it's not the, uh, you know, um, guilty edge panacea to a lake. But if you do it right and you follow the steps, uh, in two years, you can build up to your account 30 million euros. 
Now he has acquired 45 million euros in another way, and even though he has a great majority of, of the deal, those 45 million euros aren't his. He's got to perform with those 45 million euros, and he really has to perform with hundreds of millions of euros, really. But if Andreas quit today, he liquidated to a private equity, which he's already been approached, he'd walk away before taxes with about 30 million euros in about 24 months. So that's a little more than a million euros a month, which, isn't, which is better than a poking you have with a sharp stick. Some of you came into the QLA program, if you want to call it that, at the, about the same time he did. And he's not my poster child. He's not in the middle, he's in the top third. He might, he might even be in the top quarter. But if you're in the top quarter and you made, to your own account, more than a million euros a month, that's what's possible. But it's one thing being an upper average QLA bot, because that's not an average person. Because that up, upper third or upper quarter QLA bot is a multimillionaire after three transactions. Two transactions, in his case. But somehow, the kids, for sure, that are on YouTube, don't equate that. Don't equate that, because uh, uh, Bitfuck was up, I don't know, $4,000 yesterday, or 5000 I forget what it is. Because I saw it was 50, I think, 50 grand. And the last time I looked, it was 45 grand. And so they say, well, it went up 10% in one day. More or less, that's true. That's not more or less true, that is true. But so what? And so what? Now, you have, you're judged on results, and to the extent that you are successful, you get what I used to call a battlefield promotion. Andreas has gone from a pretty highly priced investment analyst, which gave him no clue to do QLA, to multimillionaire, multi multimillionaire in 24 months. So he'd probably be like a, maybe a, a colonel. He'd go from private to colonel. And for the guys that have made more money, like Thomas McGuire, he's, you know, um, in uh, a little more than two years, 30 months, uh, he's made about 70 or 80 million. So he's, a, he's some sort of general now. And unfortunately, Thomas, you act like a fucking cocky young general now. And it's not that I, do, I, I want you to remember where you started, but you guys too easily forget where you started, and all of a sudden you're fucking Moses. Now, I walk on water. You don't yet. Yet. But um, so, you know, the, it's, but the kids don't think this through. Just as I pointed out in your presentation, some of them, and with the assistance of a couple of the guys, two or three of you that are more experienced, you pointed stuff out um, that are overlooked. And, you, and if you didn't overlook them, it's because you made them more complicated, and the system is simple. The templates are simple. The templates are short for a reason, because you don't want to give them too much information. All you want to do is give them, and we're not hiding stuff, give them enough information to say, yes, I'm interested. And then, you know, you go to the next templates. You go to the next templates. Now, these people, some got, some are generals, and it's a, a sad, I'm not going to beat my chest about how sad it is. I got to cover the fucking face because of uh, facial rec recognition. But we've got on the left hand, right hand, or your left hand corner, somebody that's created about six, seven hundred million to his account in 40 months. Next to him, or below him, we've got a guy who took a little longer, ex cop, who created a hundred plus million to his account. Next to him, we have somebody that's created about a billion to his account. Next to him, we've got a, um, a young uh, kid uh, that created about 70 million to his account. Next to him, we've got a guy that turned 20 grand into 70 million, 70 million in seven months. Next to him, we have a billionaire couple. A billionaire couple, it took him about 10 years. So, you know, they're not one of my stars, but I can, I can talk about him because they're not going to sue me for talking about him. Above him, we have a guy that didn't show up because he's got Corona Rona, but we're going to talk to this afternoon live. Uh, next to him, we have uh, 
a teenage multimillionaire that now I can use, it, use his picture. Before, I couldn't use his picture. Uh, and next to him, we have uh, the couple that you talked to a, a few days ago that went from five employees to 850 employees, went from less than a million in turnover to 120 million in turnover. This is all, and uh, we don't have, we didn't have uh, time to put up the picture of another guy that did the first cannabis financing in Canada and has done, you know, several hundred million dollars in cannabis transactions and financing. This is all in recent years, the last three or four years, since you came to the seminar. There's not an Einstein up there. There's a couple of bright ones, bright meaning high IQs. Maybe not as high as my IQ, but high IQs. There's a couple that you, a couple of the smarter people in the room, would think that are slow, thick, but they're still 40, 50 million, 80 million, 120 million euros, dollars, pounds ahead of you. Now, what industry were they in? Because I can already see in your eyes, well, fuck, they must have been, uh, I'm, in, I'm in tech, I'm in cyber fuck, and I'm, what I'm doing is harder. I can already see it in your eyes. You're trying to discount, and I don't even have Josh up here. You're trying to discount like Josh was Michelangelo. They weren't. Starting from the left to the right, conglomerate, property management, IT, hospitals, moving down, healthcare, IT, transportation, conglomerate, and property management. Only two, a couple are healthcare. How can that be? Dan says healthcare is, is, is the knees bees, or bees, bees knees, or whatever it used to be called. And if we went down to five or 10 million that they made, uh, we'd have more healthcare. Because a lot of people would rather know they're going to make five or 10 million, more, not 100%, but 75, 80%, than venture out into something that they would get higher multiples and make more money. I told you that uh, this last Corona 20, 22 months has been the best closing that we've had. We're up about 95%. We're actually up more than 100% now. But since, the last, since I know we took the numbers and we were 95%, 95.1%, I'll use that until uh, we recalculate all the numbers. But um, it's there, guys. Oh, and how many went to hardcore? That's another question. Are you were you thinking that, Doomkoff? Yeah, of course, of course. Okay, starting at the top, hardcore, hardcore, no hardcore, no hardcore, hardcore. No hardcore, hardcore, no hardcore, hardcore, no hardcore. For the ones that went to hardcore, um, probably half of them benefited from the hardcore. They all benefited, but benefited enough to get a deal done quicker. Because a shoe dropped, a penny dropped, something fit in. Uh, they were able to connect another set of dots. We got plenty of people that uh, attended hardcore that didn't do shit. But normally we get a, a burst after a hardcore. The last hardcore, we, uh, 17 deals were done, not overnight, but almost overnight. Because either out of shame, guilt, or brains, I don't care which one it is really, uh, all of a sudden you just connected the dots and went out and were... Uh, more rude, maybe, uh, more, more, or less passive uh, to your um, motivated seller. Because I used to think, when they wasted my fucking time, and all we have is time, when they wasted my time, you know, I got angry. And of course, when I get angry, I show it. Uh, when I was about 30, uh, I thought I had an ulcer, but I didn't. And uh, I said, you know, that you give ulcers, you don't get them. And, you know, it's acid indigestion back, backing up and all, all this stuff because you know, you don't, you're not releasing uh, your uh, inhibitions. Well, I don't know if there's an inhibition I have not released a thousand times. When I read the book, Jim Newman, who was my mentor, 
release your brakes, I thought it meant something else. Till I got into the book, that, and Jim contends, and I agree a, a thousand percent, that we um, are like we're a car that has the emergency brake on, and then all of a sudden, but now you can't drive because as soon as you put it in the drive, the emergency brake comes off most cars. But in the old days, it didn't. And um, most of you in this room are going through life with your emergency brake on. And my, uh, my extension of that is many of you in this room wouldn't say shit if it was in your mouth. It's hard to believe. I, I can't if I had shit in my mouth. I can't. Uh, I mean, I can't believe that I wouldn't say shit. Yet some of you remember the word nice is a 13, 14th century derivative of a word that meant moron, retarded, slow. And when they called the women nice, it was because they were uh, one of those three or all three, and they used to put cages on their heads so they couldn't talk. Now, I know this sounds terrible in the 21st century, but that's, that was a damn good idea, in my humble opinion, and there's nothing humble about me. So, whether you went to hardcore and you're here, and today's uh, the last day, or you didn't, or whether you were in healthcare, IT, whatever, or you, or you weren't, there's no reason, or another word you can use, excuse, for you not to be able to do this. We've got successes from cash and carry, to on the one hand, and on the other hand, slum landlords. Well, it happens to be the same person, but the, uh, uh, and we've all heard his story, and it's, it's, it's gratifying. It's, 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 you know, it's, it's uh, to some of us, to me, it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming. Um, but again, you know, um, perhaps, hopefully, and I'm, I'm not going to uh, give this as a guarantee, if you just edge towards mind of the continuum a little bit, if you just take your success a little bit more seriously than, 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 than you do today, because, and to get to where I am more worried about your success than you are, you're not gonna get up to my worry level for you. Uh, because I know, I know what little mice, little uh, people that are slow uh, with autism and all the other things, because I've, 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 I've pulled these guys and these gals across the goal line. But until you want to pull yourself across the goat line, until you want to take it more seriously, uh, you're, going to, you're going to struggle. It doesn't mean you're not going to get rich in five years from now. But today, five years from now, doesn't do much for me. And I'm selfishly, you know, the, uh, although I'll probably always stay the trillion dollar man, even though we've done more than a trillion, I, I, I know the lifestyle changes that will occur. I know the difference between, you know, making a few hundred thousand dollars or pounds or whatever a year and making a few million a year, what it does for you. I know, um, you know, as I said, I think on the second day, uh, couples like Sally and I have more, more choices. You know, we don't, I'm not suggesting you do this. Uh, the, we don't have budgets. We don't look at how much, a, you know, the world suite costs. We don't look at, and I'm not saying that's for you. Uh, as we had the Asian dragon couple on a few weeks ago, Amber and John, who he, she gave him a Rolls Royce and he, no, no. He gave her a new Rolls Royce and she gave him a new Ferrari. Now that's not the kind of gifts you're swapping with your significant others. And I'm not saying that that's the thing to do, but they have the choice to do that. And I think that's pretty special, especially with two engineers, two engineers that in the beginning overthought everything. They overthought QLA. I mean, they overthought everything. And now they just are running down the street, you know, not indiscriminately, pulling the trigger and enjoying life. Um, I just wanted you to remi remind you again, because I've got a couple more emails. I wish this was not the truth. Some of you in this room, this is where you're headed. I've been teasing him and his wife's second better husband, but it's not funny. Some of you have already experienced a little of this. You heard in the first 
webinar you heard from Peter, not today, this afternoon. He says, you know, I'm gone for a few weeks and she cries, but, you know, she either gets used to it or divorce. Now, not everybody that comes to the program or studies the program free on my website is willing to make that kind of sacrifice. And it's not for everybody, though. And I never said it was for everybody. And I said, uh, you know, it's for one in 10,000. Um, but somebody, unfortunately, just by uh, serendipity, is going to wind up with this. For those of you that aren't married or have a, a permanent relationship, you're fortunate. You're fortunate. But on the one hand, you don't have a relationship. But on the other hand, when you make money, all of a sudden, you're going to be better looking. When you make money, wear better clothes, and drive better cars, all of a sudden, a different class of significant other is going to look at you. You're the same fucking person. That's why a number of the people don't want to help me with the seminar because they don't want anybody to know they're rich. Sally says, everybody wants the money. Almost everybody. But hardly anybody wants the notoriety. You don't want to have to worry about your uh, kids getting kidnapped. That's an ugly part of my life. But better my personality than some of yours' personalities. Some of your personalities in this room, although I'm sure you try to do the right thing if they were trying to steal you off your kids. All jokes aside, that you know they steal my daughter, they'll give her back in a day, but um, some of your personalities in this room couldn't cope with that. And the police, law enforcement aren't much good. And they'll tell you if the kid's gone 36 hours, they're probably dead. Now just imagine hearing that. And so that's why now, Sally also thinks that a lot of the people don't want the notoriety because they're not paying the right amount of tax. I think that's probably also true. But I mean, he's smart. He's, he's not. But some of the speed bumps that uh, you're manufacturing, he never had. Uh, almost everything that you've asked me didn't happen to him. Almost everything you've asked me doesn't happen to anybody. I mean, nobody. Just as, as Josh said, I mean, uh, and uh, I, I was going to bring up the board if he didn't, but he brought up the board because he felt, not guilt, that's the wrong word, uh, but kind of, you know, he, he used these guys, and he said it politely and professionally. He used them in the beginning, but then, you know, he, uh, and he bought them out for what he offered them, you know, and which was uh, not pennies on the dollar, but uh, maybe dimes on the dollar, uh, and they took it. Now, see, I wouldn't have taken it. I would just say, fine, I'm, I'm a shareholder, and I'll wait to the IPO, and I'll make millions. But most people will take the money. The things that you worry about that don't happen. They just don't happen. And because there's no guarantee, and he's not advertising he's going public, but those, those four or five board members that had between 2 and 7%, when the IPO happens, whenever it happens, will cut their throats. You know, I sold out for tens of thousands or maybe a few hundred thousand, and my stock could have been worth, you know, 10 million, 20 million, 40 million. But that, that's not, excuse me, that's not the concern. Just, and, you know, uh, it's, it's like when you're a, a, a little kid in the dark. If you, I was afraid of the dark when I was a little kid. You see shit that is not there. You see shit that's not there. And well, I mean... You're in the dark emotionally, and you see shit that doesn't happen. I mean, it just, you think after all my thousands of transactions, some of the shit that you asked me would have happened, but it doesn't. You know, I, I, sometimes I think, I, I said this a few years ago to Sally, I'm in a, a different world. I mean, the kids ask the question, you ask different questions now. The last 10, 15 years, you ask different questions than the kids asked in the, in the 90s and early 2000s. And I, I get tired of saying it, but the kids in the ni uh, 90s and early 2000s weren't afraid. Just imagine trying to do this with, with, with none of the tools that you have. No fucking webinars. No fucking templates. Nothing. You know? And 
my stuff didn't start being free on, on, web, on my website till 2008, seven or eight. So the people that came from, from 93 to 2007, and we didn't give the slides, we, I, we didn't have all those slides. How did all those guys, as, and, 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 and Whipple and Dan Locke aren't, aren't jealous about it, but as, as Locke says, you might as well do the fucking deal for him, Mr. Pena. Jesus Christ, you do everything else. Because they were hungry. They were just hungry, you know. It, uh, and, um, but any other comments? Um, he's a super guy. I, I love uh, his success. But I love all these guys' success. You know, and I'm praying, wishing, and hoping uh, the, um, that more of those successes will come out of this group. Um, but certainly not as many as should come out. I mean, as you said, there's no reason. Um, we've got a guy rolling up hospitals in Mexico. That's a tough fucking market. Uh, uh, we've got a guy rolling up um, hospitals, even though I tell him not hospital. Hospital is the quickest way to start them because they're big numbers by definition. We've got a guy in uh, Argentina. Um, uh, not as successful as uh, Peter, but pretty damn successful. And they're using the Rick, what they call the Rick Scott model, which is the QLA model, but it's since he did it the biggest and the, and, and the best so far. But uh, they're, they're, he's, he's headquartered in Guadalajara. I once had a rich cousin in Guadalajara, uh, the dead, long dead. He had a daughter named, he named his daughter America, United States, and Const his son Constitution. Who the fucking thunk it, you know? But uh, they're gone. I mean, but I, I had, I don't know how they, he was my cousin. Uh, but, because, uh, and from, you know, he must have, somebody must have got raped going through the Pueblo back 80 years ago or 120 years ago. But um, the, um, and uh, the, rich, the rich Mexicans, and I'm a Mexican, the rich Mexican, look, they're blue bloods. I mean, they look down your nose, they don't, you know. And everybody is a Spaniard, half-ass Spaniard. Everybody's a fucking half-ass Spaniard. Uh, they got no proof of it, but they, you know, but they were all a half-ass Spaniard. And the rich in the Philippines um, the, uh, are somehow Spanish. Pena, when I went to the Philippines in 2004, uh, they thought I was, a, when they saw my name, they thought I was a Filipino because there's a, a, a Brazilian Pena is there. And the, um, anything else about uh, Peter? I mean, it, it's, it's not easy. Um, but uh, now when he, I asked him about being a pleaser, he said, you gotta, he, he said it more politely, more professional, you gotta toughen up. And I don't say it that politely, that professional, but you, you gotta toughen up. No, you gotta toughen up if you wanna hit the big time. You don't want to hit the fucking big time, and you're you know you're on the 12 and 13 year plan, which unfortunately I'm also the father uh, of those deals. Um, but uh, the uh, and it's not really toughen up. You know they call it ruthless. I mean I mean I don't have a, a guy or a gal in 28 years that has ever done anything ruthless by my standards. I mean I mean the worst worst person I had. Who was kind of like uh, uh, the devil incarnated? I mean, it wasn't wasn't tough, wasn't tough. When I was teasing Abdul about turning off the electricity, turning off the water, turning off the heat, and he just kind of smiled. But I mean, back in the day, that was your first step to eviction. You didn't fuck around. You just the uh, and I, I told you, um, Ron Legrand, who is a mentee of mine, and uh, he's the the king of the house flippers or used to be, and he, uh, back in, 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 the, in the 70s, and he uh, evicted the sheriffs, were uh, taking the uh, furniture out of this old lady's house on uh, Christmas Eve. He called CBS, they came to film it, and, uh, and he said, no, no, I'm not taking the furniture away, stack it all up on her lawn, and he set it on fire. And this is my message to my, my tenants. Crying grandmother on, on the front step. 
That's the real world. Now, now you can't, you know, I mean, privacy, I got an iPhone. I mean, it's, it go ballistic, right? But um, I have trained some tough guys. Questions about, you know, Peter. You all look like your mother died. Yes. I, I don't have a question. It's just, I mean, it comes back to the basics is that, you know, follow, follow the steps and uh, practice your Toastmaster and some communication skills and practice, practice. I mean, it's just basic. We, we sweat and practice more so we don't bleed in combat. Some of you have practiced. My, my uh, <laughs> uh, advice, and it's not free, I practice some more. I practice some more. Just this little, uh, these role-playing things that we're doing, uh, some of you are better at it, and some of you are dog shit. It's pretty obvious. I don't, I don't you know, I used to. I, you know, and I'd ridicule. And I, I, I point, that's in the days when people shit their pants, passed out, and pissed their pants. As God is my witness. The most recent is when the guy threw up on uh, Brian Rose a couple years ago. They haven't had a good throw up or shit their pants in a long time. And the guy that shit his pants was a Deloitte partner. And I used to use the Deloitte stationery when I showed it. And finally somebody came, you know, uh, nicely, very polite, because he can't stop me. He wrote, he wrote me a letter, uh, and he says, Dan, you know, uh, you use all the big accounting firms. You, know, you might get more of them if you didn't talk about them shitting their pants in the seminar. So I stopped. But uh, I was getting older, and so Sally says that I'm a kinder gentler. Yeah, you're right. It's follow the steps, practice. It's, it, it's you know, uh, on the Olympics, you know, there's there's for the hundred meters or the whatever the steeplechase or the marathon, there's one person gets a gold, and the also rans are second and third, and, and it's hard to remember who got the second, the silver or the bronze medal. And uh, how many people have been, you know, practicing the 100-yard dash or the marathons, you know, for 15 years or 18 years and to win? In this program, uh, 30 months, if you do th most of the things right, and you can even do it sooner, uh, five years if, if you're an average QLA bot, if you're a slow QLA bot, you know, six, seven years. And if you're a retarded QLA bot, 12 or, four, 12 or 13 years. But at the end of the day, all those people have more money, a lot, lot more money than they started with. And, uh, and that's what I used to focus on. I, I, I knew, but I always thought, as I do now, uh, of a bigger planet. I thought of a bigger goal because I knew it was possible. And part of the reason I knew it was possible, because some of the organizations that I'd been with, that most of the people that I saw at those big organizations, including the military, weren't to sweat off my ass. Uh, and so, and as General Vaughn, God love him, Danny, a boy like you could get rich in the civilian world. I, I, I wonder, I you often wonder, especially during seminars, if he hadn't have told me that. In 1968, spring of 68, summer of 68, what I'd be, I, I, I'm sure I would have stayed in a career army officer because I love the military. I love being beaten and I love beating people. And in those days, that's what it was. I love the discipline. And I've told this on YouTube many times. <laughs> in um, boot camp, the first night when you were inducted into the military, they're a little private. At night, you'd hear people crying. Man, a room, 300 people are asleep here, crying for their mama. And I told, uh, my, this is a fucking country club compared to living at my house. Because it was. Because my dad wasn't there watching me with a fucking rope on my neck. If you had been beaten more, everybody in this room would be more successful. A few of you have been beaten. They didn't beat you enough. Anything else? Yes, sir. Is this a... Uh, did, they talk, did they say that you look like a uh, Pakistani uh, uh, Elvis Presley when you were young? Did you have hair like that when you were young? God damn. Okay, go ahead. I actually just uh, noted uh, these 14 points. For only 14 points? Yeah, but they are very, very interesting. Um, he said, actually, he fired all his board members. That was a good thing. 
uh, world class chairman and he said if you want to be a pleaser forget about this business that was a very good point uh, then he said he was low esteem and but he knew he is capable to do something and the other thing i noted he took one and a half year to do deal i think which is uh, you know for us if we don't well you've already done a bunch of deals so yeah but just just uh, um, you know like pointing up and uh, the other point he said this qla opens my eyes and the most important thing i actually felt about him and when he said it i am i feel like i am a flying and he was very excited he raised above the chair then that, that was very interesting and he said i am happy what i enjoy the most I am a leader of organization of 700 people, uh, which is really good. And um, the other thing he said, um, everyone knows him in Hungary, basically, which is a pride for him as well. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, the most interesting things for me was like he said, act uh, now. I act as I am someone, <laughs> so which is good. Uh, communication skills. Um, I think most of us. uh we have the communication problems except shas <laughs> <laughs> so i think that was the most he, he said like he hired a teacher and uh, is practicing which is i think a very good lesson for us and uh, the other mo- more important things which actually says in qla anyway uh, enthusiasm and uh, believe motivation and um, uh, one of the thing i really liked about him he said I had a lot of rejections, but never stopped. Correct. And I hired the teacher. So while he was talking, to be honest with you, I decided I'm going to hire a teacher as well too, so I can practice my English as well. Okay. Well, you don't need anybody to practice uh, combing your hair. But th- th- those are all very valid points. Uh, um, uh, Peter, even after he did his first deal, uh, he was uh, his communication skills were lacking. Uh, the, uh, but he wanted to be, one of his goals um, was to be somebody in Hungary. And, uh, the, uh, and well, he is now. He says he knows all the important people he got. Up. And he does. He does. And, of course, now his deal flow is different. He has the fucking government calling him. Uh, uh, the, better than KPMP. He's got the government. Uh, calling him, and uh, he, uh, and as he said from uh, his last webinar, which I reminded him of, and he laughed. You said that uh, when you're being interviewed and they're asking you these questions, what what are your answers? Very clever things, okay. And I helped him work on that back in, uh, a few years ago. Uh, but some of the kids, and 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 it works. I mean, uh, some of the template statements are great as answers to the press. To uh, if you're being interviewed, or when you're being interviewed, and but he, you know, he is he has blossomed under success. Now everybody grows, but not everybody blossoms. And as you pointed out, he sat, he sat up straight when he said that because it's important to him. You know, he, uh, I didn't tease him on the tape about uh, more lead in his pencil. Got two more kids, and the uh, but there's a high high percentage of the guys that make it much sometimes to the chagrin of the women because a lot of the gals are long in the tooth to be having kids but everybody says it's god's blessing you know fine i'm not going to argue with god about whether it's a blessing or not but um the uh it's because you feel good you feel better about yourself now i haven't not felt good about myself in a long long time I, I tell the story, I'm crying, and the dog's lip, licking the tears off my cheeks on the staircase, and I'm drinking Jack Daniels, and I figured out, because in those days I used to believe very vehemently, just like he believes, that gold should be tied to your age. And I'm 30 or 31, and I'm nowhere near my 40-year goals, and I go, fuck, this is never going to happen. You know, and my three great kids are licking me. Not too similar when they were licking the blood off me the other night. And I said, I got to do something. And so that's when I went and, and uh, by good fortune, I, I found Jim Newman and, uh, uh, and the rest is history. And he said, and I believe, and I agree, you've been a big hitter in a small pond in the Mexican community. 
everybody, you know, uh, uh, Latino guy of the year, 1981, all this stuff. But you know you can be in the other arena, in which I did, and you were frustrated about it. You know, it's, um, and so I found that. Uh, I was looking for that recognition. I'm still pissed off I did arguably the best financial transaction in the world in 1984. I got no recognition for it. Taking nothing, taking it public in 99 days. 200 million. I got no recognition whatsoever. Best transaction, and but um, the so I was looking for that recognition as well. I didn't realize just as I, I had a chip on my shoulder about guys that went to Oxford, or guys that went to Harvard, or guys that went to Yale, especially the Yaleys. Um, and uh, after I fired a half a dozen of them, I realized that wasn't important. But he is well educated, okay? So he didn't have that, but he, you know, he had the um, he wanted everybody to like him. He was a pleaser, and. Um, and now he's got all these people pleasing him, and uh, he's making a lot of money. And he has transformed, and he wants to do, he wants to make healthcare uh, world class in Hungary. And that's a big stretch. I mean, that's a big fucking goal. It's not like saying making uh, uh, German healthcare world class or to make it world class in Hungary, a former communist country. Anything else? Good points, Abdul. Yes, sir. I think you've said it about 50 billion times, but uh, Jim Rohn summed it up quite nicely, which was, don't wish it were easy, wish you were better. Correct. In a roundabout way. But, I mean, up, and again, you've made it very clear in terms of, obviously, financial success. But how important do you think it is to have a sense of purpose to make QLA work? Correct. Well, my purpose was, was uh, even though I, it was what Jim Newman used to call under the skin goal, or the, the, the modern day psychiatrist called, say, Severosa go, Latin, is that I want to do a trillion bucks, a million millionaires. To, my, that was my purpose. It wasn't a purpose that I articulated until the last three or four years. But that was my purpose. Otherwise, I mean, because there were, seemed not decades, but years surely that, I mean, uh, it was hard to sell QLA. It's not, it's easy now, but, uh, it's like uh, I said on a TV program not too, long, too uh, recently, you know, actually recently, I'm an overnight success after 28 years. But I've been around 28 years. And I've been, well, I've been around longer than that, but I mean, doing this with you guys, I've been around 28 years. I thought that my, uh, I shot my wad in the early 2000s because the, one, my success through you started to dry up. I didn't... Uh, think it was a uh, anthropological thing that the uh, homo sapien was running out of gas, which I do now. And, uh, it's, um, and it's easier now, not just because you have the tools. The, 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 just like climate change is uh, cyclical, you're in the right part of the cycle to make tons of money because of uh, low interest rates, because of uh, the mentality of the market. Uh, and we were not in that right cycle in the early 90s and 90s and the early 2000s, but we did it the old-fashioned way, out of sheer will, out of sheer will. Now you've got, you know, uh, tools that um, are terrific. And people ask me, why didn't you change uh, the, a lot of the tapes from 96, 97, 98? Because nothing's changed. Nothing has changed. The only thing, the additional we have now is crowdfunding. Uh, and we've had some big successes, i.e. Uh, Marcus Bauer. And, um, and crypto, uh, and I'm not, I'm not a proponent of crypto, so I'm not gonna do a, a, a tape or a webinar on it. But the stories, the anecdotes that Roberto alluded to and that we've taught you this past week are the secrets. Now, you know, uh, I, I make fun of people that call them tips, etc. but you're getting tips that are current day in the trenches now. We've got pre-corona, corona, and kind of the ass end of corona now. And uh, what we've seen is it's easier. Now, I don't know if anybody in the YouTube believes that it's easier now. I, I, I believe it because I see the stats, I see the numbers that were roughly 100% uh, better vis-a-vis -vis closing deals and creating wealth for you, which means creating wealth for my trillion dollar number, which means creating wealth for the planet. 
to the planet. And uh, before I had decided anything about politics, uh, I never equated the two. But I know, I know, like I, you know, I took a piss this morning that I, I know how to uh, create jobs and, and bring money. Whether it resonates or not, that's a whole other thing. Okay, whether they shoot the messenger and don't listen to the message, that's a whole other thing. I'm not going to change the way I deliver, so that's not going to happen. So they either accept the message or they don't. And in the next 12 months, we'll figure that out. But even if they don't resonate, it doesn't resonate with them. I will create a lot more wealth to you guys. Um, when you pull the trigger, not if you pull the trigger, when you pull the trigger.